So, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is story about what if Naruto trained by Shinigami for Chunin exams. Part 3. Go and check out the other two. If you guys enjoy this, what if? And want next part? Let me know before starting the video, comment down below. Please support for more awesome what if content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also share this video with your friends. And check out the description. And check out my playlist. So without wasting time. Let's start the video. West residential area. Team 1 fell back on the training that Asuma Sensei put them through while defending the evacuating civilians. Shikamaru's shadow moved through the enemy shinobi, locking them in place. Choji quickly followed up with his new right fist. The explosion of power sent the enemy ninja flying through several buildings. Choji looked at his arm and then smirked at Shikamaru and Ino, you know. I gotta hand it to Naruto. This fist really packs a punch. Ino walked up behind him and slapped him on the back of the head, it's bad enough that Naruto has started using those bad puns. You better not start imitating him. Shikamaru sighed in annoyance, troublesome. Why couldn't I just be lying back and watching clouds instead of dealing with this troublesome blonde? Said troublesome blonde promptly turned, placed her hands on her hips, and raised an eyebrow at Shikamaru. That eyebrow rose higher as a sand ninja slams into the ground between the three of them. He twitches a few times while muttering repeated apologies about flat chests and big foreheads, before promptly passing out. Ino pokes him a few times with her foot, I think this guy had a run-in with Sakura. She's the only one I know that would cause this much damage for such words. Toji nodded, I think we will have to get a distance measurement. It has to be a new record. She certainly never hit Naruto that hard. The other two nodded before leaping back into the fray. Start of invasion, top of Hokage booth. The smoke from the signal slowly dissipated to reveal Hiruzen and Orochimaru facing each other. Hiruzen Saratobi scowled at his former student who merely smirked in return. I see that you have finally returned my old student. Hiruzen said as he threw off the cage robes. Orochimaru chuckled disturbingly before replying, Oh sensei. What can I say? I was feeling a little homesick. His eyes widened with a sickening light, and his arms rose into the air, and now I shall destroy this village and show all of the citizens that you made a mistake in your choice of fourth Hokage. The only mistake I made was not ending you when I had the chance. Hiruzen snarled angrily, and now I shall rectify that mistake. Four sound shinobi leaped to four corners of the rooftop and raised a barrier that Hiruzen Sirotobi had not seen since his time as a genin under the second Hokage. There would be no reinforcements for either side. This was a one-on-one -on -one fight and only one could emerge alive. This thought rang through both of their minds as Hiruzen threw a handful of shuriken. These shuriken then multiplied and forced Orochimaru to replace himself with a mud clone. Well now. Orochimaru said, shall we begin this? Present time. It was a sign of how lax Hiruzen had become in his training regimen that he was panting for breath while wishing he had not been to relax in his training. His old student Orochimaru stood before him with a smirk on his face as he took in his sensei's tired old body. Like Jiraiya, Orochimaru had retained the strength of his past and had even seemed to increase it. Hiruzen quickly went through the hand signs for the Earth style. Great Mud River. He quickly followed this with an Earth style. Earth Dragon Missile and then set flames onto the rock missiles forming Fire Dragon Missiles. The combined attacks caught Orochimaru off guard and his body thrashed around before fading away. You can come out now, Orochimaru. I know you wouldn't die from something like that. Hiruzen said from where he stood. Orochimaru rose from the tiles that covered the rooftop, soon Saratobi sensei, I shall reunite you with your dear teachers. Though I must say that I am greatly disappointed by your decision to disqualify Sasuke-kun. I was so looking forward to seeing how much he improved. And that Yuzumaki boy, he has attained vast power. Power unlike any that I have seen before. It intrigues me. Naruto's strength doesn't come from Jutsus, Hiruzen said, Naruto is the embodiment of the will of fire. He has sought strength to protect those that he loves and cares for. He understands that it is only when you have protected something that is precious to you that the true strength of the shinobi can emerge. Orochimaru scoffed, there you go again sensei. Always speaking of that worthless ideal. The will of fire is but an illusion for weaklings that cannot stand at the top. They do not have the strength themselves, thus they take it from others. So says the one who leeches from others in order to sustain his own power. Hiruzen growled. Orochimaru scowled at his sensei and began to run through hand signs, summoning jutsu. In pure world reincarnation. Orochimaru slammed his hands down onto the ground, and three coffins rose from the ground. Or rather two did. The third rose halfway before something seemed to grab hold of it and pull it back down. Orochimaru snarled in annoyance before sighing, it does not matter if one failed. The first and second should be enough to lay waste to this village. Oh, the irony, hmm. The lids of the two coffins fell forward to reveal the pale bodies of the cages. Hiruzen could only feel disgust for the creature that had once been his student, how far you have fallen, Orochimaru, to desecrate the dead. 
Unlike you, Sensei, I will stop at nothing to obtain power. And now I have the power of the Senju at my fingertips, both Hashirama and Tabarama. Hirachimaru sneered. The two pale men stumbled forward from their coffins. They glanced around, and the second figure folded his arms, it seems that there is one who has taken to using my forbidden brother. The first figure nodded solemnly before turning to Hiruzen, tell me Hiruzen, how is this generation of shinobi? Hiruzen smiled widely, the will of fire burns brighter than ever, and at its base stands the one who shall surpass all cages of the past. Enough of this reunion. Hirachimaru said with a scowl, it is time to end this. Hirachimaru reached into his kunai pouch and drew out two kunai with red tags on the end. Without warning he plunged them into the backs of the two figures' heads. Steam rises from both bodies, and the paleness of death leaves them. Their eyes grow blank and they move into battle stances. I assure you, First Lord Hokage, Second Lord Hokage, that I, Hiruzen Siratobi, shall return your souls to rest. Hiruzen slid into a ready stance of his own and did not have to wait long for a response. Ashurama's hands blurred through a series of hand signs and slammed them to the roof. A wave of roots rushed forward and were burned to a crisp by the answering fireball. Tabarama forced Hiruzen to leave his position when he called out, water style. Great flood. Water swamps the area and the three cages land feet first on the top of the water. Hirachimaru stood with a manic grin as he watched the battle continue. Hiruzen rushed Tabarama and their limbs blurred into a series of punches and kicks. Hashirama leaped into the fray with a punch that staggered Hiruzen. However, he quickly dropped to avoid another series of punches before launching himself back. I need backup. Hiruzen thought to himself. He raised a hand to his lips and bit into it. Just as the blood welled up, vines shot up and ensnared his body. Hiruzen watched in fascinated horror as he witnessed the signature of the first, wood style. Great forest creation. Through the water, trees and vines grew to gigantic proportions and became a jungle the likes of which no living ninja had ever seen. Hiruzen shook himself to get his thoughts back under control and heaved forward against the vines. His right hand, the blood still there, came into contact with the wood of one of the trees, and Hiruzen shouted, summoning Jutsu. Monkey King Anma. A plume of smoke covered the area, and from within the former cages, Arachimaru heard the sound of wood shattering. When the smoke cleared, Hiruzen was seen standing next to a monkey of similar height as him. The monkey surveyed the area and gave a snort. Do you see Siratobi? I told you that letting him go would only bring misfortune. Yes, Enma. You did say that. And now it is time to correct that mistake. Ruzin said with head tilted forward to shadow his eyes a bit, please Enma. Adamanti Noi. It is too late now. Enma said in disgust, very well. Let us fight again. Arachimaru's eyes widened and he shouted at the two reanimated cage, don't let the monkey transform. The two men charged forward only for a haymaker to knock Hashirama away and a fist to slam into Tabarama's head. Enma then took a stance and transformed into a large metal box staff. He flew into Hiruzen's waiting hand and the two charged forward to meet the cages. Once more they traded blows. Hiruzen found himself preoccupied with Hashirama when he heard a cry of water style. Water shockwave. He instantly disengaged and jumped to the side to avoid the jet of water that would have carved out half of his stomach. Tabarama then appeared in front of him and began to throw punches and kicks at Hiruzen, while roots and vines of varying sizes worked to trip the third hokage. Finally, Hiruzen stumbled and barely avoided an attack, but it caused him to unbalance, and he fell to his knees. Hiruzen looks up to see the two former cages bearing down on him. Suddenly, there was the sound of a door opening, and everyone on the roof turned to look at the set of traditional Japanese doors that had appeared out of thin air. A shadowed figure stood within the set of doors and a voice called out. Akudo 99. Bank in full prohibition. First incantation. Prologue. Halting wraps. Before anyone could react, two sheets of white cloth shot out of the opening and wrapped around the two former cages. Second incantation. Refrain. Serial hundred bolts. The shadowed figure stepped out from the door and slowly revealed Naruto Uzumaki standing in armor from the Warring States era. His chest plate, helmet, and arm protectors were all red, and the Uzumaki clan symbol stood out on his helmet. Hiruzen shook himself out of his shock and called to Naruto, run Naruto. Orochimaru is too strong for you to face. Slowly, Naruto turns to look at the third Hokage, you have had many chances to take him out Hiruzen. Each time you failed. It is time that you realize that the antics of those from your generation will no longer be accepted, and the relics of the past need to step aside for the new generation to step forward. Naruto then folded his arms and turned back to face Orochimaru, besides, as the former student of the first who was married to Mito Yuzumaki, you should know that the general rule of the family is that one never goes into battle without backup. You need to listen to the kid. Both Hiruzen and Orochimaru stared in shock at the sight of the fourth Reikage stepping out from the doorway. You and Inoki are getting too old for this job. To think that you couldn't even sniff out this invasion. It should have been obvious if you had just looked. 
Orochimaru watched, intrigued, as the doors closed and disappeared before chuckling, my, my Naruto-kun. That is quite interesting. But tell me. Why do you fight for this pathetic village? After everything that they have done to you, do they really deserve it? Why not join me? Together we can grow stronger and destroy these worthless mongrels. I can even bring back your dear departed parents. Don't listen to him, Naruto. Hiruzen shouted out, there is nothing that he would offer without strings attached. Plus this is the village that your parents lived in and died to protect. No matter how badly the villagers acted, your parents wouldn't have wanted you to turn your back on it. Naruto's eyes grew cold as he looked at Orochimaru, first of all, I am not a traitor. Second, I would never disgrace the dead by using such an abominable technique as the Edo Tensei in Pure World Resurrection, where one must sacrifice the life of another for the one that you wish to bring back. As for the village, go ahead. Feel free to burn it to the ground. The rooftop was quiet as all of the major players stared at Naruto in astonishment. Hiruzen called out in shock, Naruto. How can you say that? Because the village is just wood, stone, and nails. Even if the buildings are laid to waste, it does not mean that Kanahagakur would be destroyed. Kanoha is not a building or even a monument. The true form of the village hidden in the leaves is in the people that live here. Naruto focused on Orochimaru, I know all about how you applied for the position of Hokage. However, you were unaware of what the position truly meant. To be Hokage means to be willing to nurture and protect the people of the village. Not treat them as your personal playthings. A smirks at Naruto, I couldn't have said it better myself. As you said, the heart of Kumagakur is the people that live there. Hiruzen felt his heart swell with pride at Naruto's words. Naruto then turned his attention to the two wrapped up figures that were struggling to free themselves from the cloth that covered them. He reached down to a seal on his belt and released a glove that was held within. It was red with a skull surrounded by blue flames on the back of the hand. The glove went onto his right hand and he flashed stepped behind the two former cages and slammed his hand into the back of both heads, forcing the souls from the bodies. The bodies crumbled to ash and the cloth collapsed. Two bodies fell forward from the ash to reveal two of the sound ninjas from earlier parts of the exam. Naruto then noticed that the souls of the two were standing behind the piles of ash looking at him in shock. Naruto then resealed the glove back into the seal on his belt and said, let me handle this old man. You just sit back and enjoy the show. No Naruto. Hiruzen said, shaking his head, let me and A handle this. Naruto glared at him, Hiruzen, I swear by all that is holy that if you enter into this fight, then I will be dropping your ass off in the retired ninja home. And as you know, they have recently banned tobacco. Hiruzen's face lost all color before he coughed and said, I'll just be over there. Hiruzen walked over to one of the roots left over from his fight with the first tokage. As he sat down, Enma released his transformation, looking rather ragged. He sighed as he sat down, you know. I think the kid is right. It might be time for us to retire. Upon seeing the monkey, Naruto gained a pensive look, you know. I always wondered why the Saratobi clan had the monkey contract when the Ichiha had their eyes. Like monkey see, monkey do. Abarama turned to his brother with a smirk, I remember when you said the exact same thing to Madara after the first time Hiruzen summoned a monkey. The two of you then got into a fight that destroyed Mido's flower garden. Neither of you could walk straight for a month after she put the two of you in the hospital. Ashurama shuddered as he remembered the horrifying beatdown he and his friends suffered before a rain cloud appeared over him and he curled up slightly while a finger drew circles on the roof, didn't matter how many times we said we were sorry. The three elite shinobi suppressed grins as they remembered the times that they had interacted with the Ichiha clan while Enma snorted in annoyance, as if my clan would work with that bunch of hairless apes. The only good Ichiha is a dead one. Not true. Naruto said, Makoto wasn't so bad. Enma tilted his head for a moment before he nodded, that's true. She was one of the good ones. Orochimaru let out a sigh, I grow tired of this. It does not matter who you bring to fight me. I will lay waste to this village. Naruto traded looks with A, and the rakage was suddenly covered in his lightning armor. He then disappeared from where he was standing and reappeared to throw a punch with three claws made of lightning attached. Unfortunately, they found out that it was merely a mud clone. A looked round in annoyance, come out you yellow-bellied snake or is hiding all you're good at. Orochimaru rose from the rooftop with an angry scowl, well if you want to see my true power that badly, then I will gladly destroy you utterly. The two were interrupted by Naruto shouting out, Bakudo 62. Hundred step balustrade. A pale blue white rod appeared in Naruto's hand. He launched it forward and it split not a hundred different rods. Orochimaru tried to dodge the falling rods of energy, but a few managed to hit him. The trapped figure quickly fell apart to reveal that it was a mud clone the whole time. Naruto frowned and said to A, I think you hit the mark about his true strength, if all he can do is a mud clone and substitution. Orochimaru quickly emerged from the ground, aiming to punch Naruto. He was shocked when Naruto held up a hand with a pale blue wide orb within it and said, Bakudo ate Siki repulse. Orochimaru was sent flying back. 
Naruto and A quickly charge forward to strike him. Hinata Pav Evacuation Shelter Upon entering the shelter, Hinata begins to work on calming down the civilians and wounded. The children were soon soothed by the calming kindness that she naturally exuded. As she made rounds through the building, she came across a man who was bleeding from his arm. She immediately made her way over to him and removed the sleeve from his shirt. Her eyes found the long gash and, remembering her training, she spoke, Lily, Shuno. Soten Kishin Twin Sacred Return Shield. And two glowing lights shot forward and created an oblong dome over the man's body. The people standing around her watched in shock as blood returned to the arm and flesh knitted back together. A few noticed that a missing finger on the other hand slowly returned as well. After a few minutes, the man slowly gets up and begins to thank her and then notices his finger. He looks at her in shock, how did you do that? This finger was lost when I was a child. Hanada just smiled and moved on to the next injury. Back inside the barrier, Naruto and Ace stood a little way back from Orochimaru. They were panting heavily. Naruto had suffered some burns to his armor. He had known going into battle that he wasn't truly ready to take on someone of the Sanin's caliber. He had been able to throw Niji around easily enough, but he was nowhere near this man's level of power. He was barely ranked a third seat according to his teachers. This equated to high and low dot. Naruto suddenly heard Lynetta's voice inside his head. Naruto-kun, I believe that this is the perfect time to show my true power. Orochimaru smirks as he looks at Naruto's tired body, it seems that you are finally wearing out. I am intrigued as to how you gained these abilities. Naruto smirked back and straightened up, it seems that you did not do much research on my clan. And Yuzumaki always has an ace up their sleeve. He reached up to the necklace that hung around his neck and channeled chakra into it. The area was instantly flooded with chakra, causing everyone to gasp for air and feel like gravity had suddenly increased. Naruto laughed at Orochimaru's shocked expression, you see Orochimaru, this necklace is not just a fashion statement. It is a chakra limiter. While most are content to walk around with their total amount of chakra on display for the world to see, I am not. I keep a portion of it sealed away as a fail-safe in case a situation like this should ever arise. I have just unlocked another portion of my chakra. A was staring at Naruto in shock before a smile spread across his face. Naruto may have been the son of Kishina and Minato, but the boy had certainly earned his respect. A looked forward to the chance to fight the boy in a match. Naruto reached behind his back and grabbed the tanto. He draws it from the sheath and calls out, wash them away, Lynetta. With a flash of light, Naruto is suddenly holding the butterfly swords from before. He vanished from where he stood using the flash step and slashed at Orochimaru. Three deep cuts appear on the man's chest, and the man grows a sickly pale that was worse than the paleness that his body had already possessed. He had become shrunken like a man who had gone without water for days, and the blade glowed brightly. Naruto reached behind his back and grabbed the tanto. He draws it from the sheath and calls out, wash them away, Lynetta. With a flash of light, Naruto is suddenly holding the pair of butterfly swords from before. He vanished from where he stood with a flash step and slashed at Orochimaru. Three slashes appear on the man's chest, and the man grows sickly pale. That was worse than the paleness that his body had already possessed. He had become shrunken like a man who had gone without water for days, and the blade glowed brightly. Orochimaru shook off the shock and ejected himself from his body, as the old one turned to ash just as this happened. He then quickly turned his attention to Naruto who stood poised for either attacking or countering. Naruto drew back the glowing blade and thrust it forward, calling out, water arc. Piercing wave. The spear of water laced with Raishi shot forth from Naruto's blade. The attack was too fast for Orochimaru to dodge, and it cut his body in half. Unfortunately, Orochimaru's two halves quickly ejected snakes that pulled the two halves together and sealed it up again. As soon as Orochimaru's feet touched the ground, a lightning reed they blindsided him with a devastating punch. The body was sent flying and hit the ground, only to be revealed as a mud clone. The real one then shot out from the rooftop with one arm stretched forward as he called out the striking shadow snake. Naruto countered with a wave of his right hand in a sweeping motion, Hato 54 Hain. Abolishing flames. All that were watching were shocked when the snakes were obliterated by massive flames. Naruto then chuckled and spoke conversationally to Orochimaru, you know. I'm kinda disappointed in you. All those lessons in the academy where the three legendary Sanin, the three ninja that were able to take on Hanzo and survive, were told your team was the greatest fighters the world has ever seen. But if this is your best, then I'm not impressed. Orochimaru scowled and opened his mouth to respond only to be cut off by the blonde ninja. If I'm going to fight, then I would like for the battle to not be so one-sided. Honestly, I think that Hanzo only gave you the title out of pity. You aren't strong. Especially in comparison to your teammates. Take your female teammate Tsunade Senju for example. Even though she has become nothing more than a broken drunken gambler, she paved the way for better medics and created many of the medical and laws that are employed to this day. 
Despite her habits now, she is still acknowledged as the greatest medic ninja and capable of healing any wound or illness, as well as being the world's strongest kanoichi. Orochimaru let out a growl, but was unable to say anything as Naruto continued his speech. Then we come to your other teammate Jiraiya, the Toad Sage. He is acknowledged as the world's biggest pervert and womanizer. He graduated the dead last of his generation and yet was able to become the most prominent kanjutsu sealing techniques master, rivaled only by those from my clan. He is credited with becoming a toad sage and training the fourth hokage and being a published author, despite the subject matter of his books. Naruto paused for a moment as his eyes narrowed in on the fuming snake, and then there is you. The only mention of you in the history books is the fact that you fought in two ninja wars and then became the worst traitor in Kanoha's history. So, what does that make you in comparison to your teammates? Orochimaru snarled at Naruto and sent a Futen. To top a wind style. Great breakthrough towards Naruto and A. As the two dodged, Orochimaru screamed at Naruto, I will enjoy slaughtering you and your entire family once and for all. But here is an enema during the fight, the Monkey King let out a whistle, gotta hand it to the brat. I've never seen anyone get under that pale bastard skin like that. Not since he and Jiraiya were arguing over who was the better teacher. Here is an laughed, don't forget old friend, Naruto is in Uzumaki. They were notorious for being able to get under another person's skin. It did not matter who they were. Enma nodded with a wistful smile, I remember when his mother was young and making your hair go grey early. Perizin chuckled, I remember the time that she made the entirety of the outside of the academy look like a crime scene. The academy instructors had to close it for the day after finding the chalk outlines of human bodies and wondered why they hadn't been informed of an ongoing investigation. The only reason we knew it was her was because we found her ID where she dropped it when she left the night before. Turns out, she hadn't studied for the history test scheduled that day. I made her take it anyway. Hiruzen let out another chuckle as he looked at Naruto, though Naruto has outdone that with his painting of the Hokage Monument. Their attention was drawn back to the fight when there was an explosion from a high-level wind. But the first and second Hokages, Ashurama sat enjoying the fight that he was witnessing. He looked over to his brother and said, since we know that his mother is in Uzumaki, want to make a bet on who his father is. Aburama stood straight-faced with his arms crossed, my guess would be Yamanaka blood due to the blonde hair. Ashurama nodded, that is possible, but you are forgetting that the Yamanaka usually have straight hair. My money would be on the Namaka's clan. They are known for their wild hair. But Naruto and A. Naruto shifted his stance so that his left sword was placed dominantly. His eyes fell on Orochimaru who was beginning to breathe heavily, his body growing tired from the fighting, I believe that it is time for you to witness the power of my left blade. Orochimaru disappeared from where he stood and appeared behind Naruto, summoning a long sword out of his mouth as the blade was sweeping around to cut off the boy's head. Every person within the barrier felt the pulse in the air and saw Orochimaru suddenly struggling to move. It was as if he were trapped in thick mud. Naruto turns to face Orochimaru, and a second pulse causes the pale snake man to begin floating with the rubble around him. Orochimaru wasn't the only one to stare at Naruto with a shocked face before a third pulse shot the man and the rubble away. Orochimaru slammed back first into one of the tree roots. Naruto had a large grin on his face as he spoke to Orochimaru, so. Have you figured out the ability of my left blade? As a man of science, it should be obvious. Orochimaru did not respond as he stood up. Naruto sighed in annoyance, well if you won't guess, then it falls on me to explain. The name of my sword is Lineta, which translates to Little Moon. My right blade, as you can guess, allows me to manipulate water in any form, including everything from the water within your body to the very air itself. I could even go so far as to create a storm if I work the air just right. Already all the eyes around the area were widening in shock, but Naruto wasn't finished. As for my left blade, if you please direct your attention to the sky. As they all looked up and saw a few clouds and a half moon, Naruto continued, the moon is the key to my left blade. It allows me to affect the gravity around. Both increasing it and decreasing it as I want. I can use it to both push objects away from me and pull objects to me. I literally have power over the tides, and once the moon becomes full, my full power will be unleashed. The common consensus of those listening was, this kid is way overpowered. Hiruzen smiled as the thought crossed his mind that only Naruto would be lucky enough to find a weapon that would pay such honor to his familial roots. Orochimaru merely stared at Naruto, shock etched on his face as he thought to himself, where did this kid get his hands on a sword that rivals the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist? A merely shakes his head as he thinks to himself that Naruto would be someone to watch for in the future. Naruto rushed at Orochimaru, and his left blade cut through the air. Orochimaru's attempt to dodge was doomed to failure, and he felt himself pulled forward. The gravity returned to normal, and Naruto made way for A to follow up with a punch. The gut shot revealed the enemy to be a mud clone. Orochimaru rose from the rooftop tiles, glaring at Naruto, dealing with you is proving to be more trouble than it is worth. I look forward to dissecting you and taking these abilities for myself. 
Naruto begins panting for breath. Exhaustion was setting in after three separate fights, summoning the number of clones that he had and fighting against Orochimaru. This needed to be ended soon. Naruto looked over to A, can you keep him still for just a short time? A nodded, just give me an opening. Naruto turned to look at Orochimaru and noticed that the snake man was standing in a patch of water left over from the fight between the Hokages. A smirk crosses his face and he says to Orochimaru, do you know what happens to a snake when it is struck by lightning? Naruto raised his right hand, the same as what happens to everyone else. Hato 4 by Akurai. White lightning. Orochimaru screamed in pain as the lightning struck the water and reached him. Naruto's shout of, now. Sente into action. The man appeared behind the snake and grabbed him in a bear hug. Naruto followed with a puff of smoke, signaling the summoning of an item to his hand. I hope this stuff Mayuri gave me works. Naruto thought as he shoved a syringe with a lime green liquid into Orochimaru's skin and injected it. Naruto and A jumped back and Orochimaru's screams were renewed. Orochimaru dropped to his knees, gasping for breath as he snarled out at Naruto, what did you do to me? Naruto crossed his arms and said, I injected you with a chakra virus. Now reaching for your chakra will cause you pain. The more you draw, the more pain you will experience. The four sound ninja that were holding up the barrier released it and appeared at their master's side. One with a mohawk bent down and picked up his master before leading an attempt to get away. Girazin quickly jumped to his feet and ordered the surrounding Anbu groups to apprehend the fleeing group. But they all stopped when Naruto's voice rose in a chant. Disintegrate, you black dog of Rondonin. Look upon yourself in horror and claw out your own throat. The Kudo 9 were in disintegrating circle. They all watched Naruto raise his fingers and begin to generate an orange tendril with spiraling yellow patterns. The tendril wraps around the redeated female and a second tendril from his left hand and snares a four-armed male. Naruto brought his two hands together and sharply down. The force of the two impacting the roof caused the two sound ninja to fall unconscious. The Anbu quickly apprehend the two ninja and Hiruzen turns to a dragon-masked Anbu, demanding a report. Sir. The enemy is in full retreat and there is minimal damage to the village. There are currently 200 confirmed dead including both ninja and civilians. Dragon said. Hiruzen dismissed the man and turned to find another door like the one that had opened before and saw Naruto shaking A's hand. Hiruzen makes his way over to the two in time to hear the last of their conversation. With Naruto and A. Naruto put out his hand as he said to A, thank you again for helping to protect my village. I will stop by in a few weeks with the promised seals from my clan. A took his hand and shook it firmly, I look forward to any future dealings. Too bad we couldn't kill the snake today. I will definitely be keeping an eye out for you. Hopefully you won't become as much trouble as your mother and father. I also look forward to one day seeing the full power of your blade. The fight ended before I could. Naruto grinned a fox-like grin as he scratched at the back of his head, truth is, I haven't actually mastered my blade to that extent and taking an untested weapon into battle could get me killed. A nods in acceptance, good thinking. I have seen plenty of people go into a fight with an attack that they have not mastered and ended up hurting not only themselves but also those around them. Turning to face the doorway, he says, I need to get back to my village before my brother decides to do something stupid like hold another rap contest. I'm just glad that none of his students have picked up his habit. I don't think that the village would survive it. Naruto let out a laugh, I know what you mean. I have a whole house of little brothers and sisters. Within the first week, I was ready to rip my hair out, but I wouldn't trade them for the world. A's attention was caught by the slight cough off to the side. He looked over and then fully turned to face the aging third. Hiruzen bowed to say and said, on behalf of the village hidden in the leaf and the land of fire, I thank you Lord Rakage. Though our villages have not been on good terms, you were willing to set that aside and come to our aid. I hope that this will open new doors in the future. A nods, his expression never shifting from the serious set, perhaps. I believe that it is time to let bygones be bygones. What my father did left a black mark on our village and has caused others to not trust us as they used to. I have spent my reign attempting to undo my father's wrongs, but it is slow going. Hopefully this new partnership will be able to aid in that. A turned back to the doorway and walked through, calling over his shoulder as he went, remember the deal kid. As the doorway closed, Naruto looked at Hiruzen, I suppose now we should see about the state of the village. I'll see how the nobles are doing. Hiruzen nodded, please report to the council chamber in three hours so that we can do a full check on the situation. Naruto gave a two-fingered salute and Flash stepped away as Hiruzen turned to the surrounding Anbu, secure the two prisoners, and then return to your posts. A few seconds after everyone leaves, the sound of a banjo twang was heard followed by the cry of a hawk. A tumbleweed passed by the ghostly forms of the first and second hokages. Ashurama looked at Tabarama and asked, so what should we do now? Just stick around here. Tabarama sighed, it would probably be a good idea to wait and see if anyone can see us. Ashurama shrugged his shoulders and smirked, well, if no one can see us, how about going to check on the hot springs? 
be a good chance to see how this generation of women is shaping up. Abarama glared at his brother, that attitude is the reason that you spent half of your reign in the hospital. Both mother and your wife would beat you senseless. That is why I was always my mother's favorite. Ashurama could only hang his head in shame. Hanoha Council Chambers, Hirazin took a seat at the head of the council table, while still dressed in his battle armor. To his right sat all of the clan heads of the village. At the end was Tsum who had dragged Naruto into the seat next to her. Naruto complained about not being able to fall asleep because of it, Tsum merely replied that it seemed that she would need to continue what she started with his mother. The Hirazin's left sat the civilian council along with his personal advisors behind him. They were all joined by most of the elite jinin, as well as Sarah Sato, the head doctor of the village hospital. When the civilian council saw Naruto sitting at the council tables, there was an immediate outcry for his removal. Hiruzen glared at them all in silence, you would dare demand the removal of the head of two clans without cause, as the cowed councillors shrank back in their seats, Hiruzen addressed the entirety of the room, I am sure that nobody wishes to remain here for long today. Many of us have family members to check on. Therefore, if anyone has anything to say regarding the invasion. The Kashi stepped forward, Lord Hokage, I wish to file charges against Genin Naruto Uzumaki for deliberately disobeying any orders that I gave to him. He refused both to assist Sasuke Chiha, as well as turning over weapons and equipment that would have been better held by someone who would have been able to prove competent. I recommend that he be stripped of rank and ordered to turn over all other equipment so that it may be placed in better hands. The civilian council immediately cried out affirmations. The clan heads and other shinobi immediately cried out in outrage and began to defend Naruto. Hiruzen immediately silenced them all with a burst of killing intent, that is enough. Asuma. Tell me why this happened. Taking his customary cigarette out of his mouth, Asuma spoke, immediately after the invasion started, Sasuke Chiha immediately broke into a blind rage and took off. When Naruto appeared and Kakashi ordered him to assist the Chiha, Naruto turned to ask me for orders. I ordered him to protect the civilians. He then sent one of two women that had followed him to the academy to protect the students and the other to the hospital to provide backup. He then created an army of shadow clones that spread throughout the village, as well as protecting the nobles and evacuating them. As for the equipment, they were special pieces that he handed out to specific people as gifts. Upon learning of their power, Kakashi demanded that they be given to Sasuke. Naruto refused and then sent out a pulse of chakra to awaken the civilians and saw to their evacuation. He left after doing so. Asuma finished his report and placed the cigarette back into his mouth. Here is in look to the surrounding ninja, do you all agree with this report? The assembled ninja all gave nods of assent. Ibiki stepped forward, Lord Hokage, I can affirm the validity of Janin Asuma's report due to receiving many reports stating how Yuzumaki sent saved many lives and ensured the safety of many civilians. In light of this, I believe that there should be no punishment for his refusal to follow orders and demands of clan secrets and artifacts. He even managed to defeat a boss summon. As well as the fact that he is even still awake after making so many shadow clones. Sarah Sato rose to her feet, on behalf of the hospital, I thank Uzumaki-san. Without his sending us back up along with the new equipment, we would have lost many more lives than we did. Naruto gave a fox-like grin, I'm glad you liked it, but you should know that what you received is only a prototype. The end result is a work in progress. Sarah Sato turned to the boy with a smile that she used to coax small children, and I am sure that you will not tell me what that is will you. Naruto merely grinned as he raised his nose into the air, you are absolutely correct. A true artist never reveals his masterpiece until it is completed. There is in smirked, all right you too, enough. You can finish your lover's quarrel later. Most of the room chuckled as the two blushed, I believe that due to the evidence presented that there are no grounds for punishing Naruto. It seems that he was correct in ignoring Kakashi's orders. For his services and ability during the invasion, I am hereby promoting him too. Now, are there any other matters that need to be brought to our attention? Naruto spoke up from his seat, Lord Hokage, during the invasion, one of my clones witnessed Sasuke Chiha, allowing himself to be overtaken by the cursed seal of heaven. He then proceeded to attempt to murder a foreign civilian from the land of wind who had hidden in an alleyway. However, he fell victim to the one thing that all men feel at least once in their life. In the quiet room, it was Anko who asked the question, and what would that be Naruto-kun? He was unlucky enough to run into an angry female in the form of his teammate Sakura Haruno. She interfered and ensured that he would not be a danger to anyone for the rest of the invasion. I believe that the seal placed upon the cursed seal of heaven is weakening and that a master should take a look at it. I would also recommend that an impartial psychiatrist give Sasuke a profile to confirm his ability to remain a ninja. Upon finishing his statement, the civilian council screamed in outrage at Naruto's slanderous words against the vaunted Ichiha. Hiruzen quickly silenced them before promising to recall Jiraiya the Toad Sage to examine the seal and requesting that Inoichi perform the analysis.
Oakage Tower, three days later. For the past three days, Hirazin had been hard at work dealing with the damages done by the invasion. Thankfully, it wasn't as bad as it could have been. There were only 300 deaths compared to what it could have been. Hirazin looked up at the sound of the office window opening and Jurea's voice calling to him. I'm surprised that you aren't buried in paperwork, Sensei. Every other time your desk would be covered in it. Hirazin smiled in response, it is thanks to Naruto teaching me how to defend against it. Of course, that was before he surprised me by letting his mask drop. Now he is barely speaking to me except in official capacities. He understood keeping his father a secret but pointed out that we could have at least told him of his mother's heritage. Hirazin leaned back with a sad sigh, we both made mistakes in regards to Naruto. I allowed the village to get away with so much and my law did more harm than good. And you will have to answer to him as to why you did not take to your godfather duties as you should have. Ureya slid in through the open window, well, I am back, and I guess I should introduce myself to him. He will have to come to terms with the fact that I had many duties to perform to keep the village safe. I heard he got a promotion too. I bet he wouldn't mind going out to celebrate. There is this really cute retreat in a brothel that I know. The perverted grin crossed the old pervert's face, I bet he would have a great time with her. Hirazin gave his student a gimlet glare and thought to himself, you better hope that Tsum and Yoshino don't hear about is no telling which one would rip you apart first. Hirazin sighs, you should know that Naruto loathes perverts and is one of the most respected males in the eyes of the female population. He found old laws that went by the wayside that forces men to take responsibility for their actions. He also created a new seal that I have not heard details about. The women give me the cold shoulder when I ask about it. As for meeting Naruto, I was just about to head over myself. While we are making our way over, I will inform you of your new mission, as well as his strange and useful new abilities. Road to the Uzumaki Compound Hirazin and Jiraiya turned down the road leading to the Uzumaki Compound and sought wind girls of about 8 or 9 years. Both wielded spears, and the only difference between them was clothing and hairstyles. Both were attempting intimidating looks that came off more cute than scary and made Hirazin laugh loudly on the inside. The two men came to a stop in front of the two, and the two groups sized each other up. The girl on the left wore a red and blue Cheongsam style dress with her hair and a long ponytail and hanging over her left shoulder. The girl on the right wore a blue and green style Cheongsam dress with her hair and pigtails. Upon seeing the two men stopping in front of them, the two girls took up defensive stances with the spears pointed at the two men. The girl on the left said, keep your hands where we can see them. Who are you and what is your business here? As the guards of this gate, it is our job to keep out the riffraff. Hiraya chuckled as he raised his hands, better do as they say old man. They have pointy sticks. Hirazin put on his grandfatherly face and replied, My name is Hirazin Siratobi, third hokage of the village hidden in the leaves. I wish to meet with your clan head if he is available. The girl on the right motioned to the girl on the left, Go tell Big Brother. I'll keep them here until you get back. The one on the left ran into the compound shouting, Big Brother. We have an old man and a kabuki at the gate. Hirazin busted out laughing at the put-upon look on his student's face, while the remaining girl sweat dropped and muttered to herself, how are we supposed to be taken seriously when she acts like that? Uzumaki compound, front gate. Seeing as it would be a few minutes before they would be allowed into the compound, Hirazin and Jurea attempted to converse with the remaining guard. The girl refused to speak to them, keeping the serious look on her face. Seeing that their attempts were getting them nowhere. The two proceeded to summon a few young toads and monkeys which began to dance in front of her. Hiraya unsealed a drum and tambourine, and he and his sensei played them for the animals. The animals' dancing soon began affecting her. Her face becomes bright red, and tears begin to form in the corners of her eyes as she struggles to hold in her laughter. Hirazin and Jiraiya smiled quietly to themselves. The antics on display were similar to what people would do to the guards at the gates of the Hyuga compound to get a reaction from people who had the emotions of a brick wall. In the history of the attempts, only two had managed to do so. Naruto and Kishina Yuzumaki. Kishina had somehow managed to get her hands on a copy of the Shadow Clone technique and had immediately put it to good use with her pranks. On one bright day, she made a Shadow Clone and had it transform into a bear of a man. She then transformed into a pregnant woman and walked up to the gate and yelled about one of them being the one to get her pregnant. This, naturally, drew a crowd and the area began to fill with whispers. The guard that she had pointed at went red in the face as the clone walked towards him, clenching and unclenching his hands and a murderous look in his eyes as he wondered aloud about whether it was possible to beat someone to death with their own skull. Those words made the guard panic and turn to run into the compound, only to forget about the gate and run right into it. Naruto, however, took a subtle approach. He also made use of the transformation technique and transformed into a beautiful blonde bombshell with big blue eyes and pigtails. She wore a short miniskirt and tube top while being rather well endowed in the chest and walked slowly past the gate. The bombshell accidentally dropped her wallet. 
She slowly bent over to pick it up, incidentally giving both guards a good look at her rear end. When she noticed that the male had activated his biakigan, the bombshell screamed out pervert. The entire street stopped to glare at the man who quickly began to deny it. Even his partner, who happened to be female, was giving him that look that promised untold pain. She then began to cry and ran away, leaving the man to receive a beat down the likes of which were still whispered of in a dark corner. Even the guard's partner got a few shots in. Who could blame her when she had to deal with the asshole daily? Ironically, they both had then gone to brag about it to their friends at Ichiraku Raymond. Hiruzen was brought back to the present by the two other voices joining the laughing. Turning brought his gaze to the guard that had gone to announce their arrival. His his gaze then went to the toads and monkeys, only to find them in a game of leapfrog. The woman that joined the two girls was five six tall with long chestnut colored hair. She had an average B cup and wore a white robe edged with golden trim and appeared to be in her twenties if both men had to guess. Hiruzen and Jureya figured that the gold trim indicated a higher rank as was common amongst the servants of noble clans. When her chuckles passed, the woman turned to look at Hiruzen and Jureya, greetings Lord Hokage and Master Jureya. I am Amai. I am one of the head servants here. We are honored by your presence. Welcome. She followed those words with a small bow. Hiruzen returned the bow, we are honored to be here. Thank you for welcoming us. And how may the Uzumaki clan be of service to you today, Lord Hokage? Amai asked. We have come to discuss several topics with the clan head. Hiruzen replied. Amai nodded, very well. If you would please follow me, I will escort you to see Lord Uzumaki. She then turned to look at the two girls, I think the both of you have done enough playing guard for today. The two girls turned away from the animals and crossed their arms with petulant looks on their faces, we are not playing. Big Brother said that we could be guards if we wanted to. The three adults smiled, and Amai cocked her head, if I remember correctly, he also said that you had to remember to do your homework too. Have you finished your homework? Both girls go red in the face from embarrassment before turning walking off, muttering about why they needed to study stupid history. Hallway, Amai leads the two men through the halls of the compound to Lord Uzumaki's office. After turning a few corridors, she suddenly stops and pulls out a pair of scissors. Bending down, she cuts a piece of string and a bucket filled with waterfalls from above. Standing up again, she placed the scissors back into her pocket and looked over to an area of the wall. She shook her head with a knowing smile, I expect to see this mess cleaned up before I come back. Both men were surprised to see a canvas tarp fall to the ground and reveal a boy with an annoyed look on his face, I'll get you one day Amai. You'll see. Amai nods with a slightly condescending yet with a challenging look, and yet, not a single one of your booby traps have worked. She frowns when the boy begins to laugh, what is so funny? The boy's chuckle died down enough for him to say, you said booby. Quiet laughter from her side shows Hiruzen and Jureya, both struggling not to laugh. She rolled her eyes with an annoyed look, really. Men of your age should be above such silliness. She gestured for them to follow her as she continued down the hallway. After a few seconds, Hiruzen inquires, so am I san Is that normal here? Amai let off a small laugh as she nodded, yes. Lord Uzumaki insisted that the children continue his family tradition of playing pranks on each other. He said that it is a great way for the children to be trained in keeping their eyes open and always being aware of their surroundings. After all, one is never certain of where an attack will come from. It also keeps the servants on their toes. Hiruzen and Jureya both nodded their heads. Such a training method looked very useful. I am not surprised that the Uzumaki clan would come up with this. Their training, though unorthodox, has always been effective. Hiruzen thought to himself. The brat acts nothing like the boy they wrote about in the letters that they sent to me. Jureya thought. But he also made some ground rules, Amai said, snapping the two men from their thoughts, one is that the children are to not mess with any undergarments. He made this especially clear to the boys that there would be a severe punishment for such. Another is that should any servant holding a child under the age of three, they are to be worn away as to not harm the child. She stopped in front of a door where much shouting could be heard. Naruto office. Naruto walked back into his office from the secondary room attached to it. He sits down at the desk in the room and sends a glare at the three people sitting before it, for the record, I was able to fix his seal. Tamari, Kankuro and their sensei Baki began to sweat underneath Naruto's cold gaze. Naruto then surged up from his seat and slammed his hands onto the desk and yelled, now which one of you incompetent morons would like to explain how in the hell your village could call that piece of shit a seal? Whoever did it better hope that I never find them because if I do I will be introducing my boot to their ass. I will leave a footprint so deep that not even Tsunade Senju could remove it. I could walk out there and go into my nursery and select one of the toddlers and give them a crayon, and they could probably do a better job at making a seal. Had I not fixed the one currently on your brother, it would have come undone within five years. Naruto sat down heavily, still glaring at them as they paled. They could very well imagine what would happen if Shukaku had escaped while in the middle of the desert. That was basically giving him a home field advantage. 
Naruto began to rub his nose and eyes to try and lessen his migraine and let out a breath. He looks back up at them, I'm sorry for yelling. It is just that my family specializes in and the moment I saw that seal, I felt that someone was trying to take a pile of crap and smear it across my family's name. Aki steeled his nerves and stepped forward. He bowed and said, I assure you, Lord Yuzumaki, that as soon as we return to the Hidden Sand Village, I shall personally see to the revamp of our sealing division and immediate removal of all that are found to be incompetent. Naruto opened the drawer on his desk and took out a scroll that was larger than most and placed it on his desk before looking back up at the sand ninja to make sure that you have people that are properly trained, I will give you this scroll. Normally, my family would never give something like this out, but I feel that it is necessary. Inside, you will find 20 books ranging from beginner to journeyman. I only have one condition. Never allow another piece of shit seal like the one that I just saw leave your village again. The three nodded their heads. You can take your brother back now. Just make sure he gets some sleep. Thankfully, I was able to fix that. A knock on the door caught his attention. Who is it? Naruto called out. It is a my lord Yuzumaki. I apologize for disturbing you, but you have guests who wish to speak with you. Thank you Amai. Please wait with them and I will be free in a minute. Naruto called back. Yes Lord Yuzumaki. Naruto's attention refocused upon the three sand ninja, it seems that I must cut this meeting short, but if I remember correctly we have a council meeting tomorrow. I have a few more things to discuss with you. Seeing the panicked looks on their faces, Naruto raised his hand and said, don't worry. It's nothing bad. As Kankuro went into the next room and picked Gara up, Baki picked up a scroll, I am glad that you are not one of those who would hold a grudge against us for being manipulated. Naruto chuckled, I think that if you were to go back and look at my clan's history, you would see that we were not ones to hold grudges like our cousins the Ichiha and Senju. It takes a lot to earn the wrath of my entire clan, and to this day, the land of mines remains the only one with such an incident. But that is a story for another time. Naruto called out to the door, am I? Please step in. I need to speak to you for a moment in private. Ankuro and Baki started towards the door before they both noticed that Tamari had yet to move. Baki called to her, Tamari. We are leaving now. Is there something I can help you with Tamari-chan? Naruto asked. Tamari's face went red and she slowly reached into a pouch and pulled out a book, see can I please gg get you to ss sign my copy. Naruto just laughed and shook his head as he took the book from her and quickly signed it. Taking her book back, Tamari gave him a curtsy and stuttered out a thanks. Upon realizing what she just did, her face went red and she quickly left the room. Amai closed the door behind the embarrassed girl, a small laugh leaving her. Hallway, a wicked grin makes its way onto Kankuro's face, I can't believe you actually curtsied. Tamari slowly turned to look at her brother with a calm look that made Kankuro shiver in fear, let me make this perfectly clear little brother. That never happened. If I ever hear of anything getting out about what never happened, I will release certain pictures of you from when you were younger playing with mother's makeup. Kankuro slowly backs away from his sister. Tamari turned back to the hallway and looked at the three men standing to the side with a sweet smile on her face, that goes for you as well. Here is an and Jiraiya both see a ghost image of Tsunade who has the same look that usually followed up with pain, and both had been unfortunate enough to have it directed at them on more than one occasion. She then looks at Baki, what did he mean about there only being one group ever to earn the wrath of his clan? I've never heard of the land of mines. Baki frowned, I am not familiar with it either. His family's not mentioned much within the land of wind. Here is in cleared his throat, I believe I can explain that. It happened long before the first shinobi war. The Yuzumaki clan has always been rather peaceful. They often refused to go into battle. They always kept cool heads even if they could be quick-tempered. They never went into battle over small matters. They were the staunchest of allies and your worst enemy rolled into one. At one point the ruler of the land of mines had a son who staged a coup in order to take the lands from his father. He then sent every man, woman, and child that could not fight as one of his soldiers into the mines to dig up minerals and increase the country's wealth. As I said earlier, normally they would not get involved, they were set off because it was discovered that he had placed slave seals upon them, which were usually reserved for prisoners. What made it worse was that it was a seal that they had invented and that it was being used on children. Naruto's biological grandfather sent in a battalion of 25 soldiers from Whirlpool, who proceeded to wipe out the sun and his followers in a single 24-hour period. Unfortunately, the sun was able to collapse the mines and kill almost everyone inside. The land was then annexed by the surrounding countries. This is probably why you have never heard of it. Ankuro let out a whistle, if 25 of them could do that, I would hate to see what would have happened if they had mobilized their entire army. What would happen to them if they were so strong? Pirazin looked down, they were wiped out during the second shinobi war by three of the main villages. Naruto's mother was already here in the leaf village at the time and was the only known survivor of the attack. If there were any other survivors, they would have gone into hiding. 
As the mood of the room fell, Baki spoke up, well, if you will excuse us, we need to get back to our room. We will see you tomorrow at the council meeting, Lord Hokage. And the sand ninja turned and left. Gureya turned and looked at his sensei, how does the brat know about that? It isn't common knowledge. Gereza nodded, this is why I have decided to send you on this mission. I want you to investigate the land of waves. That is where we will find our answers. Anything else that might have been said was cut off by the opening door. Office, Naruto sat behind his desk with his fingers intertwined in front of his face, Lord Hokage. What can I do for you today? Hiruzen put on a winning smile, well Lord Yuzumaki, I came here today to see if you would be willing to give me any information on your strange new abilities that you have gained. Though before that, I would like to introduce my former student, introductions are not needed in Hiruzen. I know exactly who he is. Jiraiya was my father's teacher as well as the man that my parents asked to become my godfather. Gureya had his typical grin on his face and laughed as he said, well I have to say Brad. You seem to be doing pretty well for yourself with all those beautiful women I saw as I was walking in. Not surprising with who your mother and father were. I heard from Sensei that you were able to smack Orochimaru around quite a bit. Oh how I wish I could have seen that. Naruto's voice was cold as he replied, Master Jiraiya, and I use that title loosely, you would do well to remember your place and give me the respect that is due to a head of two clans as well as being a daimyo. Seeing that one should consider that they are standing on thin ice as it is, as well as all of the crimes that I can charge you with against both of my clans and my country. Gureya's face went flat and lost the silly grin, don't get full of yourself brat. And what crimes are you talking about? The grin on Naruto's face was one that had Hiruzen shivering as he remembered all the times that Naruto wore it as he pulled something particularly clever. Naruto reached down and opened a drawer. He pulled out a large binder that was at least 8 inches thick and looked back up at Jiraiya, do you know what this is? Naruto asked as he placed the binder in the middle of the table. Gureya shook his head and crossed his arms, enlighten me. Naruto smirked, I figured that I would be seeing you soon and went to have a talk with Sarah Sato, the head of the hospital, and one of the precious few people who I know I can trust completely, and requested a complete copy of my medical history. Inside this binder is a report for every single attack that I have ever suffered from. Naruto once again entwined his fingers in front of his face and continued, tell me something Jiraiya, did you bother to read that paperwork my mother gave you when they asked you to be my godfather? I'm going to say no you didn't because if you had you would have read the small print that said that your signature made you a member of my family. Which means that you are obligated to follow all of the laws of the Yuzumaki clan, along with the laws of the land of Whirlpool, and you have committed a great many crimes against both. A vindictive look passed over Naruto's face, I am hereby charging you with each and every single one of these attacks, in the form of child abandonment and child endangerment, as well as child neglect and accepted line extension on both my clans and the royal line of the land of Whirlpool, as by way of proxy for failure to uphold your responsibility as my godfather. Those words made both men go pale, and Jiraiya shook his head before saying, well, the land of Whirlpool was wiped out, so it is not like you can bring me before the court. Even if you are the daimyo, you would have to get me into the land of Whirlpool to use your power to bring me up on charges. Naruto nods his head, you are correct. My family's home country was wiped out, and you are correct that I would have to get you into said country to use my power, but what I fail to remember is that the Yuzumaki clan are masters of pranking. They love to put clauses in contracts that are made in order to benefit us. Naruto reached down and pulled another piece of paper from his desk. Hiruzen felt his stomach drop in sinking horror. Though they were often the butt of many jokes, they were masters of politics to the point that every deal made benefited them in some way, shape or form. And any broken contracts were punished severely. Naruto slid the paper towards his two visitors, when this village was founded a clause was added by this clan into the contract that we signed. Since the family was being split into two with one side being royal, it was decided that this compound would be considered the land of whirlpools, if you take a look closely, you will see the seals for both my grandfather, as well as the fire daimyo. This means that as soon as you two gentlemen walked through that gate, you were standing on Whirlpool territory. This is sovereign ground, and all laws in the land of fire are immediately tossed out. Naruto then snapped his fingers. Seals suddenly sprang to life underneath both men, and two black cloaked figures appeared out of nowhere. The taller of the two wore a golden cat mask, while the shorter wore a bumblebee mask. Jiraiya and Hiruzen both began to struggle, Naruto. Release us immediately. There was a sudden knock at the door, and Amai's voice spoke up, Lord Yuzumaki. The two foreign dignitaries you asked for have arrived. Naruto let out a small laugh and looked over at Jiraiya, I'm not the only one that you have to answer to. Hiruzen and Jiraiya both heard the door open but could not look to see who it was. Jiraiya began to panic though when a new female voice spoke up. Hello, Jiraiya boy. And then there was a smack. Naruto smiled as he got to his feet, thanks for coming, Elder Fukasaku, Elder Shima. I'm glad you were able to accept my invitation. 
Two toads suddenly jumped onto the table in front of the two men. The male is green with a long goatee and large eyebrows and holds a walking stick. The female is purple and wearing an apron while holding a rolling pin. Both were glaring at Jurea with hatred on their faces. The female turned away from Jurea and smiled a bright happy smile at Naruto, Naruto Tadpole, what have I told you about calling me ma? She playfully swung her rolling pin at the boy. Naruto put up his hands as he dodged the rolling pin, but the smile never drops, sorry. Sorry. The cough caught the attention of both, and they turned to Fukasaku, ma, stop teasing Naruto boy. We have business to take care of. Now Naruto boy, please release them. They will not be going anywhere while ma and I are here. A moment later, the seals disappeared, now, which one of you would like to explain to us about all the lying you have been doing to us about Naruto boy's life? Despite the seals being released, both men knew that they could not escape. Therefore, they began to explain themselves as best as they could to the two toad sages, and Naruto's mind flashed back to when he first met the toad elders. Flashback, land of waves. Naruto was sitting in training ground two after deciding to take a break from training. He was currently surrounded by all of his new little sisters, as well as Ranjiku and Momo. One of the little devils had let it slip that he was a master hair braider, and he had gotten overwhelmed by a massive puppy dog's eyes. As he sat there, he planned his revenge on Eno for forcing him to learn how to do this. His revenge plans against Eno were put on hold when he heard the portable door opening and turned to see his parents walking in. Both looked like they had been put through the ringer and there was either a frog or toad on both of his father's shoulders. Putting down the hairbrush and standing up, he walked over to his parents, what happened to you two and why are there frogs on your shoulders dad? The one that appeared to be female jumped at him while swinging the rolling pin that it held, frog. I'll show you who is a frog. The children all laughed as they watched their big brother have to dodge the female's attacks, though he did receive a few whacks on the head. Naruto began to run around the training ground as the toad continued to chase him, shouting about being called a frog. One of the little girls walked up to Kashina and pulled on her left hand. When she had Kashina's attention she asked, Grandma. Why is big brother being chased by an angry frog? Kashina had gone wide-eyed at being called Grandma, that isn't a frog. It is a toad. The little girl looked at the remaining one still on Minato's shoulders in confusion, what's the difference? The female toad finally stopped jazzing Naruto and jumped back onto Minato's shoulder, there are many differences. We will tell you later, young tadpole. Naruto walked back to the group covered in bumps and bruises. He looks at his father, who are they? Why are they here? And what happened to you too? He made sure to stay well out of the female toad's reach. Minato smiled sheepishly, sorry Naruto. I forgot to tell you that I was going to see the summoning clan that I signed with before. Allow me to introduce you to the elders Fukasaku and Shima of the Toad Summoning Clan. And as for why we look like this? Your mother and I had to spar with them to prove that we were who we said we were. Fukasaku looks at Naruto, so this is your tadpole. I can sense that he is going to be quite strong when he grows up. Just call me Pa. Everyone does. Shima spoke up on the girl's shoulder, and you can call me Ma. Fukasaku's face went hard, Naruto boy, Minato boy was able to tell us about how they were brought back and about your life in the leaf village, but we want to hear about it from you. After that we can make a decision about what to do about Jiraiya boy for abandoning his family. That is the highest crime amongst the Toad clan. Naruto looked at them for a moment and then began to tell his story. Both Ma and Pa were livid by the end of it and were more than willing to help him when the time came. End of flashback, Naruto was brought out of his thoughts by Fukasaku's angry shouting, Jiraiya. You have been a friend of the Toads for many years, and though there have been times where we thought you could do better, neither Ma or I ever thought you could sink so low. As of this moment, your contract is suspended. Once your trial with the Naruto boy is finished, you will be standing before the Council of Toads to answer for your crimes against us. Fukasaku made a few hand signs, and a seal appeared on Jiraiya's hand, this will suppress your chakra, and not even you will be able to break it. Naruto looks at Jiraiya, your trial will be in a couple of days. This should give Hiruzen enough time to try and put together a defense for you. He then looked to the two cloaked figures behind him, take him away and put him under a 24-hour watch. The two figures walked over to the man and each put a hand on his shoulder to lead him out of the room, the man's head hanging. They stopped when Naruto called out to Jiraiya and I would suggest that you not try any of your womanizing techniques on the female guards. The one on your left can and will make you look worse than if you had been attacked by Tsunade and the four ice queens at the same time. The one in the cat mask leans close to Jiraiya's ear, give me a reason. They all heard his shoulder make a crunching sound. Naruto looks at Hiruzen, I promise that he will get a fair trial. Hiruzen nodded, he is a good man despite his faults. Is this really necessary for Naruto? What happened to the little boy that always forgave the people? Naruto leaned back in his chair, he is still in here. But now he puts his family's protection above all else. Naruto stood up from his chair and walked over to the window, gesturing for Hiruzen to follow him. Hiruzen smiled as they both looked over the children playing in the courtyard. 
He is broken out of his thoughts when Naruto spoke up, I may not have been there when my people were wiped out, but this time I will not stand by and let this fall apart again. Even if I have to burn the world to the ground, I will do everything in my power to protect my people. And if I should be separated from them? Well. I read a poem somewhere that had a part that said even if the morrow is barren of promises, nothing shall forestall my return. And make no mistake, I will return. Uzumaki compound, Hiruzen stood at the window watching the children play below with a smile on his face. This was what made being the Hokage worth it. Seeing these young faces growing up happy and carefree. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw a proud smile adorning Naruto's face, you know. This is rather funny. I remember your mother saying that when she could get the chance that she would adopt all the children in the orphanages. Hiruzen let out a sad sigh, unfortunately the third war broke out, and afterward, she became pregnant with you. I don't believe that I ever saw her as happy as she was the day she found out, though I think that she would be happy with how you were able to complete one of her dreams. Naruto's smile became softer but no less genuine, it was only right that I do so. I didn't have too many people to care for or about me enough that I could consider them family. But when I found out that I had this large property and vast resources, my first thought was giving those who were like me a chance at a happy life. As the big brother, that was and is my responsibility. I am curious as to how you got aid to agree to help us. I will not demand to know what new techniques you offered him, but it does leave one curious. Hiruzen said. Naruto let off a small aff and scratched the back of his head, reverting to the boy that had brightened up the old man's days so much, that's actually a funny story, you know. Hiruzen chuckled as he thought to himself, you may have your father's looks, but you have your mother's personality. As the two headed back over to the desk, Naruto noticed that Ma and Pa had already left. He took a seat and waited for Hiruzen to do the same before beginning his tale. Flashback Kumagakur, Naruto watched as the large man behind the desk stood up and a woman near the well activated a seal. He walked over to the window and looked out over the village, I must say, your village is very beautiful. Especially the mountain range. In the hidden leaf, all you can see are trees. The man let out a snort, I don't know who you are, but I doubt you came here merely to get a look at my village. Before Naruto could say a word, the door to the room slammed open, and a team of six people swarmed in, each one drawing a blade and taking up a position around Naruto. Thanks to having studied the most recent bingo book, he was able to recognize a few of them. To Naruto's immediate right was a man with blonde hair named C. To his immediate left is a man with dark skin and white hair named Derry who looked at the wreckage and said, what's going on eh and who is this? Suddenly a large man crashed through one of the windows and drew two of what looked to be seven swords, never fear. The master killer B is here, fools you fools. Naruto fascipumed, you do realize the window right next to you is open. There was no reason whatsoever for you to break that one. A and the other ninja all had the decency to be embarrassed before A looked at B, that is coming out of your paycheck. A then turned back to Naruto, now then, I will only ask this one more time. Who are you and what do you want? Naruto ignored the people standing around him and walked up to the desk, as I said before, my name is Naruto Uzumaki, and I am the son of Kashina Uzumaki and Minato Namikas. Naruto held back a smirk at their looks of disbelief, the reason that I am here is to call in the debt that you owe my mother from the third ninja war. From what I understand you were placed in charge of a border town near the border of the Land of Fire. You came under attack from the Hidden Stone and sought to evacuate the town. However, having a force made up of recently graduated genin made it harder than it should have been. Despite the fact that you were enemies, Kishina decided to draw the attacking ninja away from you. It is time to pay back that debt. Every cloud ninja turned to look at A, and he crossed his arms before motioning for them to stand down, so you are the son of that blonde bastard who thought that he was faster than me and that overgrown tomato. Land of Waves Academy Training Ground 1, you're doing great. Give me two more laps and then you can hit the showers. Kashina was suddenly struck by an urge to kill something as her gaze was drawn to the north, whoever used that damn nickname better hope to Kami-sama that I do not find them. Cause if I do I will reach down their throats and make their innards become their outsides. Kashina's evil cackling caught the attention of her students. One leaned over to her nearest friend and said, is that even possible? Her friend shrugged, dunno, but it sounds like it would be funny to see. Kumagaka Rakage office, Naruto paled before he began looking around carefully, I'd be careful of using that nickname if I were you. I wouldn't put it past her to come back from the grave just to beat you senseless. I heard a rumor that she once took the daimyo of fire to task for using it. A blonde-haired female with a bountiful chest between large C and D cup named Samui, according to the bingo book, crossed her arms, that was so not cool or rakage. You should not disrespect the dead. The white-haired male with a lollipop in his mouth, who was vaguely recognized as Amoy, began a monologue about the worst-case scenario of a vengeful ghost, coming back to haunt them for disrespecting her and listing horrible things that she might do. He then began making plans to go to the nearest shrine and buy a talisman for his apartment. 
his panic attack was stopped short by a red-haired female with a similar body type as Sakura as she began to strangle him. Killer B pulled the girl, Kari if Naruto remembered correctly, away from Amoy, admonishing her as he did so. Naruto walked over to Amoy and put a comforting hand on his shoulder, I feel your pain brother. I have a female teammate who likes to use me as a way to vent stress through a personal punching bag. She seems to have the same issue. They just cannot get a boyfriend. Gary's face becomes flushed with anger as she attempts to attack Naruto. She was grabbed by a second blonde-haired woman that he recognized as the Two Tails container Yujito Nai. Yujito had a cat-like grin that strongly reminded Naruto of Yuruchi. Mental note. Naruto muttered, never let her meet Yuruchi. Yujito raises an eyebrow but ignores it, what makes you think that she doesn't have a boyfriend? Naruto shrugged, just a hunch really. I've seen a lot of tomboys like her that prefer hard work and training until they are covered in sweat and not worrying about makeup. Plus the blisters on her hands are the kind that you get only from continuously training, along with her anger issues and mood swings that keep popping up. Also, with my heightened sense of smell, I cannot smell any other scents on her except for those in this room. Gary was hunched over in the corner, muttering about easily intimidated guys who wanted to go after the girls who had big breasts and no brains. Naruto walked over and patted her on the head, cheer up. At least you aren't absolutely useless in a fight. My teammate is a fangirl who is convinced that she just needs to wait for her prince to come and save her when she is in trouble. As Kari looked at him with confusion, Naruto turned back to the room, back to the reason for my being here. I have come to request your help in battle. The Hidden Leaf Village is under attack by Orochimaru. The Hokage is strong, but he is getting on in age and will not make it through this battle. Orochimaru's army has been repelled, but that snake needs to go. He may have come from the Leaf Village, but he is a genuine threat to all villages. By assisting me in this, your debt that you owe to my mother will be cleared, and I am willing to give Kumagakur a few of my clan's personal seals. A looked at Naruto, is that all that you are offering? Naruto shook his head, thanks to a subordinate crashing a black market sale, I have recently come into possession of quite a few relics that belong to Kumagakur. Naruto handed a slip of paper to the woman standing against the wall who had activated the seal, I believe that I have not had the pleasure of getting your name miss. The white-haired female gave a small smile, I am Lord Rakage's secretary Mabui. Naruto chuckled, I'm assuming that with the grumbling of paperwork that I heard when I first arrived, you also happen to be his babysitter. A immediately began grumbling about disrespectful brats as Mabui opened the paper. C spoke up from where he was looking over man's shoulder, what the heck. Most of these items have been missing for decades. You said that your subordinate found these in a black market sale. Naruto nodded with a solemn look on his face, they managed to catch my attention by committing an act that no Yuzumaki would ever condone. I ordered my subordinate to kill them all. Samui looked at Killer B, Sensei. What is he talking about? Barry spoke up from where he was leaning against the wall with his hand on his chin, Pops always said that the worst thing you could do was to attack a woman or child while in the presence of an Yuzumaki. If I did, then I should pray for a quick death. At least someone studies their history, Naruto said, also, just so you know. Even if you decide to stay your blade and refuse to help, the relics will still be returned. Out of curiosity, said A as he looked up from the list, what is stopping us from simply capturing you and holding you for ransom? Naruto smirked and a shiver went through the lot of them, ha ha ha. You are looking at the prankster king of Konoha. I have been out running Jonin and Anbu since I was 8 years old. It got to the point that the Hokage made it a punishment to try and chase me down. Essentially it became the equivalent of the D-rank mission of capturing the daimyo of Firewife's cat Tora, known to every shinobi in the Leaf Village as the Demon Cat. The shiver got worse as every cloud ninja suddenly had a picture of a dog with a green scarf. Pillar B spoke up, I think you should help him big bro. Little number 9 has been telling the truth so far. A's gaze snapped to B, what do you mean number 9? Naruto sent a deadpan look at B, was it really necessary to give away my secret like that? Yujito walked over from her corner and slapped the man on the back of the head, you idiot. We have a hard enough time as it is without people sharing our secrets. She looked over at Naruto, sorry about that. Naruto let out a sigh, whatever. Yep, I'm the Jinchuriki of the nine-tailed fox Kurama. Unfortunately, he and I are not on as good of terms as B and Miss Yujito. As he reaches out and kisses the back of her hand. Which then makes her face go bright red, getting jealous looks sent her way from the other three women in the room. B began to hop around on one foot to become a master of your tailed beast, you must get rid of the fear and anger. Clear the darkness from your heart and be one with your partner. You fool. Naruto backs away from the awful rapping, is he always like that? The looks of embarrassment from every face gave him his answer, well, it isn't the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Amoy looked at Naruto with a small amount of fear, what could be worse than that? 
Naruto gave him a solemn look, a sensei and student both with bowl cut hair and large eyebrows that look like caterpillars, and dressed in green spandex who run around the village screaming about youth and challenging others to ridiculous contests. And they have their own personalities that make you want to claw your own eyes out. Amoy paled spectacularly as C and Derry laughed, you must be speaking of Mike Guy. Naruto nodded. They looked at Naruto, if I agree to this, how do I know that you will not use this technique to invade my village? Naruto turned and looked A dead in the eye, I swear upon the honor of the Uzumaki clan that I shall never use this technique for such a purpose. And you know that no Uzumaki would ever break such an oath. A stood up from his desk and cracked his knuckles, then it looks like I will be getting myself a new snakeskin belt. Just remember Brad, if you break your promise, I will break you. Ijito spoke up from next to B, if you ever need help with your tailed beast training, I'm sure that B and I would be willing to make time to help you. Thank you for the offer, Naruto said with a small smile, I've been told that Matatabi is the only one that is able to scare Kurama. Unfortunately, I haven't gotten anything about that out of him. Ijito looked curious before she closed her eyes. When she opened them again, she sighed, sorry. She says that it is a personal thing between them. Naruto took out a piece of paper and quickly wrote something down on it and handed it to Mabui, don't open that until after we leave. He then opened another set of Japanese sliding doors and said let's go. And the two of them walked through. After they both left, C looks at Mabui, what does the note say? They all watch as she opens it. Note, I thought this might be interesting to you all. The secret to defeating paperwork is using clones. Now you can all blackmail him into giving you vacation time. End of note, the room was suddenly filled with evil laughter, as plans were made to get the most vacation time as they could for this information. Present time Yuzumaki compound, Hiruzen could only sit there and shake his head as he regarded his second grandson, how is it that he can worm his way into the hearts of anyone outside of the village, but it took the revelation of his heritage for his own village to accept him. Hiruzen spoke up, would you ever tell me how you came across all of this information about your family, Lord Yuzumaki? Naruto put his elbows on the table before him and interlocked his fingers, I am only telling you this out of respect for the fact that you did your best to care for me when I was younger. During my month of training in the Land of Waves, I came across someone who had gathered a large amount of information and was quite happy to share it with me. Hiruzen rubbed his chin, would you be able to tell me where this person can be found? I would like to meet with him. Naruto's cover story that he and his parents had prepped flowed easily from his lips, sadly, he is no longer with us. He was a former non-Uzumaki member of the Royal Guard who managed to escape the destruction of the Land of Whirlpools. Unfortunately, not long after he managed to stumble across my mother while she was on a mission, he was hit by a slow-acting poison from a hidden stone ninja. He was headed back to the Land of Whirlpools to die there, but happened to meet me on the way back. He never made it, but he was happy to tell me of my heritage. Hiruzen heaved a sigh and suddenly seemed to look every year of his life, I wish you did not have to learn of your family that way. I should not have hidden it from you, but I knew that the people would have treated you like royalty. They would have praised you and heaped upon you anything you wanted. As well, they would have sent their daughters to seduce you in order to get a portion of your wealth and power. You would not have known if those around you were truly your friends or not. Naruto lowered his gaze and sighed, you are right. Thanks to the way I grew up, I was able to find myself without the need to sift through lies. It was that which led to most of the clan heads liking me. Even if most of the village hates me, I know that they respect me and treat me like a son. Naruto frowned, though I am pretty sure that Tsum will be quite overprotective now that she knows who my mother is. Hiruzen chuckled, I do not envy you. What with your book selling as it is, she and Yoshino will be having to beat off many who will fail their standards. Naruto blushed and then filed away the need to prank the old Hokage as soon as possible, I apologize, but I am going to have to cut this meeting short. I have a meeting scheduled with several clan heads today. If there is anything else, please tell me now. Hiruzen cleared his throat. I originally came today to ask for your assistance on a mission. I had plans to send you out to find my remaining student, Tsunade, and bring her back to the village. This will be counted as an air rank mission. Naruto nodded, a few days should give me time to sort some things out. I plan to head towards Tenzaku quarters and the gambling dens. If she is anywhere in the land of fire, she'll be there. What about teammates? Hiruzen replied, I had plans of allowing you to take up to three additional people of your choice. You will, of course, be the team leader. Very well. Naruto said as he stood up, I will see you when it is time to head out. Hiruzen stood as well, if it would be alright, I would like a chance to speak with Yureya before I return to the office. Naruto nodded and made his way to the door, allow me to escort you. Yuzumaki compound hallway, the two made their way through the hallways, easily avoiding the various pranks in their way. They were all rather obvious and gave Naruto a sense of nostalgia as he thought back to his first few pranks. They were just turning a corner when there was a puff and Naruto was suddenly colored in a rainbow of glitter. Hiruzen could barely hold himself up as he started to laugh and wished that he had a camera. 
Nobody would ever believe him if he said that Naruto had actually been caught in a prank. Naruto quickly got over the shock and used a small wind to disperse the glitter from his body. Naruto looked around and spotted a seal tag that had been disguised as a part of the floor, and a quick study told him that it only reacted when a particularly high level of chakra passed over it. A small giggle drew his attention to a nearby closet, and he walked over to it. Opening the door revealed the hidden person to be Nakara. She was one of the adopted children. She was 10 years old with soft blonde hair and round glasses. She was also rather intelligent which led to her never being adopted, as well as developing a similar arrogance to that of a certain Achea, due to her belief that no potential parent would ever measure up to her level of intelligence. Naruto was quick to squash that arrogance and prove to her that intelligence did not always matter on the streets. Naruto crossed his arms over his chest, hello Nakara. You wouldn't happen to know anything about this prank, would you? Nakara looked up with a face that shone with innocence, what do you mean big brother? I've been reading here. She showed him the book that she picked up off the floor. Naruto's skepticism showed, you were reading a book in the closet because. Nakara gave a deadpan stare, I have a dozen brothers and sisters. I need my peace and quiet sometimes. Hiruzen was standing to the side, watching the two with an amused look. Naruto nodded a bit, understandable, but why did you not have a light on? The car was clearly struggling to think, well, um, you see, suddenly her face brightened, it's a very scary story, and it is better read in the dark. She gave a large smile. Naruto took the book from her, mathematics huh? I agree that it can be pretty scary. Naruto gave her his signature foxy grin, come out and clean this up, I'll give you credit, since you were able to get me. Naruto then turned to Hiruzen, Nakara, allow me to introduce you to the third Hokage, Hiruzen Sirotobi. Nakara quickly introduced herself. Naruto then shouted out, don't think I don't see you, Anko and Ino. Hiruzen and Nakara both turned to see each mentioned girl holding one of the children. Seeing the children in identical outfits to the females holding them made Naruto's right eye begin to twitch. He quickly began to make plans to get back at them. He gave an aggrieved sigh, why is it that every time I turn around, one of the women I know is attempting to make a mini-me from my siblings? If I see one more doing it, I can't be held responsible for what will happen. The two women quickly ran from his watchful gaze. Hiruzen saw movement out of the corner of his left eye and saw Akari attempting to tiptoe away with two little girls following her. She wasn't quite fast enough, and Naruto threw a kunai at her. She was quick to catch it and laughed, still throwing too far to the left, Naruto come don't worry, they'll be home by dinner. Hiruzen smirked to himself, enjoying the sight of Naruto experiencing the same pain that Hiruzen had been put through by Naruto, as the boy began to chant over and over, I must not kill evil women. Naruto sighed, let's get you to the holding cells. Hopefully there won't be any more trouble. Naruto glowered, knowing this compound though, that is a tall order. Naruto missed Nakara shaking Hiruzen's hand and slipping something into it as she said, it was nice to meet you. And you as well, Hiruzen said with a grandfatherly smile as he placed the item into the sleeve of his robe. Uzumaki compound holding cells. Upon entering the holding area, Naruto began to rub his eyes, I need a vacation. The reason for this statement was because of the three girls who were doing an admirable job of annoying Jiraiya. Hiruzen smiled as he recognized one of the girls, hello again Miss Nariko. Would you like to introduce me to your friends? Nariko exchanged nods with the other two girls, okay. Let's do it. Just like we practiced. The three quickly got into a line, and Nariko struck a pose. Her head was held high and her arms raised slanted above her shoulders with a hand fan in each hand. The two girls with her began twirling in a childish elegance, and they each pulled out their own fans and came to a stop facing away from each other, their fans snapped open and one raised to cover their lips while the other was held above and back toward Nariko. Nariko then spoke, from the tallest mountain to the largest ocean. Through the thickest jungle to the hottest desert there will one day come a team of Kinoichi that will stand above all that have come before and all who shall come after. When they step upon the battlefield, all shall flee, and even the reaper himself shall bow to their awesomeness. Their tales shall be the stories that mothers will tell to their children before bed to get them to behave. She then steps forward and knees toward the floor on one knee, her arms crossed and the fans resting above her shoulders, Nariko and Yuzuka. The team leader specializes in recon and tracking. The girl to her left stood and spun, stopping to look back over her left shoulder. Her fan didn't quite hide the evil grin on her face, Ashi Yuzumaki. Specializing in demolition. The third girl slid onto her side, and her fans moved to seemingly hold herself up, Nelio specializing in public speaking. They then come together, once again standing in a row, and together we are Team Alpha. Pirazin and Jurea double over with laughter before holding up scorecards reading 9. And 9.1. Naruto is merely face-palmed. Naruto rubbed his nose before speaking to the three, why are the three of you in this room? Ashio looked up at him innocently, we wanted to see the kabuki and show him our dance. Jiraiya immediately began to rant and rave about not being a kabuki but went ignored, we were also looking for you big brother. 
We wanna know if we can go to Ichiraku Raymond. Immediately all three had him surrounded and were saying please. Again and again with large smiles on their faces. Naruto crossed his arms over his chest, considering the way the three of you have been acting recently, I'm not so sure. The puppy dog pout was thrown at him from three faces, and he shook his head, that isn't going to work, and you three devils have been nothing but trouble recently. Mariko let out a huff, we are not devils. And suddenly the three somehow cast a hat that gave them each a halo, we are as innocent as the day we were born. Naruto had a mental image of Kurinai as he thought of who could have taught them that. Pressing the bridge of his nose, Naruto said, note to self, name her after the meeting. He then focused on the three girls once more, all right. You can go, but you have to take one of the servants with you. Just tell the old man to put it on my tab. Naruto stopped the three as they made to run off, however, you are each only allowed four bulls. The three continued on their way and Naruto looked at Hiruzen, was I that bad when I was younger? Hiruzen took one look at him and took off his hat, I used to have a head full of hair before you came along. Naruto scoffed, whatever. I've got a meeting to get to. I'm sure that you can find your way out. See you at tomorrow's meeting. The moment the door was closed, Hiruzen looked at Jiraiya and said, I've said it once and I'll say it again. That boy looks like his father and acts like his mother. Hiruzen then pulled out the paper that Nakara had handed him and unfolded it. It was a picture of the glitter prank. Hiruzen grinned, I think that we have his bingo book picture. He showed it to Jiraiya, and the two shared a laugh. Amek never wish upon a star. The night after the meeting between the Sand siblings and Naruto, the three walked into their room in the Golden Leaf Hotel. After having his seal fixed, Gara had truly opened up to his brother and sister. Thank you for dinner, Gara said to the two, it was enjoyable to spend time with you too. Now if you will excuse me, I'm going to sleep. He headed to his room. Once inside, Tamari said to Kankuro, it's so nice to have our little brother back. And we owe it all to Lord Uzumaki. We will have to find a way to pay him back eventually for all that he has done for our family. She then pulled out her now autographed book and walked over to the couch to pick up where she left off. Seeing as Gara has gone to bed and you're already into that lame book, I'm gonna work on my puppets. Kankuro said with a snort. Damari gave her brother a look, this book is a hundred times better than that smut that you think you are hiding. Kankuro ignored her and walked into his room, seeing his puppets laying where he had left them. Before he could get any further, the three puppets suddenly turned to him and said, Daddy. You're home. And stood up and began to run to him. Kankuro quickly slammed the door closed and hightailed it back to the living room. Damari looked up from her book, what's your problem? Kankuro looked at her with a fear-filled gaze, Tamari, I don't know how, but my puppets have somehow come to life and started calling me daddy. Tamari gave him a deadpan look, have you been drinking tonight? You know you can't handle your alcohol. Kankuro shook his head, I haven't touched any tonight, and I'm not on any drugs. If you don't believe it then look for yourself. Bedding up from the couch, Tamari walks over and pushes her brother out of the way, I swear if this is some sort of prank, the beating I will give you will make it to where no girl will want to go on a date with you. Damari threw open the door and was shocked to see the three puppets standing in the room by themselves. The moment she is in their sights, they charge at her shouting anti Tamari. Tamari slammed the door closed and rounded on her brother, what kind of sick experiments have you been doing with your puppets? To their shock, one of the puppets opened the door and all three walked into the living room and Black Ant spoke up, Daddy. Anti Tamari. Will we be going home soon? Both brother and sister shot for the balcony and jumped with the three puppets following close behind, asking questions. Kankuro was disturbed at hearing one asking how babies were made. Tamari shot a look at her brother and shouted, how the heck did this happen? Kankuro shouted back, how should I know? Suddenly he thought back and inwardly groaned. Maybe I shouldn't have wished for that star so hard last night. The two then realized that the puppets were gaining on them and increased their speed. Back on the roof of the Golden Leaf Hotel sat Naruto Uzumaki, laughing hard. In his hand was a candy dispenser in the shape of a rabbit with the words on the side saying sold candy. As soon as Naruto walks into the clan meeting room he sees all the different clan heads and their wives or in Tsum, she had brought Hana with her all sitting at a horseshoe-shaped table. Also in the room was Sarah Sato. These were some of the people Naruto had always considered as family. Naruto walks up to the table and takes his seat and sends an evil glare at Tsum and says that daughter of yours is a nuisance. This makes the whole room laugh at Hana who is giving him a pout and says what did I do? Naruto looks at her and says I am not talking about you Hana-chan I am talking about that little devil of a sister of yours. Tsum with a typical Inuzuka grin on her face and says well we are not the ones who told her about how to pull pranks that is entirely your fault. This makes everybody in the room laugh at Naruto, but their laughter dies quickly when Naruto says keep it up, keep laughing at me, and I swear I'll give her the book, no matter how much of a headache it would be for me it would be worse for all of you. 
every single adult in the room had sweat going down their foreheads, all knowing about what book he was talking about it was the book that contained all of his vast knowledge of pranking. Unknown to him there was a bounty out on the book for all the two in the village, the equivalent of an S-rank mission for whoever was able to bring it in, and there have been many attempts to gain it, and all them failures. None of the ninjas could understand why none of them could ever find it. Naruto just shakes his head and says okay let's get down to business, so the reason why I called you here today the first thing you should know is I have had my alleged godfather Jiraiya arrested and he will be standing trial in the next couple days. I could have made it immediately, but I wanted to give Hiruzen enough time to try and make a case for him. I have no doubt that he will try and bring you in as character witnesses for him to make him look good. Shikaku looks at Naruto and says how were you able to arrest him as he is one of the Leaf Village's three san and it grants him protection in the village and in the land of fire. Furthermore, what are you going to be charging him with? Naruto with his signature grin he says what people have forgotten about my family was besides being masters of Kenjutsu, we were also masters of politics and very good at making contracts, so when my family came here, we made our entire compound along with the district outside of it, the embassy for the land of whirlpools, making it sovereign ground what that means is the moment he came in here he fell under my power and lost all of his protection he had. There was total silence in the room until Naruto said so let me be the first to welcome you to my home country, as you are not in the land of fire right now. Naruto then says and you ask me what I'm charging him with the truth is the moment he signed his name to the paperwork to become my godfather, by the laws of the land of whirlpools, he had an obligation to protect me, and because he left the village and never made contact with me, and I suffered from all of those attacks, I am charging him by way of proxy for all of it. Sarah says so is that why you came into the hospital and got a copy of your medical report yesterday? Naruto nods his head and says yes I need it for the evidence. Tsum let out a growl saying if Hiruzen thinks for one minute I'm gonna help that old pervert he has another thing coming. And not just because of what happened to you I can't tell you how many times he has been caught peeking in the women's hot springs and he never did anything to stop him. This made the rest of the clan heads agree with her. Shikaku then says are you going to want us to testify against him for you. Naruto says that is entirely up to you. I happen to know a few people who are going to such as Anko. But I will inform you of the day of the trial soon so you can come and see it. He then says let us move on to the next item for his meeting, then he pulls out a large scroll releasing several envelopes and handing them out. Naruto says seeing as how I am going to be re-establishing my family, I am going to be doing something my family did not do which led to their destruction. It was due to the fact that they did not like to share their knowledge. I am going to be opening a new business. The main product will of course be new Kenjutsu seals, ranging in everything from home protection to helping Shinobi and Kinoichi with new equipment. I will also be opening several new restaurants and other businesses. I wish for you to have a look at all the paperwork and let me know what you think and give me your opinion. As they all begin looking through the papers in the envelopes, several of the clan heads make comments about one or two of the seals listed on the papers. Chimza picks up three small black pieces of plastic with a golden Yuzumaki clan symbol on them. After looking at them he looks at Naruto and says what are these supposed to be. Naruto sees everybody looking at one of them and says I'm glad you asked what you're holding there is something that I came up with for all for my friends and allies and my family, which all you full under, as long as you have one of those with you, you will be getting a 3% discount at all of my family's business. There is a special seal on it that can only be registered at one of my businesses. There is one for each of you, your wife and your child. All you would need to do is present it at the cash register. After spending another three minutes going over the papers with several of them ordering several of the seals for their family's homes. Ones designed to make it two only members of their family can get into the house. Inoichi had just turned the page when something catches his interest looking at Naruto and says you plan on opening a bank. This catches the attention of everybody else in the room who quickly turns to that page to see it. Naruto nods his head and says as my compound can operate as its own country, I will need my own bank for all my new businesses and for those who live in my compound and in my district who will have their own businesses. As the bank in the hidden leaf has screwed me over one too many times and does not give a good percentage of interest rate of 3.5%. Adding to the fact that it is run by the civilian council and most of them despise shinobi with the stupid idea that we should serve them for free and be happy about it, making all the other people in the room nod their heads in agreement. Inoichi looked at the paper again and said you plan on giving people 5.8% interest rate annually. Under the condition that they open the account with at least one, rim. Naruto nods and says one of the women who I was able to rescue this month was once a manager for her family business, doing all of the bookkeeping in her former village, she said she will be happy to do it. After talking with their partners, each of them decided to open an account at the new bank feeling that it would be a good idea to have some money stashed away where the vultures from the leaf village could not get to it. Soon Naruto sees everybody was done looking at the papers and says now that we've completed that there was one last piece of information I want to share with you all. 
as you all know, when I was born Hiruzen decided to hide my heritage from everybody in order to protect me from my parents' enemies. And while I do not agree with this I can see the logic in it, but he still should have told my parents' closest friends. Everybody in the room nods their head in agreement. He then says the moment the door closed I activated a security seal so that no one can hear what I'm about to say. I would give you the chance to leave now because if you learn this piece of information, you put yourself at risk knowing it seeing as nobody was getting up to leave. He says as you all know I adopted all the orphans from the orphanage and I am sure that you have all met Ashia and have gotten to know her to some degree more so than another's as he sent an annoyed look at Yoshino Nara, Inoiki Yamanaka and Chana Akimichi, with each of them sticking their tongues out at him. Seeing that he had everybody's attention the reason why I bring this up is because I found out who her parents are, and like me, it is important that we keep it a secret until we are sure it's safe to reveal, and yes she knows who her parents are, I am not like Hiruzen, I would not keep it a secret from her, but I have made sure she knows not to tell anybody. The reason I am telling you is because I feel it's better to have more people in the know in case something happens while I'm gone on a mission so she can have more protection. Chikaku says I think you're handling the situation better than Hiruzen did having a fail safe in place of Naruto so okay who are her parents, they must be pretty important for you to want to keep it a secret. Naruto says you are correct I want you to picture her in your mind once he sees everybody's eyes closing and says now I want you to age her about 2 years. Suddenly all the females in the room besides Hana let out a gasp of breath. It was Yoshino who said Naruto, are you telling me that she is the daughter of Makoto Uchiha? With a look of sadness on her face and with tears in the corner of her eyes, this instantly had all of the men in the room looking at Naruto in shock. Naruto shakes his head no and says she is not the daughter of Makoto, she is her granddaughter her father is none other than Itachi and his secret girlfriend. He then pulled out copies of the letter and said this was found inside a locket that she was left with. Upon reading it everybody is shocked into silence. It was Inoichi who said so technically he was just following the orders that he was given. Tsum slammed her fist on the table and let out a growl, saying I always knew that that bastard Fugaku was nothing but trouble, then says Kashina, and I always told Makoto this, but she insisted that she loves him, and she could change him. I should have neutered him back in the academy when he showed interest in her. Janda looks at Naruto and says how did Ashia take the news about who her parents were? Naruto looks down and answers I am not going to lie to you. There were tears. The first thing she asked me was if it meant that she was going to be bad when she grew up because of what her family was going to do and what her dad did. Upon hearing this every female in the room instantly wanted to run out and find her and hug her. All the men had a look of sadness on their faces. Chimza says no child should have to think that. Sarah then says I believe I am the one who actually delivered her. I remember seeing Itachi there and they told me they were just good friends. And I remember that her mother passed away a couple days later because of complications during the birth. I did everything I could to save her, but there was nothing I could do. Naruto says also when she found out she managed to activate her one Tomo Sharingan due to all the emotions that she was feeling. I am hoping that raising her in a loving environment where she is not told that she is automatically above everybody else and that you always have to be the best at everything and that failure is not an option will help her become a better person and not be a typical arrogant Uchiha. Hana speaks up for the first time and says I see you are going to go with the nature versus nurture approach. With Naruto nodding his head he says yes I believe it's already working she says she has no intention of using her Sharingan to do what her father said in the letter, she plans to make it her trump card. Naruto then says as for all the money that he left for her, it is more than enough for her not to have to work due to all the high ranking missions that they took. I plan on putting it in a special account for her that she can have access to when she gets older. And will be using my own money for the time being to raise her. At this all the parents nod their heads in agreement. As for all of her mother's jewelry, she will be allowed to use it at special functions and at parties, but will be kept in storage until it is needed, and she can have me bring it out so she can look at it, but she cannot wear it for everyday use, as some of it looks very expensive, so I wouldn't want her to lose any of it. Inoiki gets Naruto's attention by saying that is actually a very smart idea. I wasn't allowed to wear any of my mother's or my grandmother's jewelry until I was about 13, and I had to show I was responsible enough to wear it without supervision. Courtyard, after spending another three minutes going over several other items of interest. The group decides to break up for the afternoon and head home. As the group walks into the courtyard Naruto is speaking to Hana about sending some of the kids to the vet so they can adopt some of the pets. With her replying that is fine we are overstocked at the moment anyway, so it would be a great help to us with her typical smile on her face. Naruto says, but I would like for you to arrange for a class in which the children will learn how to properly take care of the pets, such as cleaning and grooming and feeding and watering, before they can adopt them. This earned him a kiss on the cheek by her as she turned around to walk forward to catch up with her mother, she says if you keep it up, I might just talk mom into writing up a marriage contract for us at least, I would know that you would be a good mate and would take care of me making his face go red. 
As they turn a corner they meet up with a group and they are met with a hilarious sight and making all the adults laugh. Naruto walks around the group to see why everybody is laughing and instantly his right eye begins to twitch upon seeing the little girl who was dressed identical to Ino, dragging an unconscious boy tied up in rope behind her and as she sees the large group she waved at him and says hi big brother. Naruto looking closely at the boy but did not recognize him so he is not one of his kids then says what do you think you are doing and who is that? With a large innocent smile on her face, says Aunt Eno said that when you find a boy you like you gotta rope him in quickly so he cannot get away and no other girls can get him. Both Ishino and Inoiki walk up to her and say well first of all you got the ropes all wrong he can easily escape as the women show her how to tie the knots correctly. Naruto throws both of his hands in the air and says I'm done he then quickly walks away while grumbling to himself about evil women and listening to the laughing of all the women. Upon seeing that he is out of sight Inoichi looks at his two fellow two clans head and says seeing as the women are corrupting the girls you wanna go and see if we can find some of the boys that we can corrupt. I think it's only fair with the three of them wearing a grin on their faces. Sakura POV. Sakura had been having a good couple of days. She had taken what Naruto told her to heart and began to eat more than she had ever eaten before. She had already put on a few pounds. She also had two big surprises. The first one was when the Hokage had called her into his office and told her he had heard about what happened during the invasion and because she had changed her attitude, he was willing to take her off probation under the condition that she continued to improve herself. And the second one was when she woke up this morning she decided to get in some training with her new weapon, waking up bright and early and doing her normal morning routine, she was shocked to discover that her bra was too tight, deciding to get a new one before beginning her training. She spent the next couple hours in a clothing store buying a new wardrobe that clearly said I am a Kinoichi, and even though she was still in the A cup sizes she was happy she was making progress. So after having done the shopping and a large lunch to celebrate what she found out this morning, she was now on her way to training ground 29, which was more rocky and was covered in large stone borders that would make perfect targets for her new weapon. She was walking in the restaurant district resting on her shoulder thinking to herself I should try and find a way I can strap this to my back and thinking maybe Naruto-kun can help me the next time I see him I will ask him. She suddenly stops when she notices that she has added the kun suffix to Naruto's name. Turning around slowly so as not to hit anybody with her weapon due to hearing somebody called her name, she finds the person calling to her be none other than Kakashi. Sakura puts on a smile and says good afternoon Kakashi-sensei expecting a warm welcome from her teacher. She was shocked when he began to yell at her. You and I need to have a talk with Haruno about what you did to Sasuke. So after everything I've taught you for you to dare to attack him. I never should have let you become a Kinoichi. The only reason I did was I needed a complete team. And I thought maybe you could be of some use due to your chakra control and your academics in the academy, believing that you could help him. As Kakashi looks at the largest weapon that she was holding and says and where did you get that weapon? I don't believe I gave you permission to get a weapon. Sakura has a frown on her face at being yelled at by her sensei and says with all due respect sensei, I only did that to Sasuke because he was going to attack an innocent civilian who had no way to defend herself. Sakura was shocked that she had used Sasuke's name without using an honorific at the end of it for the first time in years. Then says and to tell you the truth Kakashi sensei you haven't taught me anything besides the tree walking technique along with a few team building exercises. Kakashi narrows his one eye and answers that does not negate the fact that you were attacking a fellow comrade. I'm gonna take you to see the Hokage to see that you are properly punished and have your headband taken from you. Then says you and that worthless Uzumaki brat never should have passed the academy you're both useless while you have some brains in that big head of yours. The Uzumaki brat only graduated on a technicality. Sakura narrows her eyes and says do not talk about Naruto-kun like that if it was not for him, both my mother and grandmother and myself would have been killed during the invasion, despite everything I've ever done to him all the different times that I hit him and I insulted him, he still saved us. He then made me look into a mirror and made me see that I was nothing more than a civilian playing Kinoichi and told me it was time I started taking my career seriously and I discovered that he was right so I went home and got into my new outfit, befitting a true Kinoichi, and begin to help with the invasion, beating up anyone who was trying to hurt the civilians, that is when I saw Sasuke using that evil chakra the same one that happened in the forest of death. And so when he turned his blade on the innocent civilian I knew I had to help and because you never taught me anything I have to use the only thing I'm good at and that is a right hook. Do I feel sorry that I had to hit him? The answer is no I do not feel sorry for him he got what he deserved. As for this weapon it turned out that one of Naruto's shadow clones was watching me. Upon seeing that I finally snapped out of my fangulism attitude, he then decided to give me a chance to prove that I could be a Kinoichi and gave me this weapon so I might be able to protect my friends and family. Upon hearing this Kakashi holds out his hand and says I am ordering you to give me that now as your sensei then we are going to see the Hokage. 
While he is thinking to himself I couldn't get the other ones, but I'll give this one to Sasuke. Sakura shakes her head no, saying I'm not giving this weapon to anybody, and I have already spoken to the Hokage about what happened, and he said that I would not be punished for it. Before anything else can happen a female Anbu with purple hair and a cat mask appears next to them. Kakashi looks at her and says hello Nico what are you doing here? Nico speaks in a voice that has no sympathy and says down in Haddock, you are ordered to appear before the Lord Hokage if you resist I'm ordered to bring you in by force, as a dozen more Anbu arrive on the scene. Kakashi sends a glare at Sakura and says we will be talking about this later before disappearing in a swirl of leaves. A large man in a pitbull mask looks at Sakura and says excuse me Miss Hirono, would you allow me to look at that weapon? I myself use a large club from time to time. Sakura tightens her grip on the handle with a worried look on her face, as if she was afraid he was going to take it from her. Nico says you do not need to worry he's not going to take it from you, and if it helps we are friends with Naruto. That is when Sakura remembered Naruto talking to this particular Anbu a while ago and how she had called him a baka for starting more trouble. Deciding that if Naruto could trust them she would as well so she hands over the club to him to look at. The pitbull mask Anbu began to inspect it measuring the length and the weight and gave it a couple swings, then said it is in good shape. He then handed it back over did I hear correctly when you told Haddock it was Naruto who gave it to you. Sakura nods her head yes, then says I was just heading to the training ground 29 to get some practice in. That makes both of them laugh with Pitbull saying if you're interested I'll be willing to give you some pointers. Well I can understand your idea of using the training ground 29, due to all the large stone borders, your enemy is not always gonna be standing still and let you hit them. Sakura's face brightens with excitement at the thought of getting training from an Anbu, with her quickly accepting it. He then says good meet me there soon, I've just got one errand I have to run. Both Anbu watch as she sprints away before both of them leave in a swirl of leaves. The Hokage Tower, here is in Suratobi was not having a good day. He had gone to the Uzumaki compound along with his student, hoping to happily introduce the two of them for the first time. Only to discover Naruto knew who he was. Then they had discovered that they fell right into his trap because he had underestimated Naruto once again. And Naruto had used his new position to have Jiraiya arrested and that he was powerless to stop it as it had happened on foreign soil and he would now have to try and build him a case he also knew that he would not get too many of his ninjas to testify in Jiraiya's defense, especially amongst the females in the Kinoichi population. He also knew those people that are close to Naruto are instantly going to side with him and bring their own evidence. Now that Naruto's heritage is out in the open and once it becomes known that Jiraiya was supposed to protect him but never did it is going to make it even harder. He then began to rub his eyes due to him getting a headache. Thinking to himself I can only hope that Naruto can get Tsune to return to the village and hopefully take up the mantle of Hokage. Ambling town in northern land of fire, the blonde-haired woman with pigtails wearing a green yukata with the kanji for gamble on the back of it was currently sitting in a gambling hall she had just pulled the lever on a slot machine, watching as it slowly come to a stop on 777, signaling she just won a massive jackpot. The woman standing next to her holding a pig began to jump up and down, saying we won Lady Tsunade, we are going to be able to pay off some of the debts now. The now identified Tsunade quickly stood up and said Shizun we need to quickly get our money and get out of town. I have a very bad feeling that something's coming towards us. The two women quickly gather up all of the tokens and make a beeline for the cash outline to hopefully get ahead of whatever is coming after them. The Hokage Tower, the Kashi, not even bothering to knock on the door, walks into the office and puts one of his hands in his pocket using his other hand, he pulls out his famous book and in his lazy voice, says you called for me Lord Hokage. I was currently disciplining one of my students when you sent Nico to retrieve me. Pirazin looks up at somebody appearing in his office, his face instantly goes into one of rage seeing who it is. Pirazin walks around his desk and snatches the book out of his hand. He then ripped it in half and threw the pieces into the air. He then uses a low-level fire technique to burn them to ashes. As Kakashi was watching the pieces burn he did not catch the fist slamming into his stomach dropping him to his knees. Hiruzen looks down at Kakashi, then says tell me something John and Haddock, what part of the report before me do you not understand? I have sent you several notices throughout the month and you have chosen to ignore each and every single one of them. Trying to catch his breath Kakashi says my apologies Lord Hokage for ignoring your orders this month, but I was following the civilian council's orders to have Sasuke Chiha prepared for the final exam, so I had to spend the entire month training him. And then when we show up I find out you disqualify him. You have no idea how much damage you have done. All of the hard work I have done for the last couple months to make sure that his loyalty to the village is secured, and when he finds out about what you decide at the meeting, this could make him leave the village for good. Pirazin then says and what about your treatment of Naruto? 
I trusted you to protect him and treat him fairly, and I find out you have not taught him or Sakura anything and the treatment of him during the beginning of this month. I don't know what was going through your head at the time that you thought you would get away with this, but you're not as of right now he is no longer your student. In fact you no longer have any students. I'm officially disbanding Squad 7 for good. There will never be another Squad 7 I should have disbanded it after your team fell apart the last four teams that hold that number have been other disasters, and because of your treatment of both of them, I am going to have all of the mission pay taken back out of your account and given to both of them due to the fact that you never taught them anything and wasted their time. And I am officially demoting you in rank, and because of your foolishness your rank is going to be that of a genin. Because you are obviously not ready to have any position of power, and you are not going to have a chance for to get a promotion for next three years, and now that you are now officially a genin, you are going to have to be placed underneath a jounin sensei to teach you responsibility and, because of the death of a genin in the exam there is an open slot on one of the teams. Hiruzen could not keep the look of excitement off his face at the look of horror on Kakashi's face. Kakashi then says the council will never allow that to happen, I am the only one who can train him. Hiruzen says you are forgetting I am the Hokage for too long I have sat back and let them run this village well, no longer Naruto open my eyes, it is time I start taking this job seriously again, if that means I have to completely disband the council, I will do it as for the Achiha, if he does not pass the mind walking, I will have him pulled out of the ninja program altogether his clan eyes have done nothing but cause trouble for this village, so losing them will not be that big of a deal. He then says now hand in your vest as you are no longer authorized to wear one of them. You are now ordered to go to meet your new team at training ground 9 and give this scroll to Mike Guy, which will inform him of your transfer to his team. If I get any report of you disobeying any orders given to you, I will have you placed in blood prison for treason, and you are no longer allowed to talk to any of your former students, or I will send you back to the academy from day 1 now. As Kakashi walks to the door he is stopped by Hiruzen saying Minato along with Abito and Rin would be disappointed in you and how you treated Naruto. Uzumaki compound late at night, morning lemon, Naruto was in his private bathroom and had just submerged himself in a hot bath. Hoping to finally get some relaxation he loved all the children that he adopted, but sometimes they could be a headache. He then can hear the door open, turning his head to see who opened it. He was not shocked to see that it was Yuruchi in a white bath towel wrapped around her with a cat-like grin on her face. She walks over to Naruto and says do you have room for one more? Then removed her bath towel exposing her body to him. Upon seeing her body his entire face goes red watching her submerge her body next to him in the water, she then wrapped her arms around his neck, pulling him close, placing her naked breasts up against his chest, using her left hand she begins to trace his cheek. She then begins to kiss his neck with her right hand slowly move down his chest and continue south, until she can feel his hard cock and wrap her hand around it, making him let out a moan, as she slowly began to move her hand up and down, she leans in to whisper next to his ear, tell me my Naruto-kun did that hot piece of ass of a mom you slept with back in the land of waves, teach you anything? As she quickens her hand movement. Iruchi finally stopped her movement of her hand as she saw that he was starting to breathe hard. Leaning back next to his ear she whispers you want me to continue? Seeing him nod his head. Standing back up she sat on his waist rubbing his cock against her pussy before slowly inserting it, but due to his size, it took her a moment to adjust to the size, putting both her arms around his neck. She looked down to notice that Naruto had begun to suck on her nipple, while both his hands were on her ass cheeks. As she began to move her body up and down, increasing her speed as she went. All too soon both Naruto and Yuruchi let out loud moans as they came to a climax with Naruto releasing his seat inside of her womb. Yuruchi looks at Naruto and says I hope you're nowhere near done. I have seen your stamina. I intend to see it through to the end, and I have centuries worth of knowledge in this field to teach you my little fish cake. End of lemon. Outside in the hall Hinata had come around the corner to see Ashia in her pajamas, trying to open the door to Naruto's room, but the door would not move. Walking up to her she says what is going on and why are you out of bed Ashia. As she looks up at her and says I always sneak into big brother's room to sleep because he keeps the nightmares away, but the door will not open. Anada being a former heiress she realizes the only reason the door would not open is if it was sealed shut, meaning that Naruto did not want to be disturbed tonight. She had a frown on her face as she realized what this probably meant. Anada takes her hand and says well you can come stay with me tonight, I will even tell you some funny stories about your big brother that he probably does not want you to know. Ashia began to bounce up and down saying like what big sister. Anada with a tiny smile on her face says how about the time he came to the academy wearing a dress for an entire week because he lost a bet with Antino. This makes Ashia break out in giggles and says I wish I could have seen that. Hanada then says well it is a good thing I managed to get a few pictures that I can show you. Ama Kaunaruto met Anko. Seven years after the nine-tailed fox attack one Naruto Uzumaki was walking down the restaurant district hanging his head in sadness at his favorite restaurant being closed due to a sickness. 
He then sees a giant sign that says all you can eat contest grand prize one free month of Dango. As he quickly runs over to the sign up sheet to sign his name he then takes his spot at the table. After a few minutes more people begin to show up at the table. One of the people he notices is his friend Choji Akimichi, with both of them wishing each other good luck. Looking out into the crowd to see several other people that he notices such as Choji's parents along with Shikamaru and Ino along with their parents, he had been introduced to them by Tsum a few months after meeting her, and almost immediately all three of the moms began to smother him with teaching him manners and what he considered useless junk. Soon he notices a purple-haired woman in a trench coat sitting on his right side. Remembering one of the lessons that he was taught he says hello my name is Naruto Yuzumaki what is yours? As he offered his hand to the woman. With her turning to look at him with a grin on her face and saying the name is Anko Midarashi nice to meet you fish cake. Naruto gets a tick mark on his forehead and begins to shout saying that's not my name you old hag, but suddenly stops as a cold draft goes down his back looking back out in the crowd he sees the three moms glaring at him. Turning back and looking at her he says my name means Maelstrom. It did not escape Anko when the three moms looked at him and inside her head she was laughing at him. But she was soon brought out of her thoughts as he asked a question that should have been forbidden. But the fox-like grin Naruto says so what is this dango? I've never had it before. Does it come in Raymond flavored? Anko looks at him as if he just said he killed her puppy, she instantly puts her arm around him and says do not worry, I will introduce you to the food of the gods his reply was, but I already know about Raymond. Before anything else can start the judge walked up on the stage, followed by several people holding plates of dango who put them before the contestants. The judge walked up to the microphone and said welcome ladies and gentlemen okay you need to pay attention to me as I lay down the rules of the contest, this is an all you can eat contest there will be no time limit, meaning the last contestant will win if you throw up you are automatically disqualified. Take your positions as all of the contestants got ready to start eating the judge, then hit a large gong. The crowd of people sit there and watch as the contestants begin to devour the plate in front of them. For two hours they sat there and watched as one by one the contestants dropped until there were only three left, those three being Anko, Naruto and Choji. After another one minutes Choji says I'm finished. Anko looks to her left at Naruto and sees he was not even sweating and was eating at a normal pace and he showed no signs of stopping anytime soon, she then looks at her plate with a dozen sticks of dango to go. Out in the audience Choji had just sat down next to his parents, with Shikamaru saying don't worry about it, you can win next time. Ino who was still watching the two eat says you know if I didn't know any better, I would swear that Naruto was eating for two. This makes all of the parents around laugh while well, they are thinking the same thing inside their head. Anko had managed to eat eight more sticks before she fell over sideways. Naruto looks at his empty plate and then at hers and says are you going to finish those and can I have them? Which makes the entire crowd laugh. After getting his picture taken with all his friends including Tsum Hana and Kiba, who had managed to show up and see the contest. Naruto waited until all the kids were off to the side and asked Tsum if she would be willing to keep the trophy at her house, as all of the parents knew that this was because his apartment had been broken into recently which she quickly agreed to do. Naruto was picked up off the ground in a hug by Anko, who says good job not too many people can eat more dango than me. She then puts him back down, then she walks off and says come find me sometime I'm going to want to rematch. Ino says so Naruto, how much dango is the gift certificate for? Naruto reaches into his pocket to pull it out only to find out it's missing quickly. Going into a panic he begins to check both his pockets. That's when it hits him that Anko must have taken it when she hugged him making a fist and raising it into the air. He let out Anko making everybody around him laugh. Uzumaki compound. As the rays from the sun shone through the window waking up Naruto from his slumber, he quickly realizes that Yoruchi was not in the bed with him sitting up and looking around the room, noticing a piece of paper on the nightstand picking it up to read it. Start note, dear fish cake, had to go back to the land of waves for a meeting with several of the women, and I gotta spread the gossip about what an animal you can be in bed, and will be back when I can try not to tire yourself out. I wanted to try more of that stamina eventually. Love Yoruchi. End of note, all he could do was shake his head because at the bottom of it was a small drawing of a cat blowing him a kiss. He then thinks to himself that woman is too much like Anko, it's not even funny. Due to the fact that she would always put a picture of a snake blowing a kiss at the bottom of all her notes to him. It had always confused him as a snake did not have lips, but he put it up as her personality. Realizing that he had to get up and get ready for the meeting, he quickly goes to the restroom to get cleaned up. Dining hall. After navigating the hallways and laughing at some of the children who have fallen victim to a prank or dodging the running children. He soon walks into the dining room to see the massive chaos that had become the normal in the household for the morning with all the children yelling. He also sees several of the servants walking in and out of the kitchen with plates of food. They are also reminding the kids about not throwing the food or about not using their table manners. Making his way to the head of the table he sits down, then looks to his right. To see Hinata sitting at the table wearing a white tank top and a pair of pajama pants. 
with a large plate of cinnamon rolls in front of her. He says good morning Hinata-chan. I don't suppose I can have one of those with her quickly wrapping her hands around the plate and letting out a hissing at him, quickly realizing what she did her face glows bright red. All this did was make Naruto along with all the other children laugh. Quickly making himself a plate of breakfast he then says I will be gone most of the day as I have a meeting with the village council and I want all of you to behave while I'm gone as good as any Uzumaki can be anyway breaking out his fox-like grin. Making each of the children break out in grains themselves, with some of them chuckling and doing their best to look innocent. One of the servants who had been putting down a plate of eggs on the table says I will make sure we have some fire extinguishers handy. Making several of the children blow a raspberry at them. Naruto's attention was quickly brought back to Hinata as she let out a shriek of surprise when one of the boys got too excited and knocked over a pitcher of water all over her front. With the boy quickly apologizing saying sorry big sister and her saying it is okay just calm down when she looks back at Naruto, she sees his entire face is red with a little bit of blood dripping from his nose. Wondering why his face looks like that she then thinks for a moment before she quickly looks down at herself and sees that her white tank top had become transparent because of the water this resulted in letting him see her bare chest as she had not put her bra on yet this morning as she was still in her pajamas and as she did not wear one to bed because they were uncomfortable to sleep in. Letting out a scream she covers her chest with her left arm and acting on instinct, she slaps Naruto across the face with her right hand. Realizing what she did, she quickly got down to her knees as she said sorry over and over again while keeping her chest covered. Naruto gets up off the ground and says no, it's my fault I should not have been staring, he then takes off his jacket and hands it to her, which she quickly takes and puts on, then closes the front. She says I'm gonna go get dressed, I have a meeting with my team quickly leaving the room with red cheeks. Naruto is thinking to himself I knew she was big, I did not know she was that big. Then he looks at the children at the table and says nobody is to mention what happened this morning to anybody outside of this compound and I better not hear of anybody teasing her about it. Do I make myself clear? Making sure he catches the eyes of Hanabi and says that goes double for you. I know that you like to tease her, but this is something that you will not tease her about. This makes all of their children and the servant say yes big brother Naruto-sama. Once Naruto is finished with his breakfast he then proceeds to walk through the compound to the main gate. He then spots Hanada walking towards him in her normal outfit carrying his jacket. Putting on his smile he says well since we're both leaving you want to walk together. Making her cheeks go red in embarrassment as she hands him his jacket and nods her head. Random street. Having been walking down the street for several minutes with Naruto attempting to make conversation with Hanada. Naruto sees that Hanada refuses to look at him and is looking at the ground and is falling back into her shell. Thinking quickly he disappears and reappears behind her as he begins to tickle her sides making her squeal begging him to stop. Naruto says if I stop will you come back out of your shell. Hinata quickly nodded her head and said yes stop please stop. Hinata gives him a cute little pout and says who told you I was ticklish on my sides. Naruto just looks at her and says I talked to one of my informants and she may or may not have given me some advice on you. Hinata narrowed her eyes and muttered to herself I'm going to wring your little neck as a small and evil grin spread across her face. Naruto sees it and says good now no more going back into your shell I like the Hinata who is bold. And I never said it was Hanabi who informed me about your ticklish spot and just so you know I've told all them not to bug or tease you about what happened this morning so will you please stop worrying about it there is nothing that we can do about it but make sure it doesn't happen again. Naruto then sees Kurenai who had just appeared in a swirl of leaves and was now standing next to them. Naruto says well seeing you're in good hands I am off to my meeting, be safe and don't strain yourself too much before he leaves in a flash. Hinata sees Kurenai has the look that she has called her mom look as she is staring down at her as she says, are you going to tell me what happened this morning? With Hinata who quickly explains what happened at breakfast making her face red again. Kurenai looks down at the girl she considers a daughter and says so let me see if I got this straight in the last month, first you show him your backside, then you move in with him and now I find out you have shown him your girls. Do you and I need to make a trip to the pharmacy? Because I'm telling you right now young lady I am too young to be called grandma. This resulted in Hinata fainting. Kurenai picks her up thinking to herself I think the next couple years are gonna be really exciting, but I'm going to have to make time to talk to Naruto and make sure he doesn't do anything, but knowing that she was kidding herself, knowing that Naruto would never do anything like that, she then heads for the training ground. Outside of the council room, Naruto arrives with a flash step to see the clan heads that he is friends with in the corner talking. Walking over it was Shikaku who said well it's good to see you did not pick up your sensei's bad habit, forgetting what time the meeting started and being late to the meeting. Naruto says you are not one to talk about forgetting things. Who is it that keeps forgetting his anniversary every year? Shikaku looks at him with a depressed look on his face and says my troublesome wife is always nagging me about forgetting it. Naruto then says you do realize that your anniversary is today right? 
Chikaku goes bug-eyed, then says shit she is going to kill me this time. This makes everybody in their group laugh at him and remember what happened last year when he forgot having to sleep on the couch for the entire month. Naruto then reaches into his pocket and pulls out a slip of paper. And then says you're lucky I remember you have reservations at this restaurant tonight at 8 o'clock and there is also an order for her favorite flowers at Inoichi's flower store. Tsum and Asuma break out laughing at the depressed man who's hanging his head. Managing to catch a breath Tsum says, and you guys wonder why your wife likes him more than you. It's because he has never forgotten anyone's birthday or anniversary. This makes the other two hang their heads in shame, knowing that she was correct. Before anything else can happen the doors to the main room open and everybody begins to file inside. Council room, as the group walks into the room they find not only Hiruzen along with the elders. But surprisingly there is another group of people also in attendance. Sitting in a tier above them was Daemon of the Land of Fire with his wife sitting at his left side and a woman to his right with a small child in her lap. There are also a few dozen samurai stationed around the room. Once everybody has been seated at the table Hiruzen clears his throat and says welcome everybody to today's meeting. Now before we get to the schedule does anybody have anything they wish to say or bring to the table? Hiruzen along with everybody else in the room watches as Naruto stands up and says I have something I want to say I would like to know why you are breaking the law and committing treason right now Hiruzen. This makes everybody in the room gasp in shock at what he said. Looking at the boy he considers a grandson, he manages to say what are you talking about Lord Uzumaki. Naruto pulls out a scroll and says what I am talking about is why is Hiyashi Hayuga currently sitting at this table. I actually believe that he was here at the last meeting because of his ninja status. You ask me why I'm bringing this up because when this village was founded, it was decided that only the original one clans would make up the shinobi council and no other clan would be permitted to sit on this council. And according to the history books the Hyugas did not arrive at this village for two years after it was founded, which means they are not one of the one original clans and have no seat on this council, and by allowing them to sit on the council you are breaking the law. Releasing a book from the scroll then says I hold in my hand a copy of the charter that shows that this is correct, it is signed by not only the one clan heads at the time, but also the daemon. I have spent some time having my clones going back through the books and I have discovered that it was in the middle of the second war, shortly after the destruction of the land of whirlpools and when the last member of the Senju clan was killed and Tsunade Senju refused to take her seat due to personal reasons and her younger brother was too young to take the seat. And my mother was too young to take the seat for the Uzumaki clan. It was at this time Hiashi's father sought to opening on the council, and I have found in the paperwork that he approached you and offered his knowledge in battle tactics, because the Iwagakur army was attempting to travel through the land of caves, the home country of his family for the exchange of information, and for a temporary voice on the council while the war was going on. And seeing as how he is sitting in this room you never rescinded that order, which makes you an accessory to the crime, because I'm pretty sure the second war is over. Everybody in the room looked at Naruto with wide eyes as it became silent in the room. It was broken by the voice of the fire daemon, saying well those are serious accusations Lord Uzumaki, I would like to see your evidence please. Gathering up the paperwork he handed it to a samurai showing him several pages and a book getting a nod of the head, he quickly took it to the daemon. Pirazin has both of his elbows on the table holding his face in his hands as he massages his forehead, wondering if this day was going to get any worse. The silence in the room was broken by the civilian council yelling at Naruto, due to the fact that the Hyuga clan was their voice on the ninja side of the council. Naruto looks like a man that he recognized as the head of the civilian council and stands up and says, when did you start following the law? I can't tell you how many times you broke it when you were in the academy. Naruto began to laugh making everybody look at him because it was the laugh that said that I just pulled a prank. But the fox-like grin, Naruto says all of those pranks that I pulled as a child were technically not against the law in fact I was actually following the law because when this village was founded, there was a law made that stated any active shinobi and kinoichi that are academy students who can find a hole in the security of the village may exploit it as long as it does not harm anybody. That way the people who are in charge can fix this hole in the security. Here is an example of what I mean you remember when I put a bubble bath in the hot springs and made it all bubbly. This was a relatively harmless prank, but if I had been a ninja from the hidden grass, I could have easily put poison instead because there was no security around the hot spring. As he continues to list his numerous pranks over the years, revealing how each one of them was a security flaw. How about the time I painted the monument with graffiti instead of putting paint on it, I could have put explosive tags because again the security was lacking. Then there is the matter what happened the night I graduated, I was able to sneak into one of the most secure buildings in the village, bypassing three patrols of the top shinobi and half a dozen anbu, and managed to steal one of the village's most powerful scrolls all without being detected until the end by a change of fate Hiruzen walked into the room. Naruto turns and looks at them and says didn't any of you ever wonder why I was never punished besides having to clean up the messes every now and then. 
It's because he knew I was not breaking the law as he pointed at Hirazan. Soom had both of her arms on the table with her head on top of them laughing so hard she eventually fell over sideways. Mza was holding his stomach laughing hard and Inoichi was holding his face with his left hand laughing to himself. Shikaku is muttering to himself about how he now has to take his wife shopping because she was always saying that his pranks had more meaning to them than to make people laugh and he says that he was just being troublesome. Hirazan was collecting large rolls of money from Asuma with the first smile he's had for a few days on his face. Naruto was looking at this smiling to himself watching all of the people he considered family doing this. Naruto then holds up his hand and says that is why I always made sure to keep everything written down in my book so if I ever had to do it again, I could know what I did. But I always made sure no one could ever find it because I did not want anyone to copy me. Soom, who had managed to get a hold of herself, asked him a question everybody wanted to know. Where did you hide Naruto-kun? A lot of us have been looking for that book. Naruto shrugged his shoulders and said well seeing as it's no longer in the original location, I guess I can tell you I put the book in the one place no one would be brave enough to look for it in this village, it was in Anko's top dresser drawer underneath her underwear, due to the fact that she never wears any, unless she is forced to which is not too often, and because even she doesn't open it too often and she usually wears a pair of spandex shorts underneath her skirt, so I figured it would be the perfect hiding spot for it. The room exploded with laughter from anybody who knew the snake mistress, knowing that she was one of the most dedicated people to finding the book. And now they get to tell her it was right underneath her nose the whole time. Naruto can hear the voice of a little girl saying this Anko lady does not wear underwear. Looking up he sees that it is the little girl sitting on the lap of the woman next to the fire daemon with the woman telling her to be quiet and it's not a place to judge people. The daemon puts down all of the paperwork and says it would seem that you are correct Lord Uzumaki. Everybody in the room is now looking at both Hirazan and Hiashi, with Hirazan looking down in shame, while Hiashi who had attempted to stand up and try to leave, was now surrounded by samurai as he was attempting to glare Naruto on fire. Hirazan gets up to his feet and says my only excuse is we were so low on council members and in a war at the time, so I did not see any harm in letting him stay, we were on the verge of losing three of the one clans, those clans being the Senju Uzumaki Namakas this clan was quite powerful. I have made a lot of mistakes in my two reigns as Hokage and I feel as if I can no longer sit as the Hokage that is why I had begun to look for my new successor. The man sitting behind Hirazan and covered in bandages who Naruto recognizes from the video back in the Land of Waves, asks who are you considering Hirazan. Hirazan says I am still looking and have a few candidates I'm going to talk to, but do not worry old friend, I'm not going to ask you to take the hat as we are the same age and I think we are nearing our retirement. Inside his head he is grinning to himself at the look of stress on his friend's face. While thinking to himself you'll never get this hat, as long as I live you old warhawk. The daemon then looks at Hiashi and says seeing as you no longer have a seat on this council you are to leave. The samurai steps aside for him, but before he can even reach the door the voice of Naruto says excuse me, but would you please hold off on your order. There are other crimes that he has committed that you should be made aware of. Instantly one of the samurai stepped in front of the door blocking the path. Hiashi spins around and says what are you talking about? I have not committed any crimes. Losing all of the natural nonchalant attitude of the Hyuga clan with two of the samurai forcing him to sit back down. Once again Daemon looks at Naruto and says how serious are these crimes Lord Uzumaki surely whatever they are they can wait till another time. Shaking his head, Naruto says one of them is the accessory to the attempted murder of his own daughter. The room became dead silent, all of the remaining clan heads looked at him with wide eyes, with the exception of Shibi Aburam, with his high color and sunglasses you could not tell, but the sound of buzzing coming from him told everybody he was upset by this. The civilian council had all gone white as a sheet. Hirazan along with the three elders all share the same thought at that moment, remembering the lessons that they had learned in their youth from their sensei's wife, all three of them hearing her voice in the back of their minds. Voice echo, I want the four of you to listen to me and remember this about my family. One of the most important lessons you should know is to never get into a war with the Uzumaki clan in politics. You will lose to us, they are the same thing. And we Uzumaki always make sure to make our enemies regret ever crossing us. Present moment, Hirazan instantly sees what Naruto is doing and thinks to himself I see what you mean now Mito-chan. He waited until this very moment to bring this forward instead of acting on it when it happened because he did not trust me to do my job because I failed to help Hanabi when she came in and asked me for help and that way he would have the backing of the fire daemon. Upon hearing this the daemon along with his wife's eyes narrowed on him and said show me the evidence it was known throughout the land of fire that the one thing they did not tolerate was child abuse. Naruto nods his head and says did you happen to bring your personal doctor when you came to the leaf village? I know that you always travel with one. As some of the evidence I have is medical reports you probably will not be able to understand them. And I do not mean for that to be insulting. I just know how some medical information can be confusing. 
This makes the woman sitting to the daemon's right laugh. And say I think that's gonna be a good idea as my brother is not too brave when it comes to medical issues and runs away anytime the doctor walks into the room, even when we were kids, resulting in her brother pouting. Everybody in the room chuckled when a little girl sitting on her lap began to make chicken sounds saying uncle the chicken. After making a hand gesture one of the samurai left the room, returning a few minutes later with a man who looks up at the fire daemon and says, you requested my presence, your lordship. Yes it would seem that we need your expertise in medical knowledge. May I present to you Lord Naruto Uzumaki. The doctor then looks at Naruto and says my name is Hyoko. How may I be of service? Naruto says my name Naruto Uzumaki. Hyoko raises an eyebrow and says are you the same Naruto Uzumaki who Asuma was able to get the information that saved Daimyo's niece Neho from the snake bite last month? Naruto nods and says yes, how is she doing? By the way, were there any side effects? I can give you all the information you need on the Whirlpool Viper if you need it as it is native to the land of Whirlpool. My family has a detailed amount of information on it. Yoko shakes his head and says there were no side effects, she made a full recovery. But I will not say no to that information. I would like to add it to the information at the fire capital if this comes up again. Naruto says I will have it sent to you as soon as possible. Naruto walks back to the table and picks up a folder and says I hold in my hand a medical report of Hinata Yuzumaki, who at the time was called Hinata Hayuga. She and her doctor have given me permission to show this. This report was taken shortly before she was released from the hospital from her fight in the preliminary round with her cousin. He then hands the report to Hiyoko who begins to read it raising an eyebrow he says what are these blackout sections. Naruto coughing into his hand says I asked her doctor to block those areas out as it is her waiter chest size and status of if she is a virgin or not, along with a few other issues of the female gender. I thought that I did not need to know that nor did anybody else if they got a hold of that report. This makes everybody in the room who has a daughter nod their heads in understanding. After spending several minutes reading the report Hyoko looks up and says I agree with her doctor in the note that she left in here one month, no strenuous activities with plenty of bed rest. Naruto says if you look in there you will see the release form. Can you tell me who signed her out of the hospital? Hyoko looks back inside the folder turning a couple pages and says it looks like her father is the one who signed her out. Naruto says and he would have been made aware of what she was supposed to do correct. Yoko nods his head and says that is correct, his signature is right here on the form, stating she is supposed to rest. Naruto walks back over to the table and picks two pieces of paper, these are two signed letters from his former daughters, both stating that he took her from the hospital and dragged her to the compound and into one of the training dojos where he forced her to fight one of the clan elders to the point where she became a bloody mess laying on the ground after seeing she was not getting up he ordered one of the servants to put her in her bed without any medical attention being done and according to Hanabi, he then said if she got better fine, if she did not oh well, and that it was no great loss. He then continues with saying Hanabi then spent the next day looking after her trying to clean her up as best she could. She then went to see Hiruzen for help, but he told her that he could not help at all, as due to it being a clan-related issue, and he had no jurisdiction in it. Feeling helpless and scared of her father, she slept underneath a park bench that night. He then tells the story of how he found her and the resulting conversation, and making sure he gets her breakfast listening to her story. Then he went back to the tower and freed both of them from their father, using several of the old laws from the foundation of the village. As I did not feel it was safe to bring her to the Leaf Village Hospital, due to his influence in the village, I was afraid that he could still get to her, so I had her transported to a private doctor that I know. As he is picking up a new folder and said I just want to clarify this was taken two days after being released as he opens it and start to read the content. Medical report of patient Hanada Uzumaki. Patient was admitted to hospital with optic nerve damage in right eye, a cracked skull with swelling on the brain, five cracked ribs, a cracked left humerus, right femur was broken, shattered left hand, severe internal damage to kidneys, lungs, and heart, along with multiple bruises across the body. As he continued to read the report listing everything that was found. The two samurai standing on either side of Hiyashi instantly put their hands on the sword at their side. But do not draw them, but you can tell by the look on their face that they want to. Not known to anybody from the Leaf Village, both of these samurai have daughters the same age as Hinata and have a picture of their daughters laying on the floor beaten in their minds. Tsum who upon hearing this jumped to her feet and had tried to jump over the table in full on attack mode and was now being held in a bear hug by Chimza with a large man working to hold her but was struggling. Gurumeru who had shot underneath the table was trapped in a shadow possession jutsu by Shikaku, those in the room can tell he was struggling with it. Yoko takes the folder and calls out to Sarah, who had been sitting in her seat as the representative of the Leaf Village Hospital, to come and look at the new medical report and get her opinion on it. The two doctors quickly look through it and find an envelope at the back with a wax seal of a bellflower shutting it closed. Sarah looks at it and says what is this Naruto-kun and what is the wax seal for? 
Everybody in the room watches as his face goes red and says they are photographs of her injuries from the attack. The wax seal was to make sure nobody can look at them because I was told that she had to have her clothes removed for them to be taken. Sarah with a small smile on her face says so have you seen the photos of Naruto-kun? Naruto sent her a glare and said of course not, I am not her doctor and I have no business looking at any photographs of her like that and I will not betray her trust like that. Both doctors smile at his red face and begin to look at the photographs, along with all the new information becoming angrier and angrier as they look at them. Up in Damon tier, Damon's sister smiles and says he is definitely a little charmer. Not to mention he's kinda cute. Her brother looks at her and says fishing for a new husband already, little sister. She looks at him and says no, but he is 12 years old, so he is only 4 years older than Neho. And if you remember, father was 15 years older than mother when they got married. Her brother begins to rub his chin and says you are correct, and a marriage between our two families would help strengthen the old bonds between the land of fire and the land of whirlpools. His wife speaks up from his side and says if he's not interested I know he adopted all of those children from the orphanage, and if I remember correctly his family does not care about that once you are in the family, whether it is born into the family or adopted you are in Yuzumaki. Perhaps he would be willing to talk about a marriage between one of them and Neho. Main floor, here is in with a look on his face not too many people have seen outside of battle, and the face that had earned him the title of the god of shinobi. As he looks at Hiyashi he says you better hope that is not true, or I will be adding a charge of treason for the attempted murder of a leaf village Kanoichi. Yoko closes the folder with his eyes closed. Taking a deep breath before looking at the daemon and saying your lordship never in my five years of being a medical practitioner have I seen anything as disturbing as that. And to tell you the truth it is taking everything I have right now not to break my Hippocratic oath not to inflict pain on him. Sarah walks up to Hiyashi and before anybody can stop her she slaps him across the face. And says he may not be able to inflict pain because of his oath, but I was a Kanoichi before I became a doctor. The daemon looks at Hiyashi and says do you have anything you want to say? Hiyashi crosses his arms and says how I train my daughters is my own clan's business. If she was not as weak as she was and not a disgrace to herself by hanging out with these lesser people, she may have been a proper heir to the clan. The daemon's face becomes stone-like and says Inoichi Yamanaka, please confirm what we have learned here today by your clan's ability. Inoichi walks up to Hiyashi while he is doing hand signs and places his hand on the back of his head and says mind walking psycho mind transmission, jutsu. After a few moments he steps back with a look of disgust on his face as he has a mental picture in his mind of Hinata on the ground covered in blood, but it soon overlaps with a bloody Eno. Inoichi, with a single tear going down his cheek, he says it's true. Inoichi who had managed to get himself in control then says I watched the entire fight. Not only was her father in the room, but the entire Hyuga council, along with all of the elders in the main branch family. And none of them did anything to stop it, even when Hanabi started crying asking for it to stop. The daemon who had previously met the shy and quiet girl at a social gathering, felt as if a dagger had been plunged into his heart. In a voice that demanded respect he says after hearing and seeing all of this evidence, I hereby sentence you to life in prison along with everyone else that was in that room excluding Hanabi, as she is the one to try and get her sister help. I am also ordering all of theirs and your personal bank accounts, and all businesses will be handed over to Hinata in compensation. The Ashi shoots up to his feet saying you cannot do that, it will destroy the Hyuga clan. By removing the main branch elders and the council. The daemon looks down his nose and says do not presume to tell me what I can and cannot do to take him away. The Ashi delivered two palm thrusts at the two samurai at his sides. Then looks at Naruto and says this is all your fault. If I am going down I'll take you with me covering his hands in chakra sprinting forward before anybody can move. But the bored look on his face Naruto says back in three. Shitatsu Sansen beat piercing triple beam as he began generating a burst of crackling yellow energy in his palm, as he begins to use the energy to draw an inverted yellow triangle, which generates solidified energy in the shape of smaller triangles from its three points. The smaller triangles then fire at Hiyashi pinning him against a nearby wall slamming into his body, hitting both of his shoulders and his stomach, the three places manage to form the shape of a perfect triangle and immobilize him. Hiruzen activates a seal on the desk, summoning a team of Anbu with Nico in the front and says arrest him. The team of Anbu look at Hiyashi who is still pinned to the wall then at Naruto with Nico who says will you please release him Naruto-kun. Waving his hand the yellow triangles disappear making him fall flat on his face. The team quickly has him in handcuffs. Hiruzen says and once you have him in a cell you are to go to the Hyuga compound and arrest the entire Hyuga clan council, along with all of the elders in the main branch family. And if any of them give you a hard time you are free to use lethal force. Before he could be walked away he ashi looks at Naruto and says you may have gotten rid of me for now, but I have powerful friends Yuzumaki. You destroyed my family so it is only fitting that I would destroy yours. You might be strong, but what about all those brats that you adopted? 
you won't always be able to protect them, especially when they are sleeping in their beds when you're out on a mission. Naruto simply walks back over to his chair sitting down before looking at him and says, you might have powerful friends, but I will tell you this, I have a great swell of sorrow and pity for any poor individual who comes to my compound looking to cause trouble. Once he was out of the room everybody in the room was looking at him acting as if no one was looking at him. Naruto picks up a glass of water and takes a drink and says, and that ladies and gentlemen is the reason you never cross an Uzumaki. Hiruzen let out a tired sigh wishing that he could just hang up his hat. Suddenly there was a tapping sound of a walking cane on the floor, and the man that Naruto recognized as Danzo is doing it, getting everybody's attention and says. I am rather curious how you came up with these new abilities. As nothing in any of my reports show this and as one of the leaders in this village, I want you to tell me how you came across them. Naruto takes another drink from his glass and says I'm sorry to inform you, but you do not have the clearance level for that information. Anzo narrows his one good eye and says I am one of this village's elders, I have the highest clearance in the village and in the land of fire. With Naruto replying I'm sorry your clearance is not going to work in this matter, as it is a land of whirlpool secret. Hiruzen says that is enough Danzo. Lord Yuzumaki has the right to protect his clan secrets like any other clan. Before anything else can be said a falcon mask Anbu appears in the room and says I'm sorry for interrupting your meeting Lord Hokage, but I think you should know a horde of children have launched a pranking war and the village has been caught in the middle of it. As everybody in the room instantly looks at Naruto with him saying oh sure blame the Yuzumaki in the room. That is profiling while he is crossing his arms. All the clan heads and Hiruzen continue to stare at him. Caving underneath the pressure he lets out a breath and says fine tell the brats if they don't behave that you will tell Aiko the head cook to cancel dessert tonight, getting a nod of the head before the Anbu leaves the room. Everybody in the room can hear silent laughter coming from Damon's wife and sister. Then his sister says lesson number one when dealing with rambunctious kids always threaten to take their desert away to make them behave. With his wife saying her husbands. Making the uncle and the niece bowed. Here is in getting everybody's attention says let's move on to the next item on the schedule which is a meeting between the delegates from the sand village looking at an anbu by the door he says, please send them in. R and Tamari and Kankram along with Baki walk into the room, each one of them giving a bow to Hiruzen and says greetings Lord Hokage. Hiruzen puts on his grandfather-like smile and says I'm glad you could make it today. Now let's get right to it as he picked up some papers off the desk. Over the course of the next three and a half hours they talk about a new treaty between the land of wind and the land of fire. With Hiruzen having to silence Hamura and Kaheru along with Danzo when they kept demanding more and more from them. Aki looks at the new temporary treaty and says we will go back to the sand village and present this to our council. Hiruzen nods his head and says very well now does anyone else have anything they want to add before they leave. Naruto raises his hand and says I do then looks at them and says it is nice to see you again. Have there been any problems with your brother's seal since I fixed it? Tamari looks at him and says no Lord Yuzumaki in fact we've been able to get closer to him than we have in a long time. Naruto says that is good to know now if you remember at the meeting I had with you yesterday, I had a matter that I had to discuss with you. Seeing them nodding their heads. He reaches into his pocket and pulls out a scroll releasing the contents that are a stack of paperwork. He then says I found a contract at my compound as my family always kept duplicates one copy being here in the Leaf village and the second back at home, it was between the Whirlpool village and the Sand village that was made in the second war that was never completed. Naruto looks at one of the papers and says there is now an outstanding debt of a large monetary compensation that will have to be paid. Damari looks at him and says I don't know how our village will ever be paying it. We can barely get by as being in the middle of a desert doesn't give us many opportunities to make money. Naruto looks at her with a confused look on his face and says I think you misunderstood me. What is happening is it's not your village that owes the money, it is the village of whirlpools. Looking at one of the pieces of paper he says a contract was made between our two villages with my village, buying a large quantity of sandstone and other materials that are found in the desert of the land of wind. And they were delivered on time, but before the payment could be sent the country was attacked. He then says in the contract it states clearly what would happen if the payment was late, and that is we would have to pay penalties plus interest for however long it was late. We are now 39 years late. He then takes out an abacus and begins to crunch the numbers writing down on a piece of paper. As three of the sand ninjas look at him with a look of shock on their faces. After a few minutes he looks up and says if my calculations are correct this is the total amount my village now owes you. Handing out a piece of paper with Baki walking up to take it. The moment he looks at it is one good eye goes wide. Both Tamari and Kankram were looking over his shoulder when Kankram saw the amount written on the paper, 433 million Ryo and faints. Tamari who had taken the paper from him and became a babbling mess saying Theus Murith and Wu Kanan Maki in Teni Ayers in admissions Alani. 
Naruto looks at her and says you are correct it is a great deal of money, which is why I cannot give it all to you right now, it would hurt your village more than help it seeing that he was getting a confused look at him from the two sand ninja and Gara standing there and not showing any emotion on his face. He then says your village has been on the verge of bankrupt for a long time to suddenly have this influx of money would hurt your economy, making the prices of everything skyrocket. Before he could say anything else here is in managed to say he is correct I have seen this happen before. All of the clan heads nod their head in agreement with Shikaku saying it would probably be better if he paid it off in small quantities so that your village and your economy can slowly adjust to the change. Aki nods his head and says you are correct in your assessment that it would hurt our village more than helping right now. Naruto then says I do hope this will not turn your village off doing business with my family in the future. Because along with the contract I also found a prototype seal that my family was in the process of making for your village, and once I finish it, I will be willing to give it to your village free of charge as an apology. Damari looked at the boy she is beginning to have a great sense of respect for especially with him honoring a contract that was now going to save her village, but could have easily been lost to time, and her village would have never known about it. As she stands there and looks at him she can easily picture what he's going to look like in the future, which makes her cheeks go red. R looks at him and speaks for the first time and says what is this seal and what does it do? While crossing his arms. Naruto with a smile on his face picks up a piece of paper and hands it out to Baki before continuing. He then says it is basically an invisible barrier that will go over your village and will work like a pair of sunglasses by reducing the brightness outside and the heat of your village, which would mean your village citizens would not have to worry about getting sunburned because it would protect them from the sun's rays and at night all of the heat that was exhausted during the day can be used to help heat your village during the night. Aki and Tamari both have looks of shock on their faces when hearing this. Both of them knew that the scorching sun during the day was one of the biggest problems in the village and how cold it could get at night, and now there was someone offering them to fix one of their greatest problems. Pankram who had now woken up and was told by his sister what just happened looks at him and says, you just have all the answers to everything don't you? I don't suppose you could solve the water problems too then. As he began chuckling to himself at the thought of it. But the puzzled look on his face Naruto says I will look into it and see what I can do, but I can't make any promises. Before they leave, Naruto says I will be in contact with you soon to work out a payment plan. Getting a nod of the head back. Spending another hour going over various objects Hiruzen says I believe we've gotten everything on the schedule covered for today, so I call this meeting to an end. Outside the tower, as the clan heads leave the tower, they are met with a hilarious sight of at least eight children stuck in a tree, calling out for help because it is surrounded by crocodiles and are snapping at them. Off to the side is at least a dozen Anbu, along with a dozen Chunin and Jounin and Anbu, whose cloaks are stained with paint with a female standing in the front with a crocodile mask, whose cloak has giant red spots all over it. Slowly walking up to the tree Naruto looks at the Anbu and says I always told you guys you need to add more color to your clothing, I'm glad you're finally seeing my way. For this comment he was smacked upside the back of the head by crocodile. As she looks at him she says we are sending you our dry cleaning bill for this Yuzumaki. With the rest of them nodding their heads in agreement. Naruto looks up and says you kids really messed up crocodile here she has no sense of humor. Not a single funny bone in her entire body. Crocodile looks at him and places her hands on her hips and says I do it to have a sense of humor. That makes all of her colleagues look at her along with all the crocodiles on the ground with looks that clearly said no you don't. As he started to walk away the kids called out to him for help. Looking over his shoulder he says don't worry about her little pet scratching them under their chin to get them to stop snapping at you because they are just big babies. As for crocodiles, just get out a spider. She's terrified of them and she will always scream like a little girl when she sees one. As he begins to run away hearing the female scream out Yuzumaki as she gives chase. Damari who had been standing outside waiting for them to come out so she could talk to him looks at this with a shocked expression on her face, seeing him act like that when he had been so serious in the meeting. She then looks at the nearest clan head who happened to be Tsum. And so she asked her is he bipolar? Because I'm getting confused. First he was an idiot wearing an orange jumpsuit, then he was all serious, now he's back to being an idiot again. Soom looks at her and says we don't know we've never been able to get him to sit still long enough to be tested just like his mom. The common belief is that yes they are. Everybody else in the group nods their head in agreement. Amik Anko Noble Quest for the book. Anko Mitarashi was standing in the bedroom of her apartment in front of a wall with a giant map of the village. The map had several dozen pictures of people along with places around the village. Some of the pictures had a red X in it, with different colors of string attached. Anko had just put an X through the Raymond shop. She then begins to talk to herself and says where have you hidden this book brat? I'm going to find it one way or another. Tapping one of the other pictures that showed the academy perhaps a check here again. 
She was brought out of her thoughts by a loud banging on her front door. Quickly walking through the apartment she opens her front door to find Kurenai standing there with her arms crossed. She then says I knew you wouldn't be ready. We have a mission we need to get going so get dressed now. Grabbing her left arm and dragged her through the apartment and back into her bedroom. Kurenai, the moment she sees the giant map and the pictures, she pinches her nose and says you know you're never going to find that book, so why do you keep on looking for it? Banko pulls her arm free and says don't underestimate me. I'm going to find the book and I'm gonna claim the mission to pay for it. Then I'm going to use every single prank in it to pay him back. As she began to laugh and walk over to the wall and said I think I've made a breakthrough I've already eliminated his apartment along with several other areas and it's only a matter of time before I find it. And point to several different areas he is known to hang out I haven't checked. Gurunai then says Anko we do not have time for your obsession with this book. Now get dressed properly that includes pants and putting on underwear. As we are meeting several nobles and acting as security guards at a party. Banko looks at her and says what is wrong with my outfit Kurenai. Kurenai says there are more things wrong with it than I can count and we do not have time for this just get dressed now. I'll be in the living room. As she walks out the room and closes the door. Banko shouted that I will get dressed properly but you owe me a trip to the dumpling store as she walks over to her dresser and open the third drawer, pulling out a nice shirt, closing it and pulling open the second one I'm pulling out a pair of pants before closing it and making for the bathroom before remembering that she had to grab a set of underwear. Quickly opening the drawers without looking at it, grabbed the first pair on the top and quickly slammed it closed. Had Anko looked in the drawer she would have noticed that when she grabbed a pair of underwear, it revealed a book inside with the title Naruto's Super Awesome Pranks book. Several minutes later she opens the door to her bedroom standing there in a nice outfit and says fine I'm ready, happy now. Kurenai nods her head and answers good let's go and makes for the front door. With Anko following her and slamming her bedroom door closed making it shake along with the wall and the dresser next to it, this created an avalanche in the top drawer as her underwear fell on top of the book hiding it once more. Naruto was heading for the front gate thinking about what happened at the meeting yesterday and how got his revenge on Hiashi for what he had done to Hinata. He had to smile to himself as he remembered the look on both Hinata and Hanabi's faces when he told them at dinner. Both of them had tackled him in a hug, kissing both his cheeks. With happy tears going down their cheeks. Because they never had to worry about their father trying to get them again. He was brought out of his thinking by somebody calling his name. Turning in the direction of the voice he sees the set of twin girls, Sayori and Arisu. Both of them wearing their Cheongsam style dresses with their hair done the way they always did, but he noticed that they each added flowers to their hair. For Sayori the older of the two, it was one big blue flower attached to her single ponytail, and for Arisu, she had one pink flower on each of her pigtails. Both of them have the spears that he had given them, and in his head he is groaning to himself because they had insisted on being his personal gate security guards and attempted to follow him everywhere he goes. The both of them are now looking up at him. He puts on a smile and asks what do you want? Sayori the more serious one slams the butt of her spear on the ground as she says, why did you not come and get us and tell us you were going to leave? As your guards it is our duty to protect you, but we cannot do that if you never tell us you are leaving with an angry pout on her face. Arisu the more childish one puffs out her cheeks and begins to flare her arms in a childlike manner saying yeah big brother, you big meanie. He found it highly amusing that these two were actually twins because they are completely opposite to each other. Laughing at their antics and putting up his hands in front of his chest saying okay, okay, I give up. I'm sorry. But seriously guys I don't need you guys to follow me everywhere. I was heading to the hospital because I have to put a team together for an upcoming mission. Sayori says you do not have a say in the matter. You signed us to be your guards and that is what we're going to do. We may not be able to go out on missions with you, but when you're in the village we would do our job stepping up to his left side. Arisu quickly stepped up to his right side saying okay big brother, let's go to the hospital pumping her fist into the air as she walked forward and took a right turn. Naruto smiles and says Arisu the hospital is the other way she quickly does an about face and says I knew that. This brings a smile to his face, it also makes her sister look at her with a look of embarrassment on her face because of her actions. Business District As the three of them were walking down the street, it made for an incredibly cute picture of Naruto walking with two little girls standing on either side of him with spears and the girls trying to keep a serious look on their faces. As he looked around, he could see the smiles on the women and men's faces. He could tell that some of them were struggling not to laugh at him. The group suddenly stops because they can hear a voice that they recognize say well, 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 look what we have here. Turning to look at the voice, the three see Ino as well as her mom Inoiki and Yoshino and Chana. Ino with a big smile on her face says if it's not the new big bad Chunin, the man who can make two invading armies run away and then fight a Sanin. But now he needs two little girls to protect him, oh how the mighty have fallen. This makes everybody on the street laugh at the embarrassed boy. Naruto sees that everybody is now laughing at him. 
He narrows his eyes and says you do realize this means war, don't you Yamanaka? Because remember I still have that piece of blackmail on you from when you were 8 years old and you won first prize in the blueberry pie eating contest. Ino crosses her arms and says no you don't because I managed to destroy all of the pictures. Naruto with his fox-like grin says you are correct but you forgot about the negative in which I'm in possession of. And even if you manage to destroy it, you're looking at someone who can easily recreate that scene with the shadow clone and the transformation techniques. Sayori looks up at him and asks what's so bad about the picture of Big Brother. Naruto replied saying let's just say she lives up to her namesake. Arisu breaks out into giggles saying you mean she ate like a pig. Ino's entire face goes red with embarrassment as she moves forward like she's going to strangle the little girl for calling her a pig, but a hand on her shoulder from her mom stops her. Suddenly the whole group can hear the scream of a woman looking across the street. They see a woman holding her large stomach wearing what looks like maternity clothes. They quickly go to her side with Yoshino checking on her using her medical knowledge, confirming that her water just broke and she is now in labor. Naruto looks at Hinoki and Chana and Ino and says I'm gonna take her straight to the hospital. I need you to take the girls and meet me there. Receiving two nods of the heads from the moms as Ino grabs both of the girls' hands. Naruto gets down to one knee and looks at a woman and says my name is Naruto Yuzumaki. I can get you to the hospital safely and quickly. Do I have your permission to touch you miss? The woman looks at him and says yes through gritted teeth, seeing she was obviously in pain. He puts his hands on her shoulders and says take a deep breath, he then uses a flash step and the two of them disappear. Inoiki looks at the group and says let's go to the hospital to meet up with them. Sayori asks before we go can I ask a question? Seeing Inoiki nod she asks why did big brother ask her if he could touch her before he took them to the hospital. Jana says I'm glad that you caught that. When your big brother was 10 years old he and your auntie no took a class at the hospital in what to do in emergencies like that and other crisis situations and that was one of the things that they taught him because he was a boy and because it was a woman he had to ask for her permission before touching her because she might not have been comfortable with him doing so. Some women do not appreciate men touching them. Ino then says and he has often taken classes with my dad because besides being an interrogator, he sometimes works as a counselor. Ino and Inoiki and Chana and Yoshino, each of them smiling to themselves remembering the conversation they had with him about what happened during the month of training and how he rescued FK. Arisu nods and looks up at her and says can we get ice cream on the way to the hospital? With a large innocent smile on her face. Inoiki and Chana and Yoshino share a smile before they say okay. What flavor of ice cream do you girls want? Arisu and Sayori share a look then says Blueberry. This makes all three mothers break out laughing at the look on Ino's face. Hospital upon arrival. Upon arrival in the waiting room, Naruto runs up to the front desk, saying we have a code Robin. The nurse who was working does not even look up from her paper and hands him a clipboard, saying fill out these papers and take a number, and the doctor will be with you as soon as your number is called. Naruto grabs the clipboard and slams it down on the countertop, saying we do not have time for this. The nurse stood up and said if I let every single person who came in here jump in line because they think they were more important, nothing would get done. Now if you'll excuse me I'm going to get a cup of coffee. Upon seeing her not even caring about a pregnant woman infuriates Naruto, and before anybody in the room can do anything, Naruto reaches out and grabs her by the front of her uniform and slams her on the countertop. Speaking in a voice that sent a shiver down everybody's spine he said you have precisely three seconds to get a gurney in here for this woman. Are you gonna be happier in a hospital because you're gonna be the one to need it? All of the other patients begin to clap with several of the women then saying you should be ashamed of yourself. As they were helping the woman into a wheelchair. When suddenly a new voice says what is going on here. As everybody turns to look at the door. They're standing in the door with Sarah along with Anahana and Hinata with Sarah looking at Naruto. Sarah then says Naruto you had better have a good reason for manhandling one of my nurses. Naruto throws the nurse on the ground at her feet and says that bitch is deliberately ignoring a code robin which is a woman in labor, if I remember correctly and I know from all the different times that we've talked and all the times I've helped around the hospital, it is one of the top two codes that do not get ignored and usually jump to the front of the line, the second one being a code blue jay which is an injured child. But yet she is more interested in getting a cup of coffee. Sarah and Anahana both have the same look on their faces that says that they wanted to rip her apart. Sarah looks down at her and says clean out your locker and don't ever let me catch you on this property again unless you are dying or for an emergency. The nurse gets to her feet and says you can't do that to me. My husband is on the civilian council. One comment from me and I would like your job. Anahana walks forward with both of her eyes closed and says allow me to show you the door. Faster than anybody could see she delivers a poke to the forehead, sending her crashing through the door to the outside. A few seconds later the group of moms and Eno come running in with the girls. It was Sayori who said, see, we can't leave you alone for five seconds without you getting in trouble, big brother. This makes everybody laugh. 
Naruto just rolled his eyes and said what can I say. I'm like a magnet for it. The woman who is now being looked at by some nurses says please someone's got to tell my husband please. I don't know if I can do this without him. Naruto looks at her and says where is he at? After being told that he's working at a construction site in his name he disappeared only to reappear a few moments later with a man wearing a construction uniform who quickly goes to her side before they leave through the doors they say thank you. Sarah looks at Naruto and asks why are you here? And please try not to cause any more trouble or I might have to sign you up for a full medical exam. With that damn sweet smile on her face. Naruto says I just came to check on Rock Lee and I know his teammates would be here and I need to speak to them. Sarah says I see well we are on our way to see him as well so you can join us but I'm afraid that those are not allowed in my hospital. As she points at the spears. After saying goodbye to Ino and the moms and making a quick stop at Sarah's office to drop off the spears, the group heads up to the third floor. Third flood. As they are walking down the hallway Hinata looks at Naruto and says I thought you did not like hospitals, so why were you volunteering to help around here? Naruto replied yes I don't like hospitals that much it is true, but I know how boring it can be, so I was always helping the kids who are stuck in bed by making them laugh and bringing in comic books and coloring books and toys when I could. And then there were a few times I snuck in a puppy for the kids to play with. Sarah smiles and says yes he became quite a little candy stripper, even if we could never get him to wear the uniform. Naruto looked at her and said because I am not going to let you dress me up like a stupid candy cane. Sarah then had a bad cough that sounded more like an orange jumpsuit. Naruto decides to ignore her and says so what are you doing at the hospital Hinata? I thought you were all healed up. Hinata says Sarah wanted to do a checkup on me after you showed the medical file to her of what happened with the clan elder. With a slightly embarrassed look on her face she says what happened to those pictures. Naruto says you do not have to worry that I burned them so no one can ever see them. Naruto looks at Anahana and says what are you doing here? Anahana gives her typical smile and says I'm just here to exchange information with another doctor who manages to impress me and shares different techniques. The group approaches room 33 with a nameplate on the side. Room 33. Sarah is the one to knock on the door when they can hear somebody say come in the group heads in and see Lee sitting up in his bed with his left arm and leg wrapped up in bandages. Tenton was sitting in the chair next to him. His sensei might guy, upon seeing the doctor, runs up to her and drops to his knees and wraps his arms around her leg, saying you can heal him right Sarah-chan. Sarah with an annoyed look on her face says might guy you have to the count of five to remove yourself from me or we are going to have a repeat of what happened to you when we were tuning and on the same team for a mission and you came crashing into the tent when I was changing clothes. Suddenly before anybody could blink guy was hiding behind Naruto. Tenton looks at her sensei and says is that the reason you always make me have my own tent when we are on missions. Before Naruto can make a comment a boy says what are you doing here Yuzumaki. He notices who is standing in the corner, Kakashi. Naruto completely ignores him and looks at Sarah and Anahana says how is Lee. Sarah takes a clipboard off the wall and says it's not looking good, he has severe damage to his spine that I am not able to treat. As she hands the clipboard to Anahana to look at. Anahana shakes her head and says there's just too much damage even I would have trouble healing something like this. Naruto says I see well then let's try this putting on a smile he looks at Hinata and says you're up Hinata-chan. Hinata walks up to the bed and holds up her hands and says am, shuno. Soten Kishin twin sacred return shield. And two glowing lights shot forward from her hair clip and created an oblong dome over Lee's body. Those who have not seen this technique were shocked at seeing it. Lee was about to touch the shield with his good hand when Hinata said please do not move. Akashi lifted up his headband trying to see what she was doing, but his Sharingan could not decipher what it was supposed to be doing. Suddenly there was a little voice that Hinata recognized as Aum spoke, saying there is a lot of damage here Hinata-chan, it is going to take us a while for us to heal it all. Sarah says I do not understand. How is she able to do this? The only person I can think of who might be able to heal him would be Lady Tsunade, and I've never seen a technique like this before. How does it work? Naruto says what it does is it surrounds something to return it to its former complete state. It rejects, reverses, and reconstructs phenomena that have occurred, even phenomena that she hasn't witnessed. The incantation she said allows her to summon A.M. and Shun to form a barrier around whatever or whomever Hinata wishes. Their ability is to repel the inner shield. The shield placed inside means that they repel the damage within a limited area. In other words, they return a subject covered by the shield to the state that they were in before taking damage. Her ability is to limit, reject, and negate any kind of event that has happened. Her summoning tells us that the technique's healing speed is potentially faster than most healing techniques. Far more powerful than Tsunade's creation rebirth technique, it is a power that trespasses into Kami's territory. So in theory with the right training she can fully resurrect a person after death, even if only a blood splatter on the ground is all that is left. Arisu and Sayori begin rubbing their heads and saying you're using too many big words big brother on us. 
our heads hurt now with little pouts. Sarah looks at him and says you should be ashamed of yourself for using such big words in front of little girls, with that damn smile on her face. As she reaches into her coat pocket and pulls out two lollipops and hands them to the little girls. Naruto, seeing most everybody was looking at him with a confused look not understanding what he said. So he says she basically creates a barrier and can use a space-time ninjutsu to rewind time inside of it. Sarah looks at Hinata and says she could one day rival Tsunade. Does this technique work on diseases or just physical damage? Naruto says just physical damage, and I hope you are not planning on making her spend her whole life healing every little broken finger that walks in there. Sarah says no, I will only call her if it's an emergency. Bakashi says where are you getting all these artifacts that let you have strange and unique powers? I have never come across anything like this before or the ones you handed out in the invasion. Something like this can easily become quite popular if it can be replicated. Naruto looks at him and says they are one of a kind and cannot be replicated. As to how I came into possession of them, my family is one of the oldest families on the planet. We can trace lineage back to Tsutsuki Hagoromo also known as the Sage of Six Paths. We're related through one of his sons. And that is all you need to know Kakashi, and no you will not be getting one of these tools. Naruto says now that we got that taken care of he looks at Guy and says the reason I came here was to ask you if I could borrow one of your students for an upcoming mission. Guy gives him a thumbs up and answers of course Yuzumaki. Which one of my students will you be needing? Naruto turns his head and looks at Tenten and says will you be up for a mission in a couple days. Tenten nods and says yeah why not what is the mission. Naruto then says we are going to hunt a slug. Tenten with a confused look on her face says why are we going hunting for a slug. Naruto says this is no ordinary slug she is quite famous, knowing that this would catch her attention. Tenten lets out a squeal while her eyes turn into stars and says we are going to look for Lady Tsunade. Now looking like a statue. Sayori and Arisu start to poke her with them saying I think you broke her big brother. Naruto looks back at Tenten seeing she is still zoned out and walks up to her and his finger flicks her on the forehead. Tenten snaps out of it and begins to rub her forehead and says what was that for? That hurt. Arisu walks up to Naruto and kicks him in the shin and says you're not supposed to hit girls, you big bully. Naruto hopping on one foot saying ow, ow, ow. As everybody besides Kakashi begins to laugh at him. After spending another hour Hinata finally drops the barrier as she was panting for breath. Naruto walks up to her and hands her a glass of water. Sarah walks up to the bed and begins to do a checkup on Lee. After a few moments she looks back and says I can't find anything wrong with him, he's completely healed. Naruto looked at her and said you did a good job Hinata-chan. I'm sure one day you will make a great doctor and fulfill your dream. Hinata glances up to look at him and says you know. Naruto nodded and said I know everything about my family. Their hopes and dreams and I am going to do what I can to help them. No matter what it would be. If you'd rather be a doctor or a published author, a farmer, a movie actress, it will only be limited by their imagination. One of the girls I adopted wants to become a Maiko Shrine Maiden, and I told her that when I get time I will take her to a temple so she can talk to one of the priestesses to see if it's really what she wants. All four of the older women along with Might Guy sent him a smile for that. Bakashi let out a snort out his nose and said oh really, and what if one of the girls decides she wants to work in a brothel, would you support her then? Guy looks at him and says that's enough Kakashi, one more word out you, and I will have you running laps. Naruto says no it's okay guy, and to answer your question Kakashi I already have a woman that I rescued during that month of training when you ditch me, and who has been working in one of those since she was 14, because her father sold her to pay off his gambling debt. And she is not coping well with not having to do that work anymore. I had to promise her I would do what I could to help her to stop her from running back and joining a new one, even if I had to open one myself. And if it comes down to that I can guarantee you that mine will be more sterile than any other one that you can find, and any of the women working at mine will make a decent wage and have to get a medical checkup every other month at no cost to them. Denton was begin to yell at him for even thinking about opening a brothel and how she thought he was better than that, but she stopped seeing Sarah and Anahana send him a nod of approval, both of them telling her that most men who run those do not care about the women and their health or keeping it clean. Sarah then says I can see that you're angry about that, but you should know most of the men and some women who run them all they care about is how much money they can make. And the fact that he is willing to make sure they get health checks along with making a decent wage shows that he really cares about them. Denton looks down and says I'm sorry Naruto I should not have jumped to conclusions like that. It's just that I grew up in the red light district and I have seen a lot of women like that and that's one of the reasons why I became a Kinoichi. I hate when men see women only as toys for their pleasure and saying that's all we are good for. I wanted to prove that women could be strong too. I also hate it when women do that because they are giving all women like us a bad name. Naruto says you're right Tenten some of the women who do it just because they want to can give women a bad name, but not all the women who do are bad. Some have to do it because they don't have a choice. 
You said you grew up in the red light district, so let me ask you a question Tenton. If a single mom comes home to find her apartment broken into and all her savings gone, and she knows there will be no food on the table in the morning for her children, and after she put her children to bed, she goes and sells her body that night, that way her children would have food in the morning, does that make her a bad mom? Anada comes up and stands next to Tenton and puts her hand on her shoulder, then looks at Naruto and says no that makes her a responsible mother and shows that she loves her children by willing to do that for them, with Tenton nodding and saying she's right. Naruto says now that we've gotten that out of the way I have to leave as I have two more teammates I have to recruit, but before we leave I do have one more gift I want to give. Reaching into his coat pocket he pulls out a box. And walks up to the bed and says I'm sure this one will come in handy for you and help you Lee. Lee looks at the box and lifts the lid with everybody looking over his shoulder, once the lid was removed, it was revealed to be a set of brass knuckles with three sevens on it. The weapon-loving member on Team 9 was looking at it with interest. With a smile on her face she looks at him and says okay, I give up. What does this one do? Naruto says what you're holding there is known as jackpot knuckle jack ulado nakuru. By Lee having anything come into contact with it, he will be able to manipulate the probability of that and hit a jackpot which means he basically almost guarantees a one-hit knockout and maximizes the damage that he will deal out. But it does come with a drawback. The more times Lee uses it on the same target, he will lower his chance of hitting the jackpot becomes. Lee looks at Naruto with fire in his eyes and says do not worry Naruto I will master this new tool or I will do eight laps around the village with my hands. Guy puts a hand around his shoulder and says that is my youthful student. I will help you and if I fail I will walk all the way to the land of wind in my hands. Soon both of them are hugging, but before they could activate the sunset jinjutsu, Naruto says you two better not activate that technique in front of these little girls, or I promise you I will go and get Yoshino. Naruto sees that both of them have stopped, then says good now it's time for us to go. Be ready to go the day after tomorrow. As Naruto and the girls head out the door, they can hear Arisu asking him can we please stop by and see the babies. Making the women in the room smile to themselves. Nursery wing. As they approach the window that would let them see the babies, they see the man from earlier standing in the hallway looking in. Noticing their approach he said I wanna thank you again for getting my wife here. I don't know what she would have done if you had not been there to help her. As you know I work in construction. I'm the owner of the company, if you ever need anything let me know and I will do my best to help. Naruto smiles and says no thanks is necessary. That's what our family does, helping people. As he walked up to the window with the girls he said your wife must have had a quick birth for you to be standing here. So which one is yours? He just points and says that little angel right there. Arisu with her face pushed up against the window. She looks up at him and says big brother how exactly do babies get into the mommy's belly? Because I can't wait till I can have a baby and be a mommy. Naruto says well Arisu-chan he begins to speak in a spooky voice, the first thing you have to do is go into a dark forest at night all alone, then you have to go into a deep wet cave with lots of spiders, but before he could say anything else he receives a smack to the head by a nearby nurse. As she was passing by she says in a sweet voice Yuzumaki Naruto, and at that moment he knew he was in trouble because she uses his full name, she then says you better not be trying to scare her, because if you are I will have you scrubbing bedpans like what happened when decided to bring in those puppies in to see the kids. As he is rubbing the back of his head he says fine babies are made when a man and woman loves each other. Arisa looks at him and says so all I need to do is find a boy. I can do that then I can be a mommy in no time. Naruto reaches out and grabs a few of her hairs on her head and pulls them off. Making her yelp and say why did you do that big brother that really hurt. Naruto says good now I want you to imagine that pain is only one times worse and that is how painful it is to have a baby. Arisa looks at him and says you're kidding right. At that moment a woman in a wheelchair holding a baby passes by and says no he's not. As the woman gives him a wink, Arisu faces a drain of all color. Random street. Half an hour later as the three of them are walking down the street, Naruto says well that is two members of the team down, it was a good thing we ran into Choji. Now all I have to do is find my third member. Arisu says I like him, he is really funny. As she is eating a bag of chips. Sayori looks at her and says the only reason you like him is because he shared his snacks with you. Naruto watched as the two bickered back and forth, but suddenly he froze as he has the feeling of a cold blade on his cheek and a voice whimpering in his ear, funny running into you, Gaki slowly turning his head to the left, he see Anko with a crazy look in her eyes. As she says you know I just got back from a meeting with Asuma and he told me a funny little story about what happened at the meeting yesterday and about a certain book and where you have been keeping it. I think it's time that we played Hunt the Fox. It's been so long since we played it. And now we can play it in the Forest of Death. Anko looks at Sayori and Arisu saying I'm going to borrow your big brother for a while. You two are to go home and not say anything about this. Sayori shrugged her shoulders and said okay big sister have fun. 
Naruto looks at her and says you're supposed to be my security guard and protect me, and you're going to just let her take me away without even fighting for me. Sayori looks at him and says yes because big sister Anko has been teaching us about life and how to play poker and how they are similar, and one of the lessons is that a big sister will always trump a big brother. With that Anko and Naruto disappear in a swirl of leaves. Sayori looks at her sister and says let's go back to the compound before we get in trouble. Arisu nods her head and goes to walk forward. But Sayori grabbed her by the back of her dress and said the house is this dummy, honestly if your head was not attached, you would lose it. Forest of death. As soon as the two appear in the clearing Anko pushes him forward and pulls out a kunai as she slowly begins to spin it on her finger. Anko begins to walk around Naruto. Finally she stops and says you know I've been looking for that book for a really long time spending hours upon hours searching random places and yet I can never seem to find it. And now I find out it was in my own apartment. But what is more interesting is that it was in my top dresser drawer the one place that I would never think to look. So do you have anything you want to say before we start our new game Gaki? And just so you know I'm not gonna be holding back on you now that you're a ninja. And the fact that you were able to take on my sensei is only gonna make this much more fun. Naruto who had managed to get to his feet says I do have one thing I wanna say before I start running, you dropped your 5% off coupon for dumplings on the ground. Anko looks down, but quickly looks back up to see he is already running. Licking the side of the blade and then says I always love it when they run. Within a few seconds she had managed to chase him down through the trees. In her sweet little voice she said you know that's going to cost you as she threw the kunai at him quickly. He dodges the attack by jumping to the next tree branch, but instead of landing on his feet, he does a handstand and kicks his right leg out towards her, and a hidden blade comes flying out of his pants leg. Banko, who managed to bat the blade away, was not prepared for Naruto to appear above her as he prepared to do an axe kick to her head. Anko quickly grabbed the leg but was caught off guard by Naruto twisting his body to attempt to deliver a punch which she grabbed with her free hand. That is when she notices that both her hands are now blocked, leaving him with his free leg to deliver a kick to her chest, sending her flying backwards. Naruto lands on his feet and does several backflips to get some distance landed on his feet. After the last one he slides backwards. As he sees Anko getting up and with a cocky smile says come on little snakey snakey. The fox wants to play giving her the come here hand gesture. Anko begin to laugh and says my little fox Chan thinks he's ready to play with the big kids. She then dashes forward to deliver a flurry of punches which he was able to block most of them. Naruto had managed to get some distance as he reached back and grabbed his tanto and with his fox-like grin and said you said you wanted to know what I could do, well, you better get ready to drop your socks and grab your crotch Anko-chan. You're about to get wet and not in a fun way. Inada Pav. Inada, having finished at the hospital, returned to the compound and walked through it to her sister's room. As she knocks on the door when she hears a small voice say come in, she opens the door to see Hanabi sitting on her bed looking at a picture. As she walks over to sit next to her sister and see the picture is of their mother. Hanabi looks up and says do you think she would be mad at us for leaving the family like we did? Hanada wraps her arms around her and shakes her head and says no Hanabi-chan, she would be happy that we were able to find a new family that loved us. Hanabi put the picture on her nightstand next to one of her and Naruto having ice cream in a shop back in the land of waves. Hanada looks at her little sister, and she can tell something is bothering her, so she says Hanabi-chan, I can tell something else is bothering you. You always scrunch up your forehead when something is bothering you. If you keep doing it you're gonna give yourself worry lines. Hanabi looks up and says let's go to the tea house, and I will tell you what's going on. The green leaf tea house. As the sisters are drinking the tea Hanabi explains how she was beginning to have a crush on Naruto, but he was oblivious to her affections. She then says I even went out and bought a new dress, but he did not say anything about it, except that it looks cute on me. Hanabi looks down at her cup of tea and says I know the reason why it is because I don't have a body that's interesting to him. I'm as flat as a board and I have to look up at him, so why would he want me when he could have someone like you? You're almost the same height, not to mention your chest. By now she had tears going down her cheeks. Hanada's outward face showed no emotion at hearing her sister had a crush on her, but inside her head was a chibi Hanada, who was hitting a chibi Hanabi, with a picket sign that ready is mine you stay away from him. Hanada reaches out and takes her sister's hand saying you know Naruto does not judge a woman by her body or her age. As for you not having any chest, you are 8 years old. I'm sure in a few years you will easily have one to match me. I mean just look at our mom's big chests run in our family. And with a grin she says between you and me, I know for a fact that he likes big chests. You saw the way he was acting around those women back in the land waves. Making both of them break out in giggles remembering how Ranjiku would constantly grab his head and bury it in her chest. Hanada takes a deep breath, then says as for him not noticing your attempts, I have known him for years. He can be pretty oblivious to things. Don't forget what his mother told us about how the men from his family are completely clueless when it comes to women. 
And that is why the women in his family had to be so strong and independent. This makes both sisters giggle remembering their conversation with her and the countless stories that she told them of how the men would mess something up and the women would have to fix it. Hinata then says Hanabi now that Naruto's status is out, he will most likely have to take up the craw, which will mean he will have to have multiple wives, and it will be hard for me to accept it, but I'm willing to share with him if I can get him to accept me. As for you having a crush on him, I'm sure if you talked to him and told him how you feel I'm sure he would be willing to listen to you. But you will have to wait until you are older due to you not wanting to be a ninja. You are considered a child until you are 16. Because he is technically considered an adult you will not be able to have a physical relationship with him. But that does not mean you cannot go out with him and have fun with him. Anabi says I guess you are right. I mean the four year age difference isn't that much. Maybe he will be willing to let me be his girlfriend and we can always go to the movies and go out to eat and we will be able to hold hands. And as for a physical relationship I am nowhere near ready for something like that, not for a long time. Anabi says as for you wanting to be his girlfriend too, I'm sure he will accept you. I mean look what he did to our cousin for you. Anabi puts on a small grin and says you know Hinata technically I am actually beating you in the relationship department with him. As I've already had a date with him so that makes the score 1 to 0. Inside Hinata's head the chibi Hinata is now dressed like a little devil and now has the chibi Hanabi tied up and hanging over large cliff with shark circling around down below and a knocked out chibi Naruto is tied to a nearby tree with a sign hanging from his neck, the dread property of Hinata. Hinata with a tiny grin says you may have gotten the first date but remember I will have more opportunities to go on dates with him. And with that she signaled the waitress to bring another pot of tea. Okage Tower that night, Naruto, not even bothering to knock on the door, walked into the office. Hiruzen looks up to see his second grandson walking and looking as though he just walked through a war zone. Hiruzen, repressing a smirk, picks up his pipe and says so what brings you here tonight, Lord Yuzumaki. Naruto looks at him and says first old man I wanted to say as he begins wagging his finger at him, you can tell your son he's got trouble coming his way for telling Anko on me. I think it's time I broke out the one prank I was not going to use that involves a honey-baked ham, a teapot, and a wolverine. Hiruzen loses all of the color in his face, not wanting to know what kind of prank that could be. And for the second reason I'm here because I decided on my team and we will be leaving soon. My team will consist of Tenten, Choji, and Ino. I'm also going to have to take Anko as a fourth member of my team. As I want to have at least one person there to help me lead my first mission. While he is thinking to himself I really don't have a choice, she threatened to cut off a certain part of my body if I did not take her. Hiruzen says I see you put together a strong team. Tenten, a long-range to mid-range fighter, Choji an up-close combatant, and Ino, who will be able to help with her clan's ability, had they just graduated the academy they would make a great team. I will give you credit for that. The fact that you took the time to put together such a well-balanced team are the qualities of a Chunin in leadership. Then you go one step farther by requesting Anko to accompany you on the mission in case something goes wrong. Hiruzen then says what do you plan on doing with Yurei while you're out on your mission? Would you be willing to release him into my custody? Naruto takes a seat in a chair in front of the desk, then he locks his fingers and says what guarantee would I have that he will show up for his trial. He is a master of stealth and evasion. Hiruzen says well for one thing Pakin would be able to summon him if he tries to run. Naruto nods his head says okay, you will have to pay his bail which is going to be one, Ryo which I'm sure is a published author, and how many books he has made his bank account will not take that big of a hit and that is non-negotiable and non-refundable when he does try to run. Hiruzen gives a nod of the head saying very well as I have access to his account. I would require the money so we can post it now. Uzumaki compound holding cells. As the two are walking in they are again met by a funny sight playing out in the room. There is a guard standing on the side of the cell as he is struggling not to laugh, because in front of the cell are at least five children, all singing la 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 sing the happy song, while they are also dancing in front of it. Inside his cell Jiraiya is laying down on his bed with his pillow on top of his head. If you are listening closely you can hear him saying make it stop, make it stop. Naruto says okay you little brats get lost making all the children run out of the room giggling. He then looks at the guard and says what was that all about. The guard replies he was trying to hit on the servant who brought him his lunch. She did not take too kindly to it, so she sent in the children to annoy him. Naruto nods his head and says that's understandable. Why were you not affected? The guard then says I was the youngest of one children, being annoying was my only defense against my older siblings. Naruto says well you are dismissed as the prisoner is being released into the custody of the Hokage. The guard gives a nod of the head, then says if it's okay with you, I'd like to retire for the night. And would it be okay if I grab a bottle of sake from the cellar? Naruto nods and says yes, but remember the rule of not getting drunk in front of the children and keep it behind your door if you do. Naruto opening the cell says it would seem that luck is on your side Jiraiya your bail has been posted. 
Gareya, waking out of the cell, looks at Hiruzen and says how much did it cost you to get me out. Hiruzen was about to light his pipe, but Naruto says there is no smoking in my compound except in designated areas, and this is not one. Hiruzen says let us go back to my office, and I will explain what is happening Jiraiya. He then looks at Naruto and says have a good night Naruto. The two of them stopped at the door as Naruto says I wonder what is going to happen when I tell Tsunade how you let the child of a woman that she considered a daughter be neglected. He then walked out a second door leaving two men with white faces. Yamanaka home, after a day of shopping and having fun Ino and Inoiki walk in the back door with each one carrying a dozen shopping bags and giggling to each other. Inoichi with his head on the table hears the door and he asks honey, what is for dinner? I'm hungry. Not hearing a response he looks up seeing all the shopping bags and says how big of a hit did my account take? Earning him a smack on the back of the head by his wife and daughter. Ino says I am going to take a shower mom. When I get out we will sort through all these bags. An hour later Ino walks into her room wrapped in a big fluffy purple towel and sees a box laying on her bed. Walking over to look at it, she sees a note on top of it in Naruto's sloppy handwriting. Note, dear Ino, I have selected you for a mission the day after tomorrow. We are going to find Lady Tsunade, so prepare for a long mission. Inside this box is a tool like the one I gave Choji that I will explain how it works when you are walking. From Naruto, end of note, Ino rolls her eyes and says that knucklehead opening the box reveals a set of brown boots that would go up to her knees. Ino looks at them and says not bad Naruto, and I cannot believe we're going to find Lady Tsunade. She goes to her dresser and opens her pajamas drawer only for a bunch of spring-loaded rubber snakes to shoot out of it, scaring her and making her scream and jump backwards, making her towel drop to the floor, leaving her naked. Her scream had alerted her dad who rushed into the room to see why his daughter was screaming and said Ino are you okay? Ino seeing her dad rush in as she knows she is naked, let out another scream using both her hands and arms to cover her body says get out daddy, she then begins to throw her stuffed animal collection at him. This makes him quickly run back outside and shut the door and to see his wife laughing her head off. Ino room, Inoiki walks in to see Ino now wearing her purple nightgown and slowly opening each drawer in her room. She then says he did tell you he was going to get you back. Ino looked at her saying you're right mom, but I don't think he meant for me to be seen naked by daddy. Even though I know Naruto would not go that far, I think I'm gonna be able to guilt trip him. Maybe like an all expenses paid spa day along with a new outfit. Inoiki says maybe you should make it a couple's trip and invite him to go with you because of your crush on him. It would be a great way for you to start your relationship. Ino with a bright red face looks at her and says mom what are you talking about? I don't have a crush on him. Inoiki turned around and headed out the door saying whatever you say dear, but should you change your mind? Both your father and I would both approve of him. Ino goes to her nightstand and looks at pictures of her and Naruto at a summer festival when they were eight. In the picture she had fallen asleep on his shoulder watching fireworks. In her lap is a stuffed cat he had wanted a game for her. She then thinks to herself it's true that I have always considered him my backup plan. The one boy I know would always treat me correctly. Maybe mom is right besides he will have to take several wives. Maybe he will be willing to let me be one of them. Hearing her mom call out that it's time for dinner. She smiles to herself and says maybe I'll talk to him on the mission, then heads to dinner. Naruto was currently sitting at his desk. In front of him was a group of five people consisting of Ikaku Madaram, Yumichika Asagawa, Izuru Kira, Shikei Hasagi, and Ranjiku Matsumoto. Naruto looks at them and says thank you all for coming. As you know I will be going out on a mission soon. I requested you to stay at my compound while I'm gone as a security force due to an incident that took place a couple days ago. Someone made a threat to my family so I want to take precautions while I'm gone. I have gotten permission from your village and each of you will be paid for a C-rank mission for the duration of it. Your main mission is to patrol the compound and act as security guards. Anyone attempting to enter the compound unauthorized is to be detained at all cost. If you feel you must kill them, do so. I am going to place Azuru as team leader. He slides a new device to them and says thanks to Mayuri and Kisuke along with my parents, the both of them were able to work together and come up with this new chakra secure network, through the combination of technology from your soul society and Kenjutsu, they were able to make a new network that goes over my compound invisible to the naked eye. These devices will tell you if anyone enters my compound and will show you the exact location of them. And it cannot be fooled by someone trying to hide underneath the transformation technique or Jinjutsu. Any invaders are going to show up as red dots, and members of my clan will show up as green. As each person in my clan is wearing a special medallion that is registered in this new net that has been placed over my compound. He thinks to himself I wish I could have brought mom and dad back, but it's too dangerous right now for them to be here, and with mom working at the Wave Academy and dad working with the Toads, gathering more information on this mysterious group that is causing trouble that Jureya had begun to investigate, so neither one of them are available right now to do it. Naruto says do any of you have questions that you wish to ask. 
Ranjiku raises her hand and says are we allowed to drink sake? I know when you were back in the land of waves you were trying to limit the children's interaction with it when the adults were drinking it. He looks at her to say yes you can, but you will have to follow the rules which are not getting drunk in front of the children. If you feel yourself getting drunk you are to take yourself to your room. But from what I understand all of you are quite adaptive at drinking it, so that should not be a problem. Ranjiku begins to think to herself about him strong and smart, not to mention he's good looking, and along with being one of the best cooks I have ever seen and good with kids, and from what Yoruchi said at the meeting, he is a demon in the bed he is the ultimate trifecta. She then licks her lips and thinks to herself when I get a chance I'm gonna try and get me some of that. She then places her hand on her pink cheeks as images of her in a wedding dress, having a large wedding with him appear in her head. Naruto along with all of the other men look at her as she is giggling to herself. Naruto looks at Izuru and asks him is she always like this? Getting a round of nods. Shaking his head he says I got things I gotta take care of. I'll see you when I get back from my mission as he gets up and leaves the room. As he opened the door Sayori and Arisu fell to the floor as they had been trying to listen and making everybody in the room chuckle. Naruto looks back at Akaku and says do you think you can give the two of them some pointers on how to use spears as their weapon of choice. Akaku looks at the two girls picking themselves up off the floor and says I can give them a few pointers. Naruto then says just remember they are human and they haven't took the serum that will give them the durability of a soul reaper. He received a nod of a head back. Then Naruto says when I get back I better not find their heads shaved. This makes both Sayori and Arisu put their hands on their head trying to protect their hair. But the laugh Naruto then heads out as he is passing through a courtyard, he sees that Tsum is sitting on one of the benches holding one of the infants in her arms. As she is watching Nariko and Ashia having a sparring match which was quite comical because of their age, what made it even funnier was Nell was acting as referee, but she kept on rooting for both sides. Walking up to the group Naruto can't see Tsum is not only holding the baby, but is also breastfeeding it. Upon seeing this his cheeks go red he knows from his various volunteering at the hospital that a medical ninjutsu technique was made for women to be able to do this. So it did not bother him as much as it normally would most boys or men. He was also well informed about this from his various mother, big sister figures growing up who would get angry when people would put women down for doing this and they made him understand that it was a perfectly normal thing. And as she had a towel wrapped around the head of the baby hiding her breast from view her modesty was not an issue. Tsum looks up to see him giving a nod of head, and she then says you've gotten better. Last time you saw me doing this to my sister's kid, you could not even make eye contact. Naruto decides to ignore her and instead says Team Alpha assemble in front of me Nariko, Ashia, and Nell move quickly to stand in front of him as he says, I will be going out on a mission, but before I leave, I have a mission for you while I am gone. Reaching into his pocket he pulls out a picture and says here is your target. Have fun as he also hands over a small stack of Ryo and says that should be enough for supplies. Nariko looks up and says what did big brother do? Naruto with his fox-like grin says he decided he wanted to poke a sleeping fox. He then uses flash steps and disappears. Tsum says let me see who your target is, then maybe I can give you some advice with Nariko showing her mother the picture revealing the picture to be of Asuma, knowing why he would have him targeted, she begins to laugh at the antics that is going to happen. She looks at them and says I think I will come out and help you. I used to team up with Kashina and Makoto back in the day. We were quite the little pranksters ourselves. Front village gate. As soon as Naruto appears in front of the shack his ears are bombarded by the high-pitched voice of Eno that she used back in the academy, saying you're late Naruto. Using his pinky to try and pop his ears back as he sees his team standing ready, he then looks at her and says Eno a shinobi is never late, nor can he be early as he will arrive precisely when he means to. He then looks at them with a cheesy grin. Anko along with Katetsu and Izumo broke down laughing. Eno was looking at Naruto who is now chatting with Choji. She is thinking to herself please, please, if I do manage to convince him to accept me as one of his wives let our children get my brain. Tenton who looks at her and says at least it's better than him screaming about youth or him having a stick up his ass. The witch Eno nods her head and says you're right. Naruto now stands in front of the team and says we are going to check all of the gambling houses and dens and we will be checking in with the lone sharks as well as we make our way to Tenzaku quarters. Getting a round of nods of the head he then says good then let's head out. Before they could leave, Eno decides to poke fun at him one more time and says aren't you forgetting something Naruto. Naruto looks at her with a confused look on his face and says no. Eno now sporting her own cheesy grin, says where's your little security guards? Making the whole group laugh at him. After traveling a few hours Eno remembers that Naruto had previously said he would tell her about her new boots. She then called out and said so what exactly do these boots do? You didn't mention it in your letter the other night. Naruto decreases his speed so that he is back with the group and looks at his watch and says okay, we're gonna take a 15 minute break and I will explain them to you. 
after finding a small clearing and breaking out a few drinks he looks at her and says okay the first thing you should know is that they are called dirty boots, but unlike Choji and the previous person to wield this power the only connection you have is you both like fashion. The strength of dirty boots increases as they become dirtier, regardless of whether it is from mud, blood, or any other substance. With them, you will be able to use physical attack strong enough to create tremors on the ground upon striking it. These boots will also enable you to be able to move at speeds greater than a normal human's. By which I mean you might be able to match Lee in speed after he opened his three inner gates to begin with, this might increase as you train. To activate them you start by rubbing the boots together. Now upon activation, the boots extend further up your legs and will become like an armor that is generated on the shoulders and forearms, and a scarf will be generated around your neck, and a dark colored hat will appear on your head, with a cloth hanging in front of the right side of the face. Ino was now looking at the boots with a look of interest. Naruto says one of the reasons I chose you for this was because of your long slender legs, they will make you an expert candidate for it, and when the time comes, I will help you achieve the second form which won't be for a while. Joji stops eating his snack and says I've been meaning to ask you how you were able to fly back at the tournament. Naruto replies I wasn't really flying per se what I do is I gather Raishi, which is also called the spiritual aspect of our chakra underneath my feet, then I connect to the Raishi in the air itself. And that gives the illusion of me flying. Everybody in the group nods their heads understanding what he was saying. Naruto looks at them and says technically I could teach you how to do it as well, but I'm not going to teach you know how to do it. Ino places her hands on her hips and looks at him and says and why not. Naruto looks at her and says if I do a lot of bad things can happen because people always say yeah that's gonna happen when pigs fly. He then quickly dashes off in the distance laughing like a maniac. Ino who was in shock for a moment before quickly giving chase, yelling every kind of threat she could think of at him. The group listened as she chased him around. I swear to fucking god when I get a hold of you, I am going to kick your goddamn ass so fucking hard Naruto Uzumaki, and when I get done with you goddamn asshole your sorry ass is going to have a property of Ino fucking Yamanaka stamp stand across it, you fucking bastard. Naruto laughing his head off yelling you gotta put some Ryo in the swear jar now Ino, and you kiss your mother with that mouth. Ino yells I will give you a fucking swear jar. Banko begins to laugh as she looks at the other two and says let's go make sure she doesn't kill our team leader. Hidden Leaf Tandy interview room, Ibiki and Inoichi are both standing in front of a table with Sasuke Chiha sitting in a chair, while well, he is glaring at them he then says why am I here I demand that you release me, and where is Kakashi as a member of the Ichiha clan I am ordering you tell me. Ibiki crosses his arms and sends a hard look at him, then says you can demand all you want you're not leaving this room until we are finished with you, and as for Kakashi, he was punished by the Hokage for failure to follow orders and was demoted to Genin. Sasuke gets up and says I am leaving and I'm gonna talk to the council and have you both fired. Suddenly two Anbu members appeared behind him. They then make him sit back down in the chair. Then one of them took out a set of handcuffs and handcuffed him to the chair, while the second member placed a tag on the back of his neck, suppressing his chakra. Inoichi says we were going to do this the easy way and ask you a few questions and talk to you, but now because of you being so rude believing that you have power over us just because of who your clan is. As I am the head of one to one original clans of this village, so you have no rank over me. Then says the Hokage has received reports of you using the cursed seal of heaven during the invasion, during which you tried to attack a civilian. Due to these reports your mental capability has been brought into question. Sasu cloaks at him and says, and why should I not be able to use it when it will finally give me the power, so I can use it to kill my brother, seeing as how this village keeps holding me back. If they would have properly trained me I could kill him a long time ago for what he did to my family. But at every single turn I am blocked at first by that joke you call an academy, then I get placed on a team of losers. Then get stuck doing the most worthless missions possible when my skills are not being tested. Then when I finally get a chance to prove myself and power my clan, I find out that the Hokage decided to deny me my birthright and have me disqualified. Ibiki takes a step forward and slammed his hand on the table, then says that is the kind of attitude of why you are here. You think because you're from a clan you think the world revolves around you. Here's a newsflash for you brat that's not how the world works. And here's another piece of information for you. I'm actually glad Itachi killed off your clan. Your clan has been nothing but trouble since its founding. You always think that you are some kind of god just because you have eyes that let you have a little magic trick. I have personally kicked the crap out of several of your clan even with their eyes. He then crosses his arms and says I remember the night I heard about the incident. I personally bought a round of drinks at the bar to celebrate your clan demise. Ibiki looks at the boy and says you know Itachi must have known how pathetic and weak you were going to be not to kill you too, I mean he even killed all the infants. He must have seen you as more pathetic and weaker than even them. He then begins to laugh at the look of rage on the boy's face. Sasuke then attempted to attack him but was held in place by the Anbu. 
Ibiki with a smirk on his face, says attempting to attack a superior officer that's a 72-hour hold in the hull. Which will begin when this is over. And I see no reason to inform the council as it does not fall under their power. Inoichi had to suppress a smirk, knowing that his colleague had purposely goaded him into attempting to attack him. He walks around the table coming up behind him and goes through a set of hand signs and places his hand on the back of his head, saying mind walking psycho mind transmission, jutsu. Sasuke mindscape. Inoichi was floating in a void where dozens of red spheres are floating around him that contain Sasuke memories. He says this cannot be correct, red represents hatred. I have never seen this many red spheres. Usually there are dozens of colors representing different emotions and feelings. He slowly begins to slowly look through them. Interview room. Ibiki watches Inoichi as he steps back and begins to walk out the door to the hallway. Ibiki looks at the Anbu and says put him in holding cell number 6 for a 72-hour hold. Anybody who attempts to let him out will have to answer to me. Hallway. Ibiki looks at Inoichi and asks how bad is it? Inoichi shakes his head and says I have never seen a mind like that, it is nothing but fury and anger. The boy has nothing else in his entire head. He is consumed with killing his brother to the point where he cannot express any other emotion. Inoichi then says how he got past the academy test to test for his mental capabilities will have to be looked at because someone did not do their job. There is no way he can operate as a ninja until we can get this fixed. I'm going to have to have him pulled out of the program. At that moment Sasuke along with the two members of Anbu walk out of the room with Sasuke in shackles. Suddenly a member of the Tandy runs up to Ibiki and says sir, we just got confirmation that Itachi Ichiha and Kisum Hashigaki were spotted in the village and engaged in a fight with Asuma, Kurinai, and Guy. it would seem they came looking for Naruto, but they were driven off no word on how they managed to get into the village. Sasuke upon hearing his brother's name began to fight the Anbu shouting out let me go, I have to fight him now is my chance. Due to him struggling one of the members hit him on the back of the neck, knocking him out. He is soon being dragged away. Ibiki looks at the Tandy member and says begin an investigation. I wanna know how they got into this village. Inoichi begins to chuckle to himself and says Naruto's not even here and he is still able to cause trouble. Ibiki looks at him and says you do realize your daughter is on a mission with a boy she has a crush on. Inoichi says and how do you know she has a crush on Naruto? I never said it was Naruto you did, but you have to remember what is to stop her from shaking with him while on the mission. I mean it's not like Anko will stop them he then begins to walk away. Leaving a white face Inoichi he now has a picture of his little Eno with a large stomach. He then says I think it's time I bought myself a sword and I wonder if that chastity belt is still inside the trunk in the attic. Naruto's hunting team. As the team approaches one of the gambling towns Anko looks at Naruto who is now carrying Eno on his back. So she decided to poke fun at her and said I think you have that position wrong, isn't he supposed to get you from behind if you know what I mean. If you'd like, I'll be happy to give you both some tips. Both Naruto and Eno go red in the face. Naruto looks at Eno to say why am I giving you a pie. But before he could finish his sentence. Eno grabbed both his cheeks, she then says if you so much as finish that sentence, I'm going to rip off these whiskers. As she begins to pull his cheeks out. Naruto cries out ow, 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 come on Eno-chan I said I was sorry let go please. Eno pulls and says what was that I think you mispronounced my name. Naruto who is beginning to get tears in the corner of his eyes says okay, okay, I'm sorry Eno-sama. Ino hops off Naruto's back and begins to rub her hands together and says that should teach you to respect my authority. Naruto then sends her an evil look. Inside Naruto mind, the chibi Naruto is watching a chibi Ino with a large pair of binoculars as she walks around the corner and she then sees a poster for a 75% off shoe sale with an arrow pointing in the direction of the sale. She quickly begins to run in the direction of the sale. She quickly sees a second poster with another arrow making a sharp turn, she follows the posters around the village. As she is stopping to catch her breath she did not notice that she's in the spot that she started and the poster had changed it to now read 4% all dresses with an address at the bottom 1313 Mockingbird Lane. The Chibi Eno quickly writes down the address and runs off in the direction she believes it is, she did not notice the laughing on the rooftop. Up on the rooftop the small army of Chibi Naruto's are making more posters that read free makeovers to the first one customers and running off in a different direction. Naruto had to laugh at the picture in his head, knowing that she would fall for it. Road outside of town, Naruto leads the team into the forest to a small clearing in the forest. Then they watch as he walks forward where he then crosses his fingers and says shadow clone jutsu. Suddenly the clearing is filled with one clones. Naruto says we will be breaking into four teams. Naruto points at a random clone and says you take alpha team and begin your mission the clone and 24 other clones, use the flash step and vanish. He then points at a second clone who says you take the beta team and begin looking for any leads on Tsunade. The clone and the team quickly leave.
Naruto looks at the remaining clones you will be designated Team Gamma and will all remain here and begin to practice the leaf cutting exercise. I want three of you to dispel yourself every hour. The clones quickly head over to a nearby tree to collect a leaf and begin the orders. Naruto turns to see Ino and Tenten both have a look of confusion on their faces. Anko looks at him with a nod of the head. And Choji did not seem much concerned with it. Naruto then says good now we are going to be the Delta team. We are going to the village and we are going to find a bar or restaurant to set up a base. Anko looks at him and says Naruto if you keep this up you will be a Jounin in no time. Tenten looked at her and asked what do you mean? Anko crosses her arms and says I'm guessing the first team he sent out was to secure the village and to be on the lookout for any hostile enemies. And I have no doubt they will be hiding underneath the transformation technique, and since the shadow clones can send the memories back to the original almost instantaneously this gives him eyes all over the village. The second team that he sent out was to find information about our target again covering a large area in the least amount of time. The third team that he has practicing the leaf cutting exercise shows he is also taking his training seriously by continuously training even during a mission. Then he is having us setting up base in a bar which is known to be a place to get information quickly. All of this shows good judgment which I will be putting in my report. Naruto nods his head and says you're right, but the first team has a second objective, I'm sure you've noticed my sunglasses what you don't know is they were upgraded by a friend of mine, they now have a small computer inside of them, and with them I can see through most jinjutsu and tell if somebody is wearing a transformation technique and can tell me if it is a clone, as most clones do not give off life signs such as a heartbeat and usually have a coat of chakra that surrounds their body. And it has a built-in bingo book for ninja and civilians with facial recognition. It gives me all available information on them. That way if my clones come across a low-level individual they can attempt to capture them in fact, since we have been standing here, my clones have captured 3 d rank missing ninjas that never officially graduated from the academy in the land of lightning, but are wanted by A for stealing village property for a grand total of 5, Ryo. Both Tenten and Choji had looks of shock on their faces while they knew what a computer was. They were not widely used and quite expensive, only the wealthy and certain groups in the villages were able to use them, such as the hospital and Tandy division. Luxury restaurant, Naruto opens the door for the group and they are quickly met by a waitress who gives a bow and says welcome Lord Yuzumaki, we are honored to have you here today, we have your table waiting for you, if you will please follow me. The group was quickly led to a private table in the corner of the restaurant. The waitress then quickly hands out the menus and says can I get you anything to drink to start with. Quickly taking a drink order she then quickly goes to the kitchen. Ino looks at Naruto and says if this is how you do a mission sign me up for all your missions. Tenten was quickly nodding in agreement. Naruto says do not get too comfortable we will not be eating like this all the time and not all my missions will be like this. This was just a special treat as this is my first mission. Ino then says how do you get a table so quickly and the fact the waitress was able to recognize you have you been here before. Naruto shakes his head no, I sent a shadow clone ahead. The waitress returned with the drinks and took everybody's order for the food that they wanted. Random Street, after having lunch their group then begins to search the village for any leads on Tsunade. They had just left one of the casinos when Naruto suddenly froze, his face going white. Anko who was the first to see it says from your face I'm going to take a guess and say one of your clones just a spell and we have company and not the good kind. Ino and Tenten and Choji turn to see Naruto nodding her head. Tenten says who is it? Naruto looks at the group and says the first is Itachi Uchiha and the second one is the monster of the hidden mist and tailless tailed beast Kisum Hashigaki. Now Anko's face now matches Naruto's as she then says fuck 2s rank missing ninjas. Naruto then crosses his arms and says that's not the worst of it. They attacked my clones while I had training. It would seem they came for me because of the nine-tailed fox. Ino says what are we going to do now? Naruto looks at them and says first what we have to do is keep them out of the village so that we do not endanger the civilians. Then we are going to try to separate them. He looks at Anko you will take Tenten and Choji and will attempt to draw away Kisum. Ino and I will engage Itachi. Naruto reaches down to his belt and suddenly there's a large puff of smoke, signaling a storage seal release. Sanding text to him is a large object wrapped in white cloth. With his fox-like grin he says I believe this is right up your alley Anko. Anko lifts an eyebrow and says what is it? Naruto let out a small aff and said allow me to introduce you to Senrin Bakusatsu Tame Thousand Soul Killing Cannon. Na it is the weapon used by Yuru. And yes I know I just gave Anko Midarashi a rocket launcher, but come on that weapon will fit her personality perfectly. Naruto then says all you have to do is point it at the target and channel your Raishi through it, and since we do not time for you to learn how to use your Raishi the normal way I'm going to have to give you a serum similar to one I gave Tenten and Choji. And yes Ino you have to take it too. Itachi and Kisum Pav. Kisum let out a little chuckle and said I did not expect for the fox brat to be able to use such an advanced technique as the shadow clones. 
Itachi who replies in his calm voice showing no emotion, says Uzumaki Naruto has always been unpredictable. You would do well not to underestimate him. By the time that he was nine years old he was able to prank members of the Anbu. But the grin like a shark says are you speaking from experience. Itachi stops and turns to look at him and says no, I was never a victim of one of his pranks. When suddenly a male voice says you know you're not supposed to lie. I'm pretty sure Makoto would not like to find out that one of her sons is a liar. Both Itachi and Kisum look up to see Naruto standing on a tree branch in front of his team. Naruto then says how's it going weasel? It's been a long time you never call, you never write as he puts his hand on his heart and says I'm hurt. Then he says you know you and your brother seem to have the same problem you only surround yourself with men. Is there something we should know about the Ichiha clan? Kisum looks at Naruto and says did I hear you right you actually managed to prank him. Naruto nods his head and says one time I got him with a joy buzzer, this makes Kisum give out a laugh. Although I don't think it was appropriate for you to put me in a Jinjutsu of a world where there's no Raymond. Itachi says Naruto kun it would seem that you have grown since the last time I've seen you not only are you a ninja but a Chuanin as well. Now if you please you need to come with us now we do not want to get this into a complication. Naruto looks at him and says yeah I can't do that right now I'm kind of in the middle of my first mission as team leader so check back in a month or make an appointment with my secretary. Kisum then says come on Itachi let me chop off his legs as he is pulling the large object off his back. Ino having heard someone threaten Naruto she quickly began to rub her boots together while she is discreetly pouring writing ink on them that she borrowed from Naruto which quickly gave her the new outfit that he had described. She then says nobody threatens Naruto-kun in front of me, you overgrown sushi platter. And without thinking she suddenly appeared in front of Kisum and delivered a kick to his stomach which sent a shock wave through the forest, sending him rocketing backwards, crashing through several trees. Itachi looks at her with a look of curiosity at the power in her kick, while well, he is thinking to himself that kick was on the level of Tsunade. Ino with her legs still up in the air slowly lowers it, she then jumps back up to stand next to Naruto, and without looking at him, says I guess you were right these boots are not just made for walking. Naruto turns to her and says no stealing my sticky no chan. Banko look in the direction that Kisum was sent flying and says okay you two let's go, I'm itching to try out my new weapon, as she and Tenten jump away Choji looks at Naruto and says if anything happens to Ino, I will use you as a practice bowling pin, he then head off in the direction of his teammates. Naruto and Ino pov. Naruto jumps down in front of Itachi with Ino behind him. Naruto looks to the left in the direction the others went. Seeing that they are no longer in hearing range he turns back to Itachi and says you can stop attempting to cast a Jinjutsu on me, it's not going to work. Naruto then says why are you really here Itachi? And do not say it is because of the Nine-Tailed Fox. Because I know all about the mission you received from the Hokage concerning your family when they tried to take over the village. Itachi says Hiruzen informed you about that. Naruto says no I found the precious treasure of the leaf that you left behind. He then reached into his pocket and pulled out a photograph throwing it to him. Itachi catches the photo and sees it is a picture of three little girls in a group hug smiling at the camera. He is able to recognize Ashia as she was a spitting image of her grandmother. A ghost of a smile appears on his face and says who are the other two. Naruto says they are Nariko and Yuzuka, and the one with green hair is Nelial, but we call her Nel for short. They are her best friends. All three of them want to be Kinoichi. And have already started their training. Naruto then says once I found out who my parents were I adopted all of the children in the orphanage and I found your letter and the locket that you left inside of it. She has dozens of new brothers and sisters. She also has a handful of aunts and uncles who all love her and will help her become a better person than her family was. But I am making sure she knows not all of her family were bad and that most of them were just misguided. Itachi nodded his head and said you are correct and thank you for that. And just so you know she doesn't blame you for what happened. She is going to do what you said and become her own person, and she has no intention of using her Sharingan that she has already activated after reading your letter. Ino had stayed silent because she knew what Naruto was doing as he had informed her ahead of time. But then I decided to say something. Ino steps forward and says she is one of the sweetest little girls you could ever meet, even if Naruto has already corrupted her by teaching her and her friends how to pull pranks. Itachi activated his Sharingan and said you taught my daughter how to pull pranks, as his hand discreetly went into his cloak. Naruto crosses his arms and says it's not my fault all I did was tell her a few stories. If she and her friends want to pull pranks it's their decision not mine. But everybody always wants to blame the Uzumaki. I mean seriously if a fish gets put in an air conditioning system, it has to be Uzumaki's fault. If a bucket of water somehow gets put on top of a doorway, Uzumaki would be the one to do it, and if somebody coats the toilet paper with itching powder, the first person they look at is of course the Uzumaki, because he is responsible for it. He then says under his breath I swear that should be the Leaf Village motto when all else fails to blame the Uzumakis. This sent Ino into a laughing fit. 
But she manages to say nine times out of one it is your fault or you had a hand in it. Itachi then says I believe when my mother was young, she was trying to get a petition to have a change to that because of your mother, but she was never able to get enough signatures. Itachi then reaches into his cloak and pulls out a scroll and says I need you to deliver this to Hiruzen. I was supposed to meet up with Jiraiya, but I will let you do it. Naruto walks up and takes the scroll and says there are directions on the back of the photograph. If you want to send a letter to her, follow them. The people there will help you get in contact with her by just mentioning my name. Itachi gives a nod of the head saying thank you for giving her the family I was never able to do. Before anything else can happen several large explosions off to the side catches everyone's attention. Naruto says maybe giving Anko a weapon that shoots explosives was a bad idea. Both Ino and Itachi look at him with blank looks on their faces that clearly say no duh. Anko's team Pav, Dissum, after being kicked and crashing through several trees, ended up bouncing on the ground a couple of times before coming to a stop. He then managed to get to his feet with a hand on his stomach where he had been kicked. A thinking to himself that blonde is going to get it when I get back, well he is also thinking to himself that he had to give her credit as it has been a long time since anybody has landed a hit on him. His reflex is kicking and he quickly dodges to the left as what looks like an arrow made of chakra went flying right where his head would have been. Anko then says okay you are walking to a sushi platter while your partner is busy, let us have some fun. As she grabs the large item off her back. Dissum says and what is that supposed to be? Anko says not really sure what this is going to do as this the first time I've used it. She then pointed a kissum holding it like she was told to and began to channel her chakra. And to the shock of everybody a hellfire of objects came shooting out of the front of it. And rained down on kissum who turned into a puddle of water, revealing himself to be a water clone. Denton looks at it with stars in her eyes then at Anko and says when we get done with this, I want to turn with it. Anko, who had a grin spread across her face, said maybe. And she had a look in her eyes that had sent men running. Inside her mind a chibi Anko was attempting to drag a chibi Naruto by his leg into one of the temples where a priestess is waiting to marry them along with all of their friends and off to the side you can see a mountain of dumplings with a miniature Anko and Naruto on top of the pile and with a banner hanging above it that says congratulations Mr. and Mrs. Uzumaki. Snapping back into reality Anko and the team were forced to jump back up in the trees as a shout of water release. Great exploding water colliding wave. From out of nowhere a giant torrent of water came crashing down on them. Once the water has settled the team slowly begins to look around. Tenten seeing a shadow move underwater she quickly began to fire arrows, along with Anko unloading a second round at the water. Dissum as he slowly emerges from the water holding his left shoulder where blood can be seen. Obviously Tenten had been able to wing him with an arrow. Anko says whatever you do, do not touch the water he specializes in attacks from it. Kissum then says I don't need you to touch the water to attack you, as he goes through a set of hand signs calling out water release. Water shark bullet technique. Thrusting his hand in the direction of Anko, he then manipulated the water and sent it in her direction. As it moved, the body of water had taken the shape of a shark, with additional water following in its wake, and because of how quickly the shark was moving, and because of how much water there was barely any time for the team to jump out the way. With them now standing on separate tree branches the team began to think of a plan of attack. Anko then says okay Tenten, let's try and box him in such a way that he cannot attack anymore. The two women begin to unload again forcing Kissum to dodge and begin to run across the water as he is running he throws out the occasional water bullet while he is using his sword to bat away Tenten's arrows and using the replacement and water clone to escape Anko's attacks. Doji who had not done anything yet as his attacks were meant to be close range, clenches his fists while thinking to himself there has to be something I can do. I cannot sit back and do nothing while those I care about are in danger. As he opened his eyes he was shocked to see that he had subconsciously activated his arm and his fists were glowing with chakra. Narrowing his eyes he cocks back his arm as if ready to throw a punch he then thrusts it forward. In a blinding show of light a massive blast of energy went flying forward slamming into Kissum. The blast was so strong it even parted the water in the small lake that had been made when Kissum had tried to dive underneath it. After a few moments Kissum rose up from the water panting for breath, but before he could say anything Itachi suddenly appeared grabbing him and vanishing. Anko looks around then she hears a call of a bird she whistles and Naruto and Ino appear. Naruto looks down as he is trying to catch his breath and says let's get the hell out of the area before my clones are dispelled. One of them got a lead on Tsunade. And I was right, she is heading to Tenzaku quarters. Not hearing a response he looks up to see Anko and Tenten in a game of tug of war with Senrin Bakusatsu Tame. Tug of war game, both Anko and Tenten each have one side of Senrin Bakusatsu Tame pulling it backwards and forwards yelling let it go. Tenten then says come on I just want to try it. You will be able to use it all you want, just let me have one turn. Anko replies with no way I've heard reports about you when you get a new weapon in your hand, you never return it if you like it, and she pulls harder. 
Suddenly Tenten slipped in a puddle of mud along with Anko, and the cannon accidentally went off hitting Naruto with a single shot. Tenten seeing this discreetly pushes the cannon that had fallen onto the ground with her right foot in the direction of Anko, while she is whistling innocently. Naruto slowly sits up and looks in their direction getting to his feet. He stomps over to it and picks it up and says since you two don't seem to share you can have it back at the end of the mission. Making both of them pout and both of them trying to say they were sorry and that they would stop fighting. Each one of them grabs one of his legs as he is walking away. As he is passing by Eno she can hear him muttering under his breath children I'm surrounded by children. Hiruzen Pav. Hiruzen had just reached for his pipe when he had the feeling that Naruto was getting his just deserts for all of the headaches that he had caused him. He looks up at the sound of a knocking at his door and says come in. Ibiki walks in and says I'm here to give my report. It would seem Itachi and Kisa managed to enter the village through the east gate. After getting into a confrontation the two of them bypassed all the security and managed to escape. Here is a nodded says I see I would like you to post it extra security at each of the village entrances. Ibiki says I have already done that they will not be getting back in this village. Here are the reports from all of those involved. Here is in puts them to the side to look at when he has time. Then says good. Now why did Sasuke not leave the Tandy building? Why is he now in one of the holding cells? Ibiki crosses his arms with a smirk on his face and says the spoiled brat tried to attack me, so I decided to give him a 72-hour hold to cool his head. And the fact that his brother happened to be in the village was also a factor, even if I did not know at the time I didn't think it would be a good idea for him to be wandering around. I have no doubt in what Naruto said he would do and go chasing after him. The fact that he demanded that we release him so he could prove that fact to be true. As Ibiki walks back out of the office Hiruzen says I found it very amusing watching the security cameras and how you baited him into attacking you. Hiruzen turns to look at the pictures of his team and one of him and Naruto thinks to himself, I hope you're okay and good luck, you will need it to help you convince her to come back to the village. Amakasuma's Punishment Part 1 Asuma Saratobi was known throughout the village and the Land of Fire as being one of the strongest ninjas as he at one time was a member of the Twelve Guardian Shinobi. Hearing his alarm clock go off he reaches out to shut it off when suddenly another alarm clock started going off followed by another dozen. Quickly sitting up in his bed he sees his room is filled to the brim with alarm clocks going off. What made it worse was it was 3 o'clock in the morning. After spending a few minutes shutting off all the clocks he tried to figure out how this happened because he knows for a fact that Naruto is out on a mission. Deciding to figure it out later he walks into the bathroom and he begins to use the toilet. Taking a leak he suddenly feels liquid on his feet, finding that someone had put sarin wrap on his toilet, making it flood to the floor he jumps back. Looking around he says I'm not sure what's going on, but you're not going to get me again slowly opening the shower curtain and looks into the shower and does not see anything wrong with it, so he stripped off his pajamas and gets in after standing in the hot water for a few minutes, noticing that he was out of shampoo. But he sees a bottle that Kurenai had left, shrugging his shoulders, he grabbed a strawberry shampoo, put some of it into his hand, and begins to wash his hair and beard, letting it sit for a little bit, he reaches out and grab his new bar soap, and slowly take the wrapper off it, and begin to wash his body, but after a few moments his skin begin to hurt, and to inch all over quickly washing the soap, off along with the shampoo in his hair and beard he then looks down at the wrapper, and read the label I soap. After getting out of the shower he grabbed a hand towel to wipe the mirror off from the fog from the shower. Looking at his reflection he let out a scream as both his hair and beard are now the color of a strawberry. Quickly making his way to his living room he stopped dead in the doorway as there painted on the wall is a message. Assume a Saratobi because you decided to poke a sleeping fox you have now been targeted and we will make your life miserable until we have been told not to. At the bottom was a signature that said, Yours sincerely Team Alpha. And there was a small cartoon drawing of a dog, a crow, and a goat. The trip had taken a week to get to Ten's Aku quarters, and if the twitching in Naruto's left eye was any indication of how irritated he was. So it was a testament of his patience level. And while he was thinking of a way to explain the sudden death of a certain teammate. He was brought out of his thinking by the sound of Eno asking the same question for what seemed like the millionth time. Are we there yet? Naruto lets out a breath and says no. Are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? Nuo. Are we there yet? Not yet. Are we there yet? We will get there when we get there. Are we there yet? Yes. Really? No. Anko and Ino along with Tenten together say hey Naruto are we there yet? Naruto turns around and looks at his team and as he says the next person who asks me that I'm going to put them over my knee and paddle their ass. And then we are going to turn around and we're going to go home. He then turns back around and he manages to take two steps before hearing Ino to say are we there yet? Naruto slowly turns around with both of his eyes narrowed, he then quickly uses a flash step to appear behind her and quickly puts a seal tag on her back to make her whole body become stiff. He then unseals a three-legged stool and sits down on it. Ino, who upon realizing that she could not move, says okay this isn't funny, let me go Naruto. 
As she desperately tried to move and while yelling you can't do this to me. It was Anko who says actually he can as the team leader he has a right to discipline his subordinates if they misbehave on a mission. Naruto looks at Ino and says I gave you a warning of what would happen if you did it again. He then grabbed her and put her over his knee. Naruto then looks at Choji and says I suggest you turn around with a round boy quickly turning around with a red face. Naruto hikes up Ino's skirt revealing her lime green panties clad ass. He then delivers a swat to her right butt cheek making a loud cracking sound. Ino lets out a yelp of pain as it had been a few years since her father had delivered a spanking to her. As he continued to swap her butt both Anko and Tenten can see her face went from one of pain to one of almost enjoyment. Suddenly there was a flash of a camera and both of them turned to see Anko with a grin on her face. As she says I am sure that Inoichi and Inoiki are both going to find this hilarious. Naruto after delivering a total of 10 swats on her butt he then pulls her skirt back down and he then stands her back up and removes the seal. Ino, who is now rubbing her sore butt, looks at him and says I cannot believe you actually spanked me. Naruto, after putting away his stool, says I did not spank you that hard, but if you like I'm willing to kiss it and make it better with his foxy grin, this makes Ino's face explode red because of embarrassment. Anko and Tenten both double over laughing while Choji suddenly found the ground interesting, but if you were looking closely, you could see that he was chuckling to himself. Ino let out a huff of frustration she then straightened out her skirt as it had been messed up when Naruto tried to pull it back down. She then walks forward and deliberately steps on Naruto's foot as she passes him. Naruto looks at her and says at least I can now tell all of our old school friends they were wrong, you're not a hard ass, because I know now it is nice and squishy. Anko walks past him and cuffs him on the head, saying down boy Tenten going with her letting out a small giggle. As Anko grabs Ino by the arm then looks back at the boys and says we're gonna have a little girl talk and you two are to stay here and I better not find out you tried to ease the drop. Both the boys put their hands up in a no ma'am gesture taking a step back. Girls talking, Anko had laid the girls off behind some trees and then she crossed her arms and said how you doing ponytail. Ino looks at her and says I'm fine I knew I was pushing his buttons and I went too far. Tenten says I can't believe he actually spanked you. Ino let out a small laugh and said don't worry about it, they were no better than the birthday spankings I got when I was a kid besides the first one which I'm pretty sure was the one that got my attention. The only thing I'm embarrassed about is well she could not finish her sentence as her face went red and looked at the ground. Anko with her normal smirk says you became aroused and got wet didn't you? She then loses her smirk and says in a more normal voice for her, it's okay if you did some women are into that kinda thing, being dominated by a man. You just have to realize what is letting them go too far, especially when it comes to the bedroom. Having fun is one thing, but letting him completely control you to a point where you are nothing but a toy for him and your feelings and opinions are not considered by him is not allowed. Ino looked at her and said you and I both know that Naruto would never do something like that, especially to somebody he considered family. That was just him having fun she looks at Tenten and says I hope you're not angry at him. He was just playing with me and we have been friends since you were kids. Naruto is one of the few boys I know I could trust completely. I could climb in the bed next to him naked and I know he would not touch me in any way I did not give consent to. My mom along with several other women we know and we call our aunts made sure to teach him how to respect a woman. Such as not touching them inappropriately or not making sexist comments about them. And yes he technically touched my butt but it was in a joking manner and I know he was not doing it to be a pervert. Anko speak up and says same with me you have seen me bury his head in my chest and yes, he will pinch my butt every now and then and most of the men who do it end up either six feet under or in the hospital, but with Naruto, I know he is being playful and he knows when to stop. Tenten says it's okay I could tell that he was just playing with you. And I learned what kind of person he was a couple days ago at the hospital when he helped my teammate. But that does not mean I'm not going to try and get back at him for humiliating a fellow Kanoichi in front of me. Ino says well if you want to get him back what I would suggest that you do is what all of us girls are doing to annoy him. Go to his compound and find one of the kids that you like that he adopted and make a mini me out of them. Tenten put her hand on her chin and said I guess it wouldn't be so bad. Uzumaki compound, in one of the smaller training grounds, a little boy is practicing his kunai and shuriken throwing. Right as he sent a kunai flying he let out a sneeze and ended up hitting a bull's eye because of it. The boy began to jump, pumping his fist in the air going yes, and turned to one of the servants who was watching him and said did you see that I got a bullseye with the servant nodding their head saying good job. Present moment. Ino then says but don't try to snag him for yourself sister, there is a long line that begins behind Hinata. Tenten replies you need not to worry about it. I saw how many kids he adopted and I'm not gonna date a boy who has that much baggage. This makes all three of the women laugh. Ino then says we should get back, but I need to change my underwear first, because Naruto has a heightened sense of smell, and the last thing I need is for him to smell that on me, which again made all three of the girls laugh. 
As the group walks back to the boys they can hear Choji say so Naruto is really soft and squishy right before Naruto can give a response, they hear the voice of Ino, saying you better hope you are not talking about what I think you are Choji. Naruto looks at them then at Choji and says I believe it is time we employ the oldest of traditions passed down from father to son, brother to brother, when it comes to dealing with angry women, so like my forefathers before me, every man for himself, then he takes off running. Leaving behind a nervous Choji who says I don't suppose you would believe me if I said we're talking about a desert involving Jello slowly, all three of the women did the pulling a weapon out of nowhere trick that they all seem to be able to do, and in one voice they say Aaron. And Zaku quarters, Naruto and the team had finally got to their destination, but seeing as it was so late, they decided to go to a hotel and begin the search in the morning. Naruto walks up to the front desk and says good evening we will need a few rooms if you have any available after he got everybody their own room on the same floor. Naruto looks at his team and says okay you can order room service and I will cover the bill. I want you all rested and ready to go in the morning so we can begin searching. With that everybody broke up and went to the room that they are assigned. Naruto's room. Naruto was sitting at his desk in his room looking over some papers when a knocking in a coat at his door brought him out of his concentration. As he opens the door he sees Ino standing in the hallway wearing a nightdress. Naruto then says did you need something Ino? Ino with red cheek says can we talk there is something I want to say to you. Nodding his head, Naruto steps to the side of the door letting her in. As she makes her way to the bed and sits down. Naruto sat down next to her and could tell whatever it was, is bothering her, so he reached out and took her hand and said you can tell me Ino whatever it is will stay between us I promise. Ino looks up at him and acting on impulse she reaches out and grabs his head and kisses him right on the mouth. To say Naruto is shocked was an understatement, but he soon began to return the kiss. After spending a few minutes tongue wrestling the two blondes finally pulled away. Ino looks down at her hands and takes a deep breath, then says we have been friends forever, I have always considered you the one boy I could trust above all else yes there was Shikamaru, but he would always say I'm troublesome, and then was Choji he was not as bad, but he would usually go with Shikamaru. But you have always been my friend and I'm eternally grateful for that. Turning to look at him she says so I'm just going to ask. I know that you have to take multiple wives as part of the clan resurrection act, and I'm pretty sure that you're going to ask Kanata to be one, but would you consider letting me be one? I know I can be annoying at times as she then begins to list off all of her flaws. Naruto kisses her on the lips to stop her, pulling back he said, I've already decided to ask you. I was just waiting for the right time. As for you being annoying, it is one of the things I love about you. He then says Eno you're always willing to speak your mind and you never let anybody walk all over you. And just so you know, strong and independent plus intelligence are the main traits of the females of my family. With a small laugh he says because it is how the men of my family survive. Ino breaks out into a smile and pokes him in the chest and says you just earned yourself a makeout session grabbing his hand, she places it on her left breast and says these are open for you tonight, but nothing below my waist for now. Then she goes back to kissing him with both the blondes begin to explore each other's body, letting hands roam around. Morning Lemon. After a few moments Ino stands up and reaches behind her back and then pulls down the zipper, letting the dress fall to the floor, leaving only a pair of red panties. She then straddles Naruto's waist. She let out a small giggle seeing the look on his face at getting to see her breast. She then pulls off his shirt, leaving him only in a pair of boxers. She then pushes him back on his back. Naruto looks up to see a practically naked girl. His cock instantly becomes hard and starts trying to push through the fabric of his boxers, and while his hands were massaging her large C-cup breast, Ino, who was on top of him, can feel it. She slowly begins to rock back and forward on top of it. She looks down and says you know Naruto you might have been the smallest in our graduating class. Laying down on top of him while continuing to grind on his crotch she says, but what I am feeling right now tells me you were bigger in other areas, and the areas that really count. Ino then stops grinding on his crotch. She then scooted back to sit on his knees. With shaking hands she reaches out for his boxers. Naruto stops her before she can pull them down and says you don't have to do this. Ino crosses her arms underneath her chest and making them go up, she had to suppress an evil smirk as she watched his eyes follow them and said you have a practically naked girl on your lap who is willing to go to the next level with you and you're more concerned about her. So with one last kiss she said I'm a big girl and can make my own decisions as she then pulled down his boxers completely exposing his hard cock. Ino looks at it having never seen one this large in person and only in the few times she looked at her father's dirty magazines. She then slowly reaches out and runs her fingers along it as she can feel the heat coming off it. She slowly wraps her hand around it and begins to rub it up and down in a slow motion. She then can hear Naruto give out a moan. Thinking she was doing it right she begins to pick up the pace. Ino after spending a few minutes giving him a hand job, she stops making him give out a small whine. She then decided to try something new. 
She leans in forward and slowly takes the head of his cock in her mouth and begins to suck on it. After getting used to it she slowly began to put more of it in her mouth going down the shaft, but due to his size, she was only able to get halfway. She then slowly begins to move her head up and down while sucking on it like a lollipop, increasing her speed as she goes. Naruto, who was lying on his back, could not believe that Ino, one of the girls he had grown up with, was giving him a blowjob. He would admit that he had always had a small crush on her. He put out a hand and put it on top of her head, helping to go down his shaft. Suddenly feeling like he was about to explode he says Ino-chan I am about to come seeing her not responding and being on a sex high he pushes her head, making it go as fast as he can, and like a dam exploding, he releases his load inside her mouth and down her throat. Ino, who was not paying attention, began to struggle as she felt him shoot his load of cum down her throat. And because of the size of it, she was not able to swallow it all, and it began to pour out of her mouth, finally getting her head free, she began to cough and gag turning green in the cheeks. End of lemon, she then puts a hand over her mouth and the second one on her stomach and says I think I'm going to throw up. Naruto, seeing into becoming sick, quickly grabs a trash can from the bedside table and hands it to her. This proved to be a smart choice as she began to throw up into it with Naruto who quickly started to rub her back while apologizing. Ino looks at him after her stomach has settled and says it's okay Naruto-kun. I heard what you said, but because I was in the zone and as it was my first time I should have been paying more attention to you. I was just not expecting it to be as large as it was, along with it tasting so salty. She accepts the tissue box to help her clean herself up that Naruto was holding out to her. With her saying thank you Naruto-kun the two working together were quickly able to get her cleaned up. Naruto, with a red face, says so do you want me to return the favor Ino-chan? Ino with a small smile says no Naruto-kun. It's not a good idea. It is currently my time of the month and it would not be really a good idea. That is why I said nothing below my waist for tonight. Naruto looks at the clock and says I think we should go to bed then. We have a mission to complete in the morning. Ino looks at him and says just because I gave you a hand job and a blow job does not mean you're going to get me in bed with you tonight Mr. Whiskers. As she pokes him in the chest I'm not some cheap girl you can pick up on the street corner. As she stands up and waves her hand in front of her body and says if you want this you're going to have to earn it. Naruto, with his foxy grin, says Ino-chan there's a lot of things I will call you, but cheap definitely isn't one of them. Ino's face goes red. She then hits him on his head and says you foxy bastard. I am practically giving you what every boy in our village has wanted forever and you say that. So just for that when we get back to the village we are going on an all-day shopping spree and you are paying for everything and I'm inviting all the girls and moms too. She then quickly put on her nightdress with one last kiss on his cheek. She then walks to the door swinging her hips as she leaves. The only thought going through Naruto's head was I need another shower, a cold shower. The next morning, Naruto and the team met up in the lobby of the hotel. He then says okay here is what we know about Tsunade. Her two biggest addictions to gambling are slot machines and CHM Han. Doji raises his hand and says what does she look like? Naruto replies she has a special technique that she uses to hide a real age from what I understand she usually hides in her 20s to mid-30s. She is about 5 foot 8 blonde hair which she usually wears in pigtails and has a grass green haori with a kanji for gamble on it and will have a purple diamond tattoo on her forehead he said, only to stop and looked at the three women with him with a nervous look on his face. Then lets out a small laugh and says she is also well endowed with one of the largest sets you ever see. This makes both the boys blush while the girls have a good time laughing at them. Naruto then says she will have her apprentice Shizune with her, the two of them will have a small pig named Tauntin, who is usually being carried by Shizune. He then looks at Choji, and from what I was told I would suggest you do not make any barbecue jokes about the pig. Tsunade and Shizune are both known to be super protective over her. Naruto says let's split up. Anko, you and Tenten will be a team. Ino, you and Choji will be a team. He then takes out a set of wireless radios and hands them out to the teams we will be operating on Signal 3. If you find anything radio in, we will meet up back here at noon if we have not found anything. Getting a round of nods of the heads the teams begin to get ready to split up. Toji looks at Naruto and asks why are you not using the same technique that you were using before to find her. With Naruto replying Tsunade is a sensor ninja, which means that she can detect high levels of chakra, if I was to use the shadow clone technique, she would instantly know that someone is in the village. Anko sees this while she is filing it away to make sure to add to the report about Naruto's progress. Ino looks at Naruto with an evil grin on her face and says just don't do anything stupid Naruto-kun in a voice that sounded like she had a sore throat but still made everybody laugh at him. Naruto with narrow eyes says how can I Ino-chan when Anko is taking all the stupid with her, then he vanishes in a puff of smoke, revealing he was a shadow clone and getting the last word in. Anko stomps her foot on the ground and says I'm going to get that bastard for that. Ino then grabs Choji by the back of his jacket and heads in a random direction. 
Denton looks at Anko and says is it me or did her voice sound like a little horse when I knew last night she was just fine. Anko has her evil grin on and says I saw her sneaking out of his room last night and her face was pretty red. Denton with a look of shock on her face, but before she could say anything, Anko says it is none of our business before heading in a different direction from Ino and Choji. Sunaid and Shizun Pav, Sunaid sends you along with her apprentice and the only remaining family member she had named Shizun, the two of them had just left the hotel. Shizun, who was carrying Taunton, looked up at her teacher and said remember Lady Tsunade, you promised not to go overboard today. We need to keep some of our funds. With a large win we had we were able to pay off some of the debts. But that does not mean we are out of the woods yet. Taunton let out an oink in agreement with Shizun. Tsunade, hanging her head, says I know Shizun, you do not have to keep reminding me I am twice your age. And I'm perfectly capable of managing our money, and I know when to stop. Shizun upon hearing this is thinking to herself this coming from the woman who has made us run from several villages and debt collectors. She then says something under her breath. Sunade looks back at her and says what was that making the young woman and pig sweat. Shizun replies looks like it's gonna be a nice day. The two of them spent the day going to a dozen casinos in which Tsunade ended up losing the rest of her money. It was now approaching lunchtime and for lunch the two had decided to go to a barbecue restaurant. As the two of them turn the corner they come up on an empty street next to the large castle that was in the village. Sunade was attempting to bribe Shizun to let her break into the savings for more money. Shizun while standing firm and saying I am not letting you use up all of the savings again. I don't care if you have a feeling that you're about to win. The last time you had one of your feelings we ended up having to camp out for an entire month without hot water and I'm not doing that again. Sunade looks at her saying I am the one who won the money, so why shouldn't I be able to use it for what I want. Shizun replies I don't care if it is your money. I was put in charge of it and I am not giving you any more. You will just have to wait until we get our next check for helping with medical issues around. Tsunade looks at her with a look of annoyance on her face. Shizun then says do not get any funny ideas. I have locked up the remaining money in a safe place. Inside Tsunade's mind, a chibi Shizun was sleeping in what appeared to be a hotel room when suddenly the window cracked open and a figure dressed all in black climbed in through the window and began to tiptoe across the room to a large safe. Suddenly a ray of moonlight shines in the window on the figure and reveals it to be a chibi tsunade. The chibi tsunade froze when the chibi shizun began to talk in her sleep, saying no more we can afford it. The chibi tsunade finally reaches the safe and takes out a stethoscope and places it on the lock and slowly begins to turn the dial. A few moments later she hears a click and opens the door only to be blasted in the face by blue paint. Along with alarms and sirens going off Jibi Shizun quickly wakes up to see the blue-covered Jibi Tsunade, who then quickly tries to run out the door being chased down by Jibi Shizun. Back in the room a Jibi Taunton rolled over in her bed revealing a large stack of money. Present moment, the two of them were halfway down the street when Tsunade stops and narrows her eyes and says I know you're there, come out. This places Shizun on alert for enemies while quickly looking around. Then the two of them can hear a voice say Kukuku my oh my I see you are still as sharp as ever Tsunade. Tsunade and Shizun turned around to see none other than Arachimaru and a second ninja with grey hair wearing glasses. Shizun quickly stepped in front of her master. Tsunade looks at him and says what are you doing here Arachimaru? I'm sure this is not a social call. Arachimaru let out a little laugh before becoming serious again and said, I am sure you heard about my little campaign against the leaf village. Tsunade says yes I heard about it and I heard that it was a complete disaster for you and your forces. But besides that I haven't heard too much about it. I am surprised that Saratobi sensei did not finish you off. Arachimaru's face takes on a look of annoyance, then says yes well as annoying as sensei can be, he is nowhere near as bad as that damn Uzumaki brat. Both the women have a look of confusion at the Uzumaki comment. Tsunade looks at her former teammate and says I do not have time for this, what is it you want? The grey-haired boy next to Arachimaru takes a step forward and says watch how you talk to Lord Arachimaru. Arachimaru lets out a hiss and says it is okay Kabuto. He then look at Tsunade and says it would seem that during my fight with Sensei, we got interrupted and I was forced to fight the Nine Tails in Churiki, and he managed to develop strange new abilities which I've never seen and injected me with a virus that is affecting the chakra pathway system in my entire body. I have done everything I can think of to get rid of this virus, but it is stubborn every time that I manage to make a breakthrough the virus mutates and multiplies. Tsunade crosses her arms and says I see so as you cannot get rid of it, you want me to. And what would be in it for me if I did help you, Arachimaru? Arachimaru says in exchange for your assistance, I recently mastered a new technique which will let me bring back the dead. If you help me I will bring back your little brother and your dearly departed lover. Tsunade instantly knew what technique he was referring to as it had been invented by her great uncle and he had warned her never to use it. Arachimaru then says I will return in three days for your answer Tsunade. Before either one of the women can make a comment both of them sink into the ground. 
Sunaid was standing there looking at the place where Rajamaru had disappeared. With several thoughts going through her head. One of which was what did he mean by saying he had to fight against an Uzumaki. There is only one Uzumaki that she could think of in the leaf village that being Kashina's kid, but she knew for a fact there was no way that her sensei would have let him fight a Sanin. If she remembers correctly he would have to be at least 12 years old and just graduated from the academy. Even if he was a Jinchuriki there is no way he should be able to stand up to him. Another thought passed through her mind about this mysterious virus that he was supposed to have made. She knew for a fact that her teacher would never let him near that kind of science, as he hated it along with her other teammate and as he was the boy's godfather and herself. She then thinks maybe she should send a letter to Kashina's kid, even if she never met the kid. They were still second cousins and perhaps he would like to know some history about his family. Kashina had been the last thing connecting her to the leaf village when she died, she decided never to go back and meet her kid as almost everyone she ever cared about died and she did not want to change it. But then she began to think of what the old pervert and her sensei could have been teaching him and if they had let him near that branch of science or had let him become a pervert, well she was a doctor and they were known to make house calls. She was broken out of her thoughts by Shizun saying what are we going to do Lady Tsunade. Tsunade looks down and says we are going to find a place to eat, then walks off in a new direction. Shizun watches her leave thinking to herself she cannot possibly be considering helping him. Naruto's team Pav. After searching for several hours and not finding anything the team then radios in and meet up outside a bar that they had found was quite famous with sake. With the knowledge that it was Tsunade's drink that she was known for. They decided it could be another place to check. Naruto looks at the team and says all I was able to find was people at the casino, saying that yes she was here but left. After getting the same story from everybody else, Naruto looked at his watch and said let's get some lunch. He then leads the group into the bar upon entering the bar he sees a group of 15 thugs and what appeared to be mercenaries. Naruto, upon entering, can see the look of stress on the waitress's face behind the bar, who looks to be in her mid-twenties with a large C cup and wearing a green button-up t-shirt. Seeing as many of the men were hitting on her and demanding more drinks. In a chair sitting by the door was a man who looked like he was supposed to be the bouncer, but he was asleep. The group makes their way to a table that is when Naruto manages to spot Tsunade and Shizun at one of the tables. Naruto takes the seat on the outside of the table taking out a pen he then lets out on the couch, drawing the attention of Anko, he then begins to use the pen tapping the pin on the table in Morse code. Message, check your immediate 1 o'clock position. Target has been spotted. Present moment, Anko then bent down to scratch her ankle while she discreetly looked. As she sat up and gave him a nod of the head to confirm that it was them. Before anything else can happen the waitress comes over and takes their drink orders. As she is quickly making her way back to the bar one of the men grabs her around the waist and makes her sit in his lap and then says how are you doing tonight honey? How about a dance, a lap dance for me and my friends? This makes him and all his friends laugh. The woman quickly declines it and says I need to get back to work. Let me go as she tries to stand up the man put both of his hands on her chest. As he is groping her, he says come on baby you make a lot of money not to mention you'll have a good time. The man then ripped open her shirt showing off her cream-colored bra, making the woman scream and try to cover herself. Even with the woman screaming, the man by the door continued to sleep. Those sitting at the table watch as Naruto makes a fist so tight he cracked his knuckles. He then slowly stands up with a look on his face that those who grew up with him recognized instantly. Ino leans over to Tenten and says in a whisper voice you might want to pay attention this is gonna be good. Ino with a large smile adds because that guy just pushed several large red buttons for Naruto. In the corner booth, Tsunade had looked up, and when she heard the door open, she was instantly able to recognize Anko and what appeared to be four Genin who came in with her thinking that she must have taken on a team. She was able to recognize the blonde female as a Yamanaka due to the clan symbol on her back. There was also a member of the Akamichi clan, the other two she did not recognize. It was a little confusing seeing her have four students, but she chalked it up to the academy having an extra student which had happened in the past. She had been watching the incident unfold and was about to intervene when she noticed a blonde kid making his way across the room, walking towards the men with a face that showed absolutely no emotion but pure rage. As she could see he had a leaf headband on. And from what she knew about Anko she was a woman that did not pull any punches in her training. So if he really was her student there was no doubt in her mind that he would be able to take out a few bandits. So she decided to sit back and put her hands across her chest to see if this kid could stop this before she had to intervene. Naruto Pav, as he was walking across the room, he slowly began to whistle, stopping before the men he said, I want you to release her right now. That made the entire group of men laugh with what appeared to be the leader laughing at him, saying get lost brat. Naruto repeats himself by saying please release her. The leader stands up and shoves the woman to one of his buddies, then he turns and looks at Naruto and says why don't you run along home little boy before you get hurt, because if you don't I promise you, I will take my belt off and take you out back and give you a whooping. 
Naruto puts his hand on his chin and nods his head and says okay I will leave, but can I ask you a question before I leave? The leader let out a chuckle, and he decided to humor this kid and said sure kid what's your question? Naruto looks up at him and says can you yodel? The leader shakes his head no and says sorry no, this draws laughter from his friends. He then says now I answered your question, get lost. Naruto turns around to walk away, but stops and looks at the leader and says there's one more thing. Knock, knock. The leader turns back to the kid with a look of annoyance on his face and says who's there. Naruto replies little old lady. The leader says little old lady ooh. ooh. Naruto suddenly made a claw with his right hand channeling some of the nine-tailed fox's chakra to sharpen his claws, then suddenly grabbed the man by his nutsack and began to squeeze. Naruto says and here I thought you said you couldn't yodel. The leader was letting out a painful cry as he was not expecting the kid to suddenly grab his nutsack. Naruto looks at the rest of his buddies and says release her now or I will crush his nuts tightening his grip, making a man cry out. The man who had been holding the woman quickly releases her. Naruto looks at the woman and says please go stand by my team while I teach these children a lesson. The woman quickly runs back to the table with Anko giving her a trench coat to help cover herself. Naruto looks at the man who he still had a tight grip on. After getting one last big squeeze, he released him, making him bend over to clutch his nuts. Due to the throbbing in his nuts his voice was high pitch as he said kick this fucking kid's ass. Naruto looks at the bandit on the left as he pulls out a switchblade, but Naruto notices that he is holding it entirely wrong. As he was going for a slashing motion Naruto was able to grab his wrist and give it a twist. He then pulled the knife out of his hand and shoved the man backwards. Naruto looks at the switchblade then back at the man and says first of all when you hold a switchblade you hold it like this as he demonstrates how to hold it properly and you never go for a slashing motion, you go for a plunging motion giving a small demonstration he closed it and toss it back to him. But the man quickly opening again but this time he was holding it like he was shown going for a plunging motion, he was not prepared for Naruto to use his left foot to kick him right in his nut sack, dropping him like a sack of potatoes. Upon seeing this two of the bandits rush at him, one going for a punch which Naruto was able to sidestep grabbing a new bottle of beer off the table, he then smashes it on the back of the man's head, knocking him unconscious. But the second one swinging a pool cue at him, Naruto waited for the right moment and wrapped his right arm around the pool cue, then he used his left hand to break the man's arm, then sent a kick at one of the man's kneecaps, shattering it dropping the man to the ground. Naruto then had to jump back from them as five of them charged at him. Having jumped backwards he landed next to the pool table, he then quickly grabbed two handfuls of the balls and began to juggle them. The five bandits stand there looking at him not knowing what to do. As most of the time when they get into a fight the enemy always runs away. Naruto, with his foxy grin, says okay gentlemen keep your eyes on the eight ball, where is it gonna land as he begin to juggle them faster, before any of them could realize what happened he throws one of the balls, smashing one of them into the throat of the closest bandit, just as quickly a second one smashes in the nose of the next bandit. The third one ends up getting one of them in the eye, while the fourth hits him dead center in the mouth. This left him holding the eight ball upon seeing all of his friends fall to ground the last of the five quickly tried to run from him, which resulted in him taking it to the back of the head, making him crash into a table breaking it. He looked at the remaining six bandits and said that was on him. I told him to keep an eye on the eight ball and he turned around. Naruto can hear Anko give a laugh along with Ino and Tenten. One of the bandits walks up and says looks like I'm up next, he then does a little jumping twist landing on his feet, he takes up a fighting stance and says I learned that move from a healing cloud ninja he then rushes at him. Naruto stands there and watches him as he is coming towards him, but as he was not paying attention, he manages to slip on one of the balls that Naruto had previously used making him fall smacking his head on the pool table. The rest of the bandits then quickly run away and leave the bar leaving their comrades on the ground moaning in pain or knocked unconscious. Banko, who can see that the fight is over, walks up to Naruto and can see a pout on his face, so she says what is wrong. Naruto looks up at her and says I was promised a whooping, but never got it making the woman laugh at his answer, so she says don't worry when we get back to the village, I promise I will give you a whooping. They are brought out of the conversation by the sound of another voice entering it. I have to say I'm impressed with the way you teach your students Anko. Both of them turn to look at the voice, finding that it belonged to Tsunade. Anko lets out a little laugh and says they're not my students, Lady Tsunade. Naruto with his foxy grin, says Hiruzen might be getting old, but he is not senile enough to put her in charge of a team. Those poor genin would not last an hour with her as a sensei. This resulted in Naruto being put in a headlock by Anko, and she is pressing his face up against her breast. She then looks at him and says if I let you go are you going to behave? Getting a nod of the head she releases him. Tsunade with a grin says I see genin has not changed since I left the village. Naruto crosses his arms and says I happen to be a Chunin thank you very much. Tsunade puts her hand next to her ear and says what was that I cannot hear you down there shortly. Anko had to grab Naruto by the back of his jacket to stop him from attacking Tsunade. 
Shizun, who by now walks up to the group, says it is nice to see you again Anko, what are you doing here if I may ask? Anko looks at her and says it's good to see you too Shizun, but I am not the one that is in charge of this mission. It is this little guy right here. Which resulted in Naruto shouting I am not short, I just have not had a growth spurt making all of the women laugh. Just then the man who had been sleeping by the door suddenly wakes up and says what in the blazes is going on here what happened. The waitress looks at him and says this kid just had to do your job, you stupid idiot now do me a favor and get rid of this trash before I convince him to do the same thing to you. The waitress then looks at them and says I'll be right back. I'm going in the back to get changed. Naruto then looks at Tsunade and puts out his hand and says it's nice to finally meet your cousin. I am Naruto Uzumaki, the son of Kashina. Tsunade's eyes went wide upon hearing this. Tsunade looks him up and down, then says I guess that old pervert Jiraiya brought you up right. I was half expecting you to dress like an idiot. Or heaven forbid a miniature version of him. Naruto crosses his arms and says I never met him until a few days ago. I had to practically raise myself after I was thrown out of the orphanage at 5 years old because the head of the orphanage said it was for children not demons. Tsunade suddenly had a look on her face that had a shadow on it. She then speaks in a voice that leaves no room for discussion. And said we are going to be having a long talk and grabbed him by the front of his shirt and pulled him over to her table. With both Anko and Shizun quickly following. Denton was about to run up to the group so that she could meet one of her idols. But before she could Ino put her hand on her shoulder and shook her head. Naruto and Anko had to spend the next three hours giving an overview of his entire life all the way up and into the Chunin exam and the invasion, including his fight with Orochimaru. The only thing he left out is what happened in the Land of Waves during the month of training. Besides the fact that he helped them set up a new village and an overview of the new laws helped pass. But Anko giving her opinion as well on how he did with helping them in setting up their own village. He also explained what happened with Hinata and Hanabi and how he had to rescue them from their father. After he had learned what happened to her. He then explained what he did to their father. That it earned him a good laugh from Tsunade. He also included showing her a copy of his medical report. By the time Tsunade had finally finished reading the report she had finished five bottles of sake and had become very quiet. He then explained how he met Jiraiya and how he was now charging him with all the various crimes. Then how he was sent on a mission to bring her back to the Hidden Leaf by Hiruzen. Tsunade was lost in her thoughts about how her sensei could have let that happen to the last of the Uzumakis after everything the clan had done for the village and what her grandmother had done for him. Then her thoughts turned to Jiraiya and his betrayal not only to Minato and Kishina, but her as well. Shizun, seeing as Tsunade had stopped asking questions, had decided to ask one herself. So she says excuse me Lord Uzumaki, but Naruto stops her and says please no titles. I'm not a big fan of them, just call me Naruto. Nodding her head Shizun says you said you adopted all of the children from the orphanage do you have any pictures? But the small smile on her face she had always gotten a kick out of small children from the orphanage getting a new family. Naruto pulled out a picture and slides it across the table so both women could see it had been taken outside of the main house and the picture was Naruto surrounded by all of the children along with Hinata and Hanabi and all of the serving staff with a large banner proclaiming the new Uzumaki family. Tsunade could not help the smile on her face when she looked at the picture she has seen many pictures of clans and usually all the people in them are usually standing straight up and looking perfect, but that was not the case for this picture, all of the children were looking like they were roughhousing or fighting in some cases of course, there were a few of the kids who were trying to look perfect. Naruto then started to point out several of the children, giving the women a description of what they are like. He just pointed to a little girl who was wearing a pair of shorts t-shirt along with a pair of boots and a safari hat and said that is cow she wants to be an explorer when she grows up. Shizun let out a small giggle, then she points to a little girl wearing a black cloak and a pointy black hat and says what about this one and why is she dressed like a witch. Naruto looks at girl and says that is you and the reason why she is dressed as a witch is she heard about how most of the ninja and kinoichi usually end up having a gimmick that gives them a nickname and she has decided that she wants to be the witch of the hidden leaf. Both Tsunade and Shizun begin to laugh as he points out the children. Tsunade looking at the picture sees a boy and a girl who have their forehead pressed up against each other with angry looks on their faces. So she asks him what about these two. As she taps the picture. And why do they look like they're ready to rip each other's heads off. Naruto looks and gets an embarrassed look on his face before he says that is Rain and Daiki. And the reason they look like that is they are constantly fighting with each other. They can't be in the same room for more than a minute without fighting. And yet you never find them apart. They are constantly challenging each other and I'm better than you competitions. But if anybody messes with the other one, the other one will instantly get involved to protect the other. This instantly has both women laughing with Tsunade saying so they have a love-hate relationship. Naruto nodded and said yes I'm a little scared to find out what's gonna happen when they become teenagers. Luckily I still have a few years before I have to set them both down and give them the talk. 
Both women had figured out what he meant. Due to the love-hate relationship and the constant challenges it would not be that big of a surprise if the two of them ended up in bed together when they got older. Anko then says I don't think you're gonna have to worry about that for a while, as Daiki suffers from footiest mouthiest or in layman's terms foot and mouth disease. I've only known the brat for a few days and I can already see he can't go 5 seconds without opening his big mouth and getting the snot kicked out of him by one of his sisters. Tsune just replies that is the case in most boys. As she has a picture of a younger Jiraiya. Amakasuma's Punishment Part 2. Asuma, after having an embarrassing day walking around with strawberry colored hair, finally got into a beauty salon and had them dye it back to its original color. Walking back into his apartment to begin to scrub the message off the wall while he was trying to figure out who could have done this. Reaching for his pack of cigarettes in his pocket, he finds out it was empty, he then goes to his cabinet to grab a new one, opening the door he sees that all of the new packs that he just bought have disappeared and have been replaced with packs of gum with a little sticky note on it that said. Note, smoking is bad for you as well as bad for everyone around you. Here is a better alternative. Sincerely Team Alpha. Deciding that he will have to pick up some new ones later he goes back to finishing his task. Once it was finished he looked at the clock to see it was time for his date. Quickly getting ready he begins to walk down the street, turning the corner he sees three little girls playing with a ball in the middle of the street and look to be playing keep away with a little green haired girl in the middle. When suddenly one of the little girls throws the ball too hard, making it go flying over both of the girls' heads and come flying at him. Asuma quickly catches it, then turns back to the girls, only to find that they have disappeared, making him look around he then looks at the ball, and his stomach drop there painted on the ball is a cartoon dog, a goat, and raven before he could do anything else the ball pop in the shower of green smoke, making him cough and hack. Once he is out of the smoke he looks at himself to find that he is covered in a green substance. Looking closer at it he could not tell what it was. When suddenly he hears a noise from behind him. Turning to look he saw no more than five cats have surrounded him. His panic became even worse when the cats began parting and walking down this path was none other than Tora. He then tried to use the Shunshin no Jutsu, but to his horror, he found out that his chakra was not responding to him for some reason. This left him with one option as he began to run away being Chaz by an army of cats. But had he bothered to look up he would have seen the three little girls from before on the rooftop. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoy it. If you want the next part of this video. Turn on that bell notification. Like subscribe and comment down below. And also check out the others videos. I have created and enjoyed it. See you guys next video. Till that take care.